Yellow, 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 yellow. Hello there, friends. Welcome back to the Random Show, episode number 176. Random Show, episode number 176. 176, Random Show. What's happening? What's cracker lacking? Holler if you're here. Holler if you see me. What's the deal? What's the dealio? Get in tune. If you're not in tune, get in tune. You know what's the vibes. You know what we're saying. What's cracking? What's cracking? What's going to get the light on as well? What's cracking? What's cracking? What's cracking? Big up everybody in the stream chat. Big up everybody that's tuning in live. And those of you that come in after the fact, what's going on? LOL calling me the Urban Red Bar. That's hilarious. <laughs> urban Red Bar. I'm going to use that. That's me. <laughs> urban Red Bar. I like that. I like that. I prefer that better than fucking calling me Khalid or some shit, you know what I mean? Or Rod Wave or whatever you guys fucking call me. I'd, I'll take Urban Red Bar over Rod Wave or Khalid any day of the week. So thank you, Dunker. You know, gracias, all that in between. Thank you, thank you. What's going on? Um, Random Show episode number 176. Many, 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 many things to go through. Um, Check out the show de- notes or check out the show description for the topics. I've got them all listed there for once. All kind of, you know, in chronological order to some regard but if you want to have a brief idea on what we're going to be talking about check the description that all the topic details are in there you also find a discord link in there too if you want to join the discord nice little community there of people about 100 of us so far which is quite decent considering i'm an absolute nobody to get 100 people to sign to my discord is a pretty decent achievement and i think it says less about me and more about the people that are in there so if you want to join the cool people in there make sure you sign up to the discord we have some chats and shit i think in the next couple of weeks i'll probably be doing some live discord things in there as well so if you want to join in some discord only fun that you want to see on the youtube make sure you tune in on the discord and i'll probably be doing some discord chats and whatnot maybe watch parties or whatever it may be and we'll do those over the next couple of days before the whole christmas run up you hear me because i'm sure most of you are bored and hate hanging around with your families so We'll try to keep ourselves entertained. We'll try to keep ourselves entertained. But yeah, big up everybody in the stream chat. Big up everybody. Friday night settings. Got myself a nice mug of coffee here. That I'm going to be drinking pure... Oh, Jesus Christ, it's spilled all over the place. That I'll be drinking periodically throughout the day. So whatever drink you have on you today, whether it's a whiskey neat or something, right? <laughs> Enjoy that bad boy. Drink responsibly. Um, Big up, big up um, my guy, Rodeo Brito. What's happening? What's happening? You know what's funny, Rodeo? One day, I forgot what day it was. What day was it? I think it was a couple of days ago. I did like a Taz show, right? I did the Accident Zinger show live. I did a little podcast live really, really late at night. But I just finished drinking a cold brew. I made myself a nice, tasty cold brew. No milk, no nothing. Just a bit of honey in it. One ice cube. A bit of water to kind of, you know, to kind of top it up a little bit. And I necked that thing before I recorded. And I didn't realize how wide I was until I looked at the chat. I looked at the chat and like people were basically saying things to me, but I completely had ignored it. I was ranting for like a good 45 minutes and I had no idea that people were asking me questions in the chat. I was just going and everyone in the chat was saying that I was on crack, I was on cook, I was high. But I honestly just had drank a cold brew just before I started recording and I was like, I was pagging it out. So this might be not the best thing, but hey, I intend to be a long one, so it is what it is. But yeah, the lesson lesson here is don't drink cold brew before you record if you in case you want people to accuse you of being a drug addict. <laughs> don't drink don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. But yeah. Um Hey, Ryan Joseph, let me land. Let me fucking land, all right? Let me land, let me live. Whatever time it is, you know what I mean? It's never too late to have a bit of coffee in your system. I could be drinking far worse right now, so coffee is the best kind of middle ground. You feel me? Let me land, let me live, let me do my thing, let me drink my dark nectarine. You feel me, eh? Dark by nature, right? Dark by, you know, beverage, get it? Dark, 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 you get it? <laughs> but yeah, big up everybody. Big up Sarlax, appreciate you also. See Sarlax, I was on time today. See what happens. Big up Doxy the Flow, I see ya. Um Gianni, I see ya. Vagabond, I see you. Podcast tables. Podcastables, I see ya. Teju, high def, game breed footballer. What's good, my guy? Hope you're well. Um Chris Rizzo, I see ya. Vagabond, I see you. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Um let's 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 get it on. Let's get it on. So first things first, um, quick one to talk about. Did you guys watch the Kai Sina Nicki Minaj live stream 
I've seen some clips obviously on the whole Twitter. I didn't watch the entire one hour thing. But according to people online, she arrived three hours late, which is hilarious, right? Um, you think I start my stream sometimes late. This woman arrived to this live stream three hours late. <laughs> but it, it, it kind of added to the anticipation. She strolled through you know like an absolute queen that she is and absolutely smashed it from the clips i'm seeing this is a highlights clip on kai Sina's channel it looks like a pretty fun time i'm not gonna lie it looked pretty fun let me play the video for you if it's gonna play are you gonna play or not oh my fault my fault my fault i got it 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 club up it's club up club up club up what Anyway, she came in, it was a fun time, they had a good occasion and, and you know what I liked about this live stream? I liked the live stream because of what? Because instead of it feeling like a clout chase, like she's trying to chase a younger audience, it just felt like another way to promote your album in a fun, laid back, chill way. I feel like a lot of these, you know, maybe legacy older acts are seeing how popular live streams are and they're just jumping on it just so that they can tap into the audience and think it's going to add to their album sales. But really and truly, Pink Friday had, 2 had come out, what, a week already before that. You're not really going to get that boost of an album sales based on Kai Sina, but you're just doing it for the look. You're doing it because it's fun. You're doing it because it's a chilled environment and you're doing it because it's a far better place to go to than hanging out with those radio stations. Do you know what I mean? So I do like seeing that sort of things and how it kind of, um, kind of transpired. But the funny thing about it has been a negative reaction. The negative reaction from some of the legacy media guys has been hilarious to watch. None other than the hater in chief, Elliot Wilson. Elliot Wilson had a lot of had a very interesting statement to put up there about Ky about the Kaisi and Nicki Minaj um, live stream. He tweeted this. He said, "Hip hop journalism," and the screenshot is you know Nicki bending over during one of the dance segments of it with Kaisi and her family, his friends in the background, you know, singing and dancing and shit. So for him, he was like, "Oh, basically saying hip hop journalism is dead because this is what it counts as." The funny thing about this is that. It feels like to me, this is like his refusal to accept that things have changed and things have moved on. If anything, this is an opportunity for you to kind of realize that you have to change things the way you kind of approach it because no one really above the age of 25 wants to sit down and watch Rap Radar. No one wants to watch Elliot Wilson and B-Dot grill or dissect rappers and their artists and their history, go through the albums, you know, go through the singles, inspiration about the tunes, the way that they do it. No one wants to hear that. So they want to hear it in another way. And they want to hear it maybe via a live stream. They want to hear it maybe via a funny podcast, but they don't want to hear it via the medium of what Ellie Wilson's doing. And maybe just in terms of age and generation, he's just aged out of it, which is perfectly fine. But he doesn't want to accept that to be the case. He still thinks he's that guy in that regard. And the funny thing about it is why I think this is really damaging is that he's just one person, right? He's one person, but you know, he's saying what he's saying. But imagine if this is somebody imagine this is like an institution imagine this is like a gatekeeper like like a platform like an outlet that has this type of opinion this is how people get blackboard because they feel like you're taking their spot which you probably aren't it's just like a natural evolution of the scene it's less about taking up the spots and more so just things changing and then they try to like stunt stunt your growth they don't want you to grow anymore you know that's a really sad thing about it because really and truly if i was being charitable i'd say elliot wilson and kai Sina have nothing in common if Nikki goes on Kai Sina's stream, she could easily go on Elliot Wilson's stream. It doesn't mean because she's going on that stream that it takes away from his platform. But in some regard, he sees it like a crabs in the barrel mentality and sees it as there's only one outlet that she can go on. Or there's only a couple of outlets that she wants to go on and she's going to go on that. She won't come in mind. Where really and truly, you should maybe try to look in the mirror and try and make your platform appeasing, appealable, um, make it a platform that people want to go to to share news of their albums or whatever it may be. That might be what you want to do. But instead of that, he decides to this. It looks like a fucking old fogey. So if anything, for me personally, this makes me super happy because I've never really been a fan of Elliot Wilson. I think he, the way he chugs on fucking, you know, Jay-Z's dick and everything to do with Rock Nation, I've never been a fan of it. So to see him kind of die a death of death by a thousand cuts and him not realizing what's actually going on around him, it's actually been quite entertaining to watch. And then of course, Nikki clapped back and let him know what she thought. She said the following... Elliot, if you'd spit Jay Z's dick out of, for one second, you'd be able to happy. You'd be able to be happy for the newcomers. Isn't that how you all tried to tarnish my image by saying I'm not welcoming to new bitches in? Did songs with all of them though? Why are you not happy for a young black man like Kai tomorrow, bitch? 
So I definitely, definitely agree with that sort of statement from her. So big up um, Nikki for signing on business. Uh, big up Ellie Wilson for being a consummate fucking hater. And also big up Kai Sina for having a fun stream um, that was laid back and chill. That brought the best out of Nikki's personality. He kind of brought his family in as well. I thought that was a really cute moment when his mum and sister came in who are big fans of um, Nikki. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Kai Sina's family are half Trinidadian, right? And I think Nikki's half Trinidadian too. So they had a little bit of a connection that way. So that was quite cute to watch actually. Let me actually roll it back for you. This is the way, yeah, this is where Kai Sina's mum meets Nikki. <laughs> And the sister as well. And they're literally bawling their eyes out, which is quite nice to see, to be fair. I'm not going to lie. Very sweet moment. So it's quite quite nice, right? So that was all good. All good. Well and good. I liked it. Not going to lie. Um, Pink Friday 2, I actually enjoyed. I'm not going to lie. I'm not really a fan of Nikki's pop stuff. I think all that, that Starships era for me is like, honestly, I want to cut my ears off when I hear that shit. But when she actually raps and she makes like, you know, rappy hook rappy records bashment records i'm all for it so pink friday 2 i actually enjoyed that i played in the gym the other day and i actually listened to the whole thing so that was a very enjoyable album and good to see that she's you know branching out getting a bit fun getting a little bit quirky having a good time and obviously looking really good as well she's lost a bunch of weight as well that's obviously clear to see i think you can see it when she walks in actually she's lost a ton of weight so she's definitely been either on the ozempic or she's been doing a couple of sit-ups so big up her in that regard because she looks really really good Let's see if I can find it. Is it okay? Where is it? Can I, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Let me show. Nikki's looking tight, looking slabet, and obviously hanging out with the kids, having a good time. So big up the Nikki Minaj. Moving on from that one, let's quickly roll into this one. Let's talk about a little bit, a little bit, a little bit about this. What? Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There you go. Cool. So, in my opinion, in my opinion, in my opinion, I think as a guy, you have to have some scenarios in your head that you're willing to die for because unfortunately guys we have a thing called male pride and it's something that we can't get rid of it's hardwired into us I, i'm of the belief that whoever created us hardwired male pride into us because it's a aspect of like protection it's an aspect of our um hunter gatherer looker after biology right it's hardwired into our dna it's something that we cannot get rid of because it helps to protect us and the people around us who we care and love about right so that's basically my premise in that regard but i think in the modern age that kind of hardwiring that pride thing kind of you know it gets put to one side because people want to talk about things they want to discuss things they want to have uh, you know conflict resolution they want to de-escalate de situations but there are some occasions where de-escalation is not an, is not a option it shouldn't be your first option. Your first option should be violence. There are some occasions that happen in your life where the first option is always the best option in that instance. Later on, you can have a bit of de-escalation, you can chill out, but in that exact moment, you have to choose violence. And I personally think one of the key moments you have to choose violence, and again, there's not many, there's not many situations in your life, but there has to be, you have to, you have, to have maybe at least three scenarios in your head where violence is appropriate. Maybe somebody breaking into your home while you're there, sleeping, with your family or wherever it may be maybe when somebody touches a family member of yours or when somebody touches somebody that you love right like a partner wherever it may be but it has to be some scenarios in your mind and it doesn't matter what it is it could be somebody kicking your fucking dog whatever you have to have a scenario in your mind where violence has to be the first option and in my opinion this is one of those occasions you yes, have tweet And as you can see in that video, if you haven't seen this, it looks like a traffic dispute. It looks like some sort of road rage incident. And the lady, and this is a couple, the boy and the girl, she gets out of the car and she gets into an altercation with the guy behind. And the big guy behind decides to then beat up the woman and the man at the same time. Now, in my opinion, in this type of scenario, this is when you have to be, this is when you have to be willing to either die or go to jail. These sort of scenarios. This is one of those scenarios where you have to be willing to die or go to jail. You cannot let anybody, 
anybody, no matter how big they are, how any of size they may be, as Brendan would say, to lay their hands on your partner in your fucking, um, you know, in your presence. That's not something that you should ever let let happen. Now you could be somewhere else, and they tell you after the fact. Fair enough, but if you're there in that situation and you allow this to happen, you will never be able to forgive yourself, and most likely she will never be able to forgive you. That's the real that's the real crux of it. She might never look at you the same way if you let yourself just stand there and get attacked by this guy and not throw up any kind of defense. You could lose again. You could get knocked out. You could lose. You could get choked out. You could get your arm broken. Whatever it may be. But the fact that you actually try to put your body on the line will go a long way than seeing you, you know, push him back like as if he's a I don't know, like as if he's some sort of person handing out leaflets in the street when actually he's inflicting violence. This guy should be on the floor. His entire white t-shirt should be full of blood. It should be full of his blood, not even your blood. Do you know what I mean? That's how it should be. You should be running over him with your car, whatever, maybe hit him in with it over the head with the pole in the back of your boot, but something. But you can't just be acting as if this is no big deal. I cannot understand this. Like, And again, I'm not too sure what's, why this happens. Maybe it's more sort of a fear thing. That could, be a, that could be a reason, right? Maybe fear takes over you and you're just too scared of getting beaten up. But in my personal opinion, pain is temporary, pride is forever. Pain is temporary, pride is forever. You will never be able to forgive yourself for never standing up to the person. Again, look, look, he's turning his back. He's turning his back to the guy while the guy reigns, you know, overhand strikes over his girl. Can you can you ever imagine that happening? Look, turning his back to the guy, turning his back while the guy reigns over hands on the strikes. That's not ever happening in my regard. You know what I mean? You could kick him in the nuts. You could do so many things to kind of disarm him. But you would never be able to live yourself if you never, ever stood up for somebody. And again, there's not many occasions in the world that you have to do that, but you have to have some scenarios in your head as a man where you kind of play it through your head and you think to yourself, hey, if somebody was to ever try to burgle my house while I'm in there, you have to be willing to die. You have to be. You have to be willing to you know, protect your space, protect the people that live in your space, protect yourself in any way, shape or form. Same thing goes for your partner. And if you can't do that, I don't know what you're doing, man. I don't know what you're doing. You know what I mean? I don't know what you're doing. You have to be able to really put your life, your body on the line for the sake of your pride at some point. So you just have to. Not every situation you have to. And there are, there is a, there is a scenario, there is a scenario where I can see where maybe you could tell me, okay, maybe the girl's in the wrong. Maybe she's one of those girls that likes to get into men's faces, right? There are those girls that exist who think that if they get into a man's face, they can use their femininity as a way to kind of protect them because they're, they're, they know that most men won't hit them. Cool. But there are some guys out there that don't care. There are some guys out there that don't have this idea that, oh, men shouldn't hit women. They'll hit anything that moves. So if your girl puts you in a situation where she makes you have to fight somebody like this, you have to beat up him and then beat her up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You have to beat him up first, right? Then when you go back home, you have to beat her up or leave her. That's what you have to do if she purposely puts in those situations. But every scenario always starts with you beating up the aggressor. You have to. You have to engage. You have to engage. You have to. Again, you could break up with her later. You could push her out of the moving car later. You can do what you want to her later. But in that situation, you have to for your own pride. Because if anything as well, you know what this is? You know, I was just thinking. This isn't really an issue about protecting the girl's honor. It's more so you. Because any man who feels like they can step to your girl in your presence and feel like there's not going to be any re you know, repercussions or repercussions, it's definitely because they don't respect you. They look to you and they thought, you know what? You're not a threat. So they step to you because they think they could get away with it. That's when you know you have to put your hands on somebody. So, yeah. Um, what are you guys saying here in the chat? It doesn't matter. You got to break up with her if that's the case, but you can't let it happen. Exactly, Sarlux. Exactly. Um, Rodeo Britto says, getting punched isn't that bad. Exactly, Rodeo Britto. It really isn't that big of a deal. Most people can't punch anyway. So it's not like he's going to knock you out. Most people can't hit well. So you have to just get close to him enough to you know lock him up body wise. And if he hits you, you just hit him back. For every punch he gives you, you punch him back once at least. It's not that big of a deal, really. Really isn't. Um, and it'll make for a fun story later when you tell the lads later that you got into a fight. You know what I mean? It makes for a fun story. You come back home with a black eye, you, your hand's a bit busted up. You know what I mean? 
the comes but makes for a fun story. Uh, blast pepper spray exactly. Bald dude getting his fucking wig split is my. <laughs> that's my wife exactly. Jordan Ray exactly exactly. You have to be able to stand up for something, man. You can't just be dying. You know what I mean, if you don't stand for something, you'll die. You'll die for absolute. You stand die for absolute. No, no, no. If you don't die for something, you'll stand up for nothing. That's what I'm gonna say. If you don't die for something, you'll stand up for nothing. And I think in this scenario, again, this could be your mom. This could be a brother. Whoever it may be, you have to do something. You have to. You fucking have to. But hey. What do I fucking know? Moving on from that one. Big up as well, stream chat. Thank you for joining in with me. Appreciate all of you that are here. Thank you for hanging out. So next one, we have to also congratulate the one and only. Congratulate the one and only Ariel Hawani. The one that was said to be a fucking, what do you call it? Hey, big up, um, high def. Appreciate you, brother. Finally a stream on Manchester time. Ha <laughs> ha, lols. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daytime streaming, you feel me? Daytime streaming, we're changing, we're moving. I should be, I should be outside, you know, my face fucking buried in a pile of cat, but instead I'm here. So, big up everybody, appreciate you. Big up Mingus Dingus, appreciate you too. Bean cheese, bean cheese, bean <laughs> cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese. Yes, bean cheese, bean cheese gang. <laughs> Pick up wingers, dingers. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Um, but yeah, big up wingers, dingers. Big up high def. Appreciate both of you guys. Thank you. Um, what's I going to say to you? Yeah, so I should be head first in, the, in a pile of ketty, but instead we're here. So it is what it is. What can we do? What can we do? What can we do? So next on list here, let's also congratulate the one and only um, Ariel Hawani for this epic news that he is announcing now where he's going to be um, covering the Olympic Games next year. Fucking major, isn't it? absolutely major. Let's play the clip. Hello, Canada. My name is Ariel Hawani. As some of you may know, about 22 years ago, I left this great country to pursue an American dream. I wanted to be the next big American sports broadcaster, and truth be told, it's been a pretty good journey so far. I've gone to work for a lot of great networks, I've gone to cover a lot of big events, interview some very famous athletes. But if I'm being honest, one thing has always bothered me. I've never had a chance to work for a Canadian network. I've never got a chance to work for my country. Well, I'm extremely excited to announce that all of that is about to change. Next summer, my friends, I am going to be covering the Paris 2024 Olympic Games for the CBC. What's more Canadian than that? This is one of the greatest honors and privileges of my career. Honestly, it's a dream come true. I'm going to be in Paris interviewing the athletes for all of you. Next summer can't come soon enough. I'm so excited to do this. I hope you'll join us. I'll see you then. Pretty cool, isn't it? Big up Eri Hawani, the absolute fucking legend. Allegedly, he was hard to work with. Remember, Brendan Schaub said he was hard to work with. He's hard to work with. Um, you know, he's a beast, all this sort of type of shit, you know, making it seem like he's fucking toxic and shit. But it seems like he doesn't stop getting these deals. Networks, corporations, production companies, you know, they don't stop to reach out to him in terms of covering certain things. I wonder why that is. Maybe, just maybe he's good at his job. Maybe. And the thing that's funny about it is that I don't doubt there is a possibility that Ariel is a bit hard to get along with or hard to work with. I don't doubt that. Maybe there is something about his drive, something about, you know, maybe how ambitious he is, how driven he is, right? Maybe there is something about that that would make him hard to work with. That's entirely possible. But if you guys know anything about working in a corporate environment, you would know that the thing about, you know, smashing in a corporate environment is that you can get away with having a bullshit personality if you're just good at what you do. If you are good at what you do, you're consistently on time, you do work of a really high standard, people will pull up with a lot when it comes to your personality. So maybe Brendan's right. Maybe Ariel is a pain in the ass, but he's actually good at what he does. That's the difference. Brendan hasn't realized that, that you just can't get away with not being good at what you do and still winning in life. That doesn't, that's not how it works. You have to be actually good at what you do at some points. And Ariel's kind of proven that over the years, despite all the controversy, everything happening, he does not stop to get to the bag. I mean, the bags keep fucking following him everywhere. Do you know what I mean? It's fucking crazy. So big up Ariel for that one. That's a really fucking big achievement. Really big um, honour as well. Covering the Olympic Games for his dear old fucking country of birth, Canada. So he must be super happy about that. And again, some more big news courtesy of Ariel. He's now been voted um, MMA Journalist of the Year 14 years in a row. 
14 fucking years in a row he's been voted the MMA journalist of the, of the year no surprise there really to be honest because you know um, apart from the guys on YouTube who are smashing it when it comes to just mainstream MMA guys you know there's no you know no one really comes close to Ariel as a singular person there are some good duos right Luke Thomas Brian Campbell's out there but I think as a singular entity no one really comes close to Ariel so it's not surprised that he's won it once again again more proof that if you just focus on the work and you know you, you focus on that you're probably going to get quite far in life really and truly especially in a scene like MMA journalism where you know most guys out there are pretty shit anyway so if you have some level of talent some level of insight some level of intellect whatever and you approach that well you have a good consistent work ethnic most likely you're going to smash it so big up Ariel Hawani massive 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 honor good to see the fucking G the real CEO out there um, doing the good fucking work we love to see it we love to fucking see it moving on here quickly um i want to talk about this because um obviously uh, do you remember your, when i said to you guys oh um Eric, what you call alice jones is back now on twitter um elon musk reinstated him after a very democratic public vote everyone was happy about it and shit look at how he started his reign back on twitter look at how alex jones arrived back on fucking twitter this guy's a fucking psycho listen to alex jones he's back on twitter and he's letting his fucking nuts hang and I just say die. And they got there real quick or pretty close to it. Die mm, in the nose. It's going off the face, gone. B black hole, blood shooting out. No nose. I've torn three noses completely off people's faces. Die. <laughs> I've had nose bones stick in my hand because I said die. And nobody taught me that. It's instinctive. Die, motherfucker. Die, motherfucker. Die. <laughs> <laughs> yo can you imagine can you imagine can you imagine being alex jones and coming back on twitter after all this time and that's how you come back on that's how you let your nuts hang come on bro like honestly do you even believe this guy do you even believe that story to be true that allegedly he's ripped noses from faces that you know what that sounds like that sounds like the kid in school Remember when you were growing up, there was that kid in school that would lie that he's a karate, that he knows how to do karate, or that his dad knows karate or something, that he's a black belt. And you talk about how one day he broke someone's guy, he broke a guy's hand with just a with just a palm of his hands or something, like all that sort of type of shit. That's what that sounds like. Alex Jones is on a fucking mad one. And we've got one more clip here, curse of Alex Jones. We've got a good old um, motivational clip of Alex Jones talking that mess as well. Hear him on this regard. I'm a guy that takes depressants, not pills, alcohol, because I can't handle the truth. And I know that's the issue. I can't handle how alive I am right now in the fight against these tyrants. And how hard I'm going to push to go after them because I'm so full of life and so full of resistance to these murdering pedophiles who want to get in the way of God's plan. And let me tell you, I've been taken up to the third heaven. I've been jacked into the big plan. I've seen it. I've seen Pause. it, I can't even compute all that's so fantastical. You've not seen nothing. You ain't heard nothing. You ain't spelled nothing like this. I don't have words to tell you. But I tell you, anybody tries to get in the way of the incredible plan the big guy's got for us has got me pissed, and I'm just begging to stay on the team, man. Just put me in the game, coach. Whatever you say, coach. I know I'm weak. I know I'm pathetic. Man, you're amazing. I'm so lucky you baby. What do I do, boss? What do I do? <laughs> I'm like a hunting dog, man. Just take me out of the house. Just turn me on them. Just tell me what I got to do. Tell me what I got to do. Tell me what I can do for you. I love him. I love him. I absolutely love him. He's an absolute unhinged psychopath, bro. Unhinged psychopath. And it's good to have him back on social media. I'm not going to lie. You know, selfishly, because I like to see psychos crash out. I love a good psycho crash out. I am enjoying every single minute of it. Hopefully no one gets hurt. That's what I don't want to see. No one needs to get hurt, you know, because of fucking Alex Jones. But just coming back, the way he's coming back, I'm loving it. I swear, I can't lie. I can't even pretend to lie that I'm not loving it. I'm loving every single minute of it. He's letting his nuts hang. No one can do anything about it. And it's going to be an absolute shit show. It's going to be an absolute fucking shit show. And it's good to see. Not going to lie. It's good to see. I love a good crash out. I love a good freaking crash out, okay? You can't deny me a good crash out. I swear to God, you can't. <laughs> Life is boring enough as it is, man. Life is fucking vanilla. If this guy comes in with some bits and bobs to keep it going, then I'm all for it. You feel me? You feel me? Then talking about more vanilla, talking about life being vanilla and loving a good crash out, we have, of course, have to cover the fucking Kanye rant recently. Um, what I love about these Kanye rants personally is this. Whenever he disappears or whenever he's like not on social media, 
there are a, there is a segment of his fans maybe myself included in the past who think to ourselves okay he's doing the work he's doing the self work he's you know he's he's getting help whatever it may be he's gonna come back better that's what you usually think especially if he says if, especially if he if he decides to go on a bit of a break post saying something crazy we think okay cool he's realized what he said was crazy he's gonna go back and like make amends work on himself and come back a better person but it never happens if anything the more time he spends away from the public light or the public or the, or the limelight or in front of cameras or social media or whatever is the more times he kind of doubles and triples down on whatever point he had before he left so when the whole red hat mega hat thing was going on people assumed because he wasn't wearing it he didn't like he wasn't a mega anymore then as soon as he got back on the camera he reminded everybody no nah, donald trump is my dad you know what I mean? Like, he's the hero. He's the best guy, blah, blah, blah. So, he drove everyone crazy. Same thing goes for the Vultures rollout. During the Vultures rollout, everyone just assumed everything was cool. Then he jumps up on stage. He wears that pointy Ku Klux Klan type of a hat thing. Everyone goes kind of crazy. And then, during the listening session, recording session for Vultures, I think it's in Miami, he decides to go on this random rant. And this is the only time where he looks legitimately unhinged in a while usually i've seen him i feel okay cool you know he's whatever kanye but this is the one time i've listened to him and i actually have noticed the unhingedness of it and you know why i notice it because of how quickly he's jumping from different subjects he talks about one thing then he doesn't finish his thought rolls into another thing then to another thing then back to another thing it's pretty crazy to kind of try to follow the thread of the fucking rant but hear him rant hear kanye rant and try and focus on what he's actually saying no, none of y'all motherfuckers here with no Instagram, nobody living, nobody at, and I don't want to hear shit from none of these nigga Jewish niggas talk about, oh, he's in an episode. Harley Passenick, follow me to the fucking hotel. The nigga killed kill Aaron Carter, and now they acting like they won't kill, yeah. uh, clear the Backstreet Boy sample. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Harley Passenick, pusher, yeah. your yeah. trainer. Yeah. Harley yeah. Passenick, Jay-Z. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And then niggas be hanging around these niggas just for the money or some Mike Rubin shit. I slap the shit out of Mike Rubin. I see that nigga. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, fuck, fuck these niggas, bro. To be fair, I, I feel him on the Mike Rubin thing. The Mike Rubin thing, you know, it's annoying how much of hip hop sucks up to Mike Rubin, right? How this dorky white dude has ended up being some cool guy in the scene. It's fucking bizarre. The white party thing is fucking odd. Like, it's really, really strange, right? There's nothing about that that looks appealing. Or well, that looks inviting in the slightest. If anything, if you go there, that's usually a sign of you being a part of the Illuminati for the most part, right? You are definitely into some crazy shit if you're standing there, you know, letting this guy hug you from behind and shit. I'm not really for that. The Harley Passionix thing is odd because I think that's his personal trainer. The guy that he was accusing of. Big up, Stinger Good. Appreciate it for Super Chat, brother. How are you feeling about Cardi new music? Oh, absolutely loving it. Absolutely loving it. I've been playing it on repeat. I played the other one as well. What's it called? Um, You're the Moon. Um, I've been having it on repeat. The video is fucking live, lively. Interesting to see him displaying all the cars and stuff because he's quite private with that sort of stuff. So it's interesting to see him putting all that stuff on the video, like his cars he drives and shit. Um, I always find that odd personally for me. Showing people what cars you actually drive, especially if you're a celebrity at that kind of level, people will always know where you're at. Do you know what I mean? They can always kind of track you, follow you. I don't know, it's a bit strange, but regardless, nice car collection. Um, love the jewelry, love that upside down cross, love how it all, it's all kind of it kind of looks like um, what's it kind of remind me of? Maybe a rival or something, the aliens in a rival with a little lines all over it. So I quite like how that looked, liked what he was wearing, liked the vibe of it overall. Um, again, maybe I'm in a minority here, but. Does Kai wear makeup? When I watched the video, it felt like he was wearing makeup. Like he had some sort of foundation on or something. Again, maybe just got good skincare regime, but it looked very, you know, foundation-y kind of level. Anyway, regardless. So yeah, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. But I'm still good. Appreciate you. Fuck these niggas, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm on my Farrakhan Don shit right now, bro. Because guess what? These Yeezys gonna sell. Yeah. They sabotaged the show today. They sabotaged the Instagram. They cut off the fucking Adidas contract. They did all the shit. Then they wanna go get light skin yay. You gotta understand. That's Jerry. His real name is light skin yay, bro. <laughs> Dead ass, he told me that was his name. It was light skin yay. They Talk about Jerry Lenzo there, but um, I'm sure there's some truth in it. I'm sure there's some truth in the system, in the music industry system, not being happy that, yeah, he's still winning the way he's winning, right? Because despite all these crazy outbursts, despite all of his breakdowns, 
He still gets crazy numbers on his streams. People are clearly still um, eager to hear new music from him. The live shows sell out. People are going to the listening sessions. They're following around the world and shit. Like, he's still in demand. That's obviously good to see. And when you hear the music too, unfortunately, it's like what they say about musicians when they go through a, a, you know, a pretty heavy breakup. Usually it's some of the best music they ever, they ever, they ever make. And the same thing goes for Kanye. The more crazy episodes that he has, the better the music is. So it's no surprise that that one performance he did of Vultures on that stage show, um, the one where they were trying to find the fucking ox cable was really good. Those 10 tracks were really good. From what I heard of them, they sounded amazing. Like that's a potential album of the year and he dropping it randomly in fucking December. So he's clearly still got it. He's clearly still got it. But, you know, if you're one of those people that has those, you know, if you have feelings and empathy and shit, you're going to be looking at this kind of sad thinking, oh, you need some help or whatever, baby. But even someone like myself that's just in it for the art, in it for the music, in it for the craziness, this is fucking fun. They want the light-skinned version, they want a George Floyd, they want a Virgil, they like, they don't let me speak at the funeral. I saw two, three, four, five white people not let me speak at Virgil. By the way, this is a minute in. A minute in. We've spoken about Harley Pasenik. We've spoken about slapping Mike Rubin. The industry being against him. Jay Lorenzo being the light-skinned Kanye. Now we're speaking about Virgil. If this is not a clear sign of mental illness, I don't know what is, but it's incredible. We've got five different conversation strands in a minute and four seconds. None of y'all niggas and Drake, because nigga. Hold on, hold on. Be quiet while I'm talking, baby. Drake. Do you know who that was, by the way, in the background? People thought it was Yes Jules. People thought the girl in the background, there's some girl that keeps interrupting and she eventually gets chucked out. It's one half of the blackout girls. If you know about No Jumper, you'll know about these girls. These two white girls, I think they're sisters. Um, they're, they're super ratchet you know um ladies of the night and they get you know they get blacked out that's what they're known for partying and having a good time and they somehow ended up in the same room as kanye the blackout girls were in the same room as fucking kanye i don't know why but that's the girl that keeps interrupting us keeps saying we love you kanye <laughs> uh, absolute bird talk but it's fucking hilarious this is this is one of those kind of adage you know people say like the company you keep this is it right when you go for an episode the company you keep is yes men and the blackout girls I love you. I'm going to get the tattoo. But any of y'all niggas, Trav, Drake, whoever, y'all got to show up. And don't tell me I'm talking crazy. Y'all niggas, I motherfucking Pharrell yeah, and me. Life. Hey, come on. Me, Pharrell, <laughs> we broke down this door. We all in this shit together. Yeah. We all in this shit together. And we all dealing with a lot of... Yeah. We all... And what I'm telling you, a lot of... Also, I love the ego of like standing in a room full of people who are twisted and drunk and expect them to just stand and listen to you talk uninterrupted for like uh, you know an hour or something that's clear to can't it's like come on bro like <laughs> the girls that just want to go do another bump they want to have another fucking casamigos jimmy you know I mean? they want to stand there and listen to you speak for an hour <laughs> by yourself <laughs> people have shit to say about my jewish comment but ain't nobody in this motherfucking room and none of y'all entertaining niggas ever said nothing Oh, is that true? D3, D3. Is that actually true? Did, 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 did Matthew Perry die because of ketamine? Really? That's really unfortunate, man. If that's true. When I was praying to see my kids, one of the last days, uh, 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 what's my nigga that got fucking, uh, locked up for the mega salad shit? Oh, Tory. Tory. Okay, look. So Tory Lanez called me. We were saying prayers. We were saying prayers on the phone together. And I pray. That's interesting news, isn't it? Tory Lanez called Kanye for prayers. Tory Lanez probably should have gotten a stand. You know what I mean? First and calling Kanye. Imagine calling Kanye to help you get out of prison. Like he should have, he should have went on the stand first and professed his innocence or something. Fucking hell, Tory man. The worst, but yeah, you know I mean, but hey, interesting to hear. Pray that day. Also, another observation. I've never understood this. I why does Kanye keep bringing up his kids to the public as if we, what can we do to help him get custody of his kids? He always seems to make it seem like it's everyone's responsibility to help him in that regard. Like, what is that all about? You guys didn't help me with my kids. You guys didn't help me. It's like, what, what can we do? We don't know. We don't know, Kim. We don't know you. We can't do jack shit. And y'all saw that shit. And y'all saw when I couldn't see my kids, when I couldn't see Chicago too. All y'all niggas on Instagram got some shit to say. Y'all niggas saw this shit. Don't tell me about my fucking political opinion. I made more money to show you that money ain't nothing. It's our money, nigga. It's our country, nigga. Yeah. It's not stolen from yeah, Here, nigga. In, in St. Louis, nigga, in Missouri. They yeah. stole it. All the shit. America, just the latest bitch that been ran through so many times. The Greeks right. hit her. Master Moose hit her. We had her. The Indians and shit. The motherfucking, the motherfucking. That's a crazy analogy, isn't it? 
describing the world as a as a slag that's been hit by different people over the years is fucking crazy analogy and i never heard of that one right the world is my bitch hmm maybe that's how i should approach the life now i should have approached life by saying the world is my fucking personal bitch and i'm gonna fuck her <laughs> the world the world is my slag <laughs> And she's gonna swallow. <laughs> Pilgrims, it's the Jewish niggas. They dress the same, nigga. It's the same shit. That's the story. They put us in the school. The Rothschilds. I know Jay Z back here, like, oh, this nigga going down now. I've been here for a year, my nigga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Z thinks he's gonna die. Like, what? <laughs> okay. Can't fucking touch me. Why? Because God cover me. He yeah. Cover me. And God. guess what, Trump? We ain't giving you support unless you get Larry out, unless you get Jeff oh, out. You understand? Yeah. Again, we're two minutes fifty five in. We've heard about Trump, we've heard about Jerry Lorenzo, Mike Rubin, Jay Z, the world being his bitch, custody for his kids. Wow. Because y'all niggas, y'all y'all politicians think y'all gonna just get our shit for free. Oh, all of a sudden, nigga, cause you got a mug shot, you with us now? No, nigga. No, what you gonna do for us? What they gonna do for us? Y'all niggas done voted Democrat all these motherfucking times. These y'all niggas showing up with the LV show. These niggas is colonizers, nigga. The French own 80% of the banks in Africa, nigga. That's why I just met with MBS, nigga, head of Saudi. So what's the so the L, so what do you think about the LV show? He thinks that guy shouldn't go to the LV show anymore. What, because of Virgil dying? Or because he didn't get the job? Or is it because of Pharrell? Does he have beef with Pharrell or something? Or maybe he's talking about um Alexander Arno or whatever it may be. I'm not too sure about that one. Um the MBS thing is pretty good, right? He's he's now friends with uh, Mohammed bin Salim. But is that his name? Mohammed bin Salam, whatever his name is, right? MBS. Uh, so maybe that, that's a good little connection there. Hey, nigga, we don't have to bow to this shit, nigga. We, okay, it's 60 million of us in America, 60 million Jews in the world. 50% of our deaths is abortion. 25% of us go to prison. Raise one hand if you don't know one nigga in prison, one nigga got locked up, and one nigga poor. Is that a way to count deaths, though? Is that, does that make sense? Do you count deaths by abortions is that what happens and how do you even huh? that sounds weird isn't it like 50 he's saying 50 percent of black people die because of an abortion that sounds a bit odd and that doesn't sound right 50 <laughs> percent of what african-americans die from abortion and the rest of it what gang violence or something is that is that like a that's like a republican right-wing type of talking point isn't it? it doesn't it sounds inflammatory but it doesn't sound legit i'm sure the numbers have been skewed i'm sure Something about that. That sounds sound. Because why would you even count abortion as deaths? Like, that, that's, what? Anyway, whatever, whatever, whatever. What do I know? Wait, raise your hand if you don't know. You don't know one person got abortion. Now, now, I tell you. Now, I tell you. If it was in a Jewish. <sighs> you should have asked the blackout girls how many abortions they got. <laughs> Between the two, they're probably putting up fucking football numbers. <laughs> Mother on Friday, when no fucking. Everybody raised their hands. So, wait, 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 wait a second. But who got. But wait, wait, wait a second. Who make the hospitals, though? Mm. Who, who got the hospitals? These are Zionists, nigga. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Jesus Christ, Hitler, yay. Third party, sponsor that, nigga. What? <laughs> what? Jesus Christ, Hitler, yay. Sponsor that. Is that his new party? Jesus Christ sponsored... What? Yeah. Bring the sponsorships to that. Because there's going to be some niggas that feel exactly like me. I don't give a fuck, nigga. I'm seven. I don't give a fuck about life or death. I, I get visitation with my kids. I ain't gonna say so. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Laura, AZ, there's fifty percent chance you would have been aborted, G. <laughs> yeah, probably. But you know, I was born such a long time ago. I don't think. Yeah, big up Eric C. Appreciate. Oh, fucking hell. Manchester is blue. Trophy. Blue heart. Trophy. Blue heart. Trophy. Blue heart. <sighs> Thank you, Rexy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Niggas walk around like look like soccer players. They don't even fucking know. They don't even know they got the dad, the kid. They see me come play one on nobody. They still feel you. They feel me, but they trying to program them. The head of Louis Vuitton, Bernard Arnault, fuck you. Okay, no. Alexander Ooh. Arnault, no, fuck nigga. you. Francois Pino, no, no. fuck you. Dimna, fuck you. Fuck Balenciaga. Uh, 
fuck like Cedric. Hey, yo, easy on Blenciaga. Easy. Easy on Demna, fucks. Okay? Let's, let's easy. You know? Not too much on Demna. Not too much on Demna. Not too much on Blenciaga. You know how, you know that's got a special place in my heart. Not too much on Demna. Not too much on Blenciaga, Kanye. Okay? Relax. Relax. Take it. You no? Know? Wind your neck in, mate. Easy. Easy. Also, big up Yes Jules for getting her way in there as well. Big up Yes Jules for wrangling her way in there. It's a good, good, good little link up there. Don't say me shit, nigga. I'm by myself in this motherfucking room, nigga. Everybody, shut the fuck up. Hey, shut the fuck up. Let me tell you something right now. Just the fact that you ain't listening to me. It's it. <laughs> ain't none of y'all niggas with me. I'm by my fucking self. Cause ain't none of y'all niggas stand up for me. And nobody you stop. Guys, it's shut. Just, just shut up. up. Be quiet before you get exiled. Like yeah. next. Time. <laughs> shut up before you get exiled. Imagine someone talk to you like that. Imagine somebody talking to you like that. Shut up before you get exiled. Yo. <laughs> I'm saying this. Nobody with me. Everybody here. Have the motherfuckers on a check. Half the motherfuckers just here like, ha ha, uh -huh. laughing at jokes, laughing at the raps and shit. Nigga, I made these beats in my mama's basement. I drew these motherfucking shoes since I was in seventh grade. Nigga, because when I asked nigga step up, not one nigga stepped up. Not one nigga stepped up. Oh my, who the fuck is that? Who the fuck is that? I ain't afraid to step up. Who the hell is that girl? This random girl just stands up. I ain't afraid to step up. I'm going to suck your dick standing up. <laughs> Who is that? Who the fuck is that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. None of the famous niggas, Mav Carter, sold me out. You know what I'm saying? She's no. still standing up, though. She's still standing. Big up her. She's still standing up. Nobody fucking said y'all saw me and you see my kids. All y'all rich niggas got y'all kids in that Zion school. Fuck Sierra Canyon. My, my daughter. Sierra Canyon, see the cyanide. You know, same old, same old. Same school that he's, uh, Brian's. I think that's the same school that Brendan Brendan sent these kids to, isn't it? I'm pretty sure Brendan sent these kids to the same school. Sa Sierra Canyon, Sire Cedar Cyanide. Ripped up the motherfucking couches in the house to be able to be with me right now. Y'all don't know what's going on, for real. Oh, that's not a good thing. He's hinting at the fact that Northwest is, just, is basically picking who she wants to spend more time with, and it looks like his daddy. Where y'all tick-tocking it all? And obviously, here he is telling the public about it which is nice isn't it right that's a good way to look after your children and to make sure that there's no splits in the family right put out all your family business in public that's all that's a great way to go about things isn't it wonderful wonderful yay wonderful wonderful way all that shit y'all put up with all that shit i don't give a fuck nigga i'm in pop i'm in vegas like pop my daughter had the tupac fucking right, t-shirt so i'm saying witness this shit visit this shit but I don't believe nobody but me, nigga. I'm looking for y'all. I gotta say we with you. You're not with me. No one's with me because no one's really with me. You know what this kind of sounds like? I'm not gonna lie. You know what this kind of sounds like? A little bit. Hold on to your hats. Hold on to your hats. Him saying, him doing this whole like you know over exaggerating thing. You're not with. You're not with me, nigga. Right? You know what he kind of sounds like? DJ Academics. He kind of sounds like DJ Academics. When academics goes on these rants where he's like firing back at somebody and talking about how he made so much money on his own and his fans have got him, they're holding him down. He kind of sounds like DJ Academics. I wonder if Ye's been watching academic streams. Big Ye, big Kanye, big big Ak. I wonder, I wonder, has Ye been watching academic streams? He sounds a little bit like DJ Academics. I swear to God he does. But it's God. just me and God. That's what I'm saying. And I'm still alive. Let's go. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't post. When I couldn't see my kids, y'all ain't post. Y'all ain't stop the Adidas shit. Y'all niggas let. What do you want us to do with these kids, though? What are we meant to do? We don't know what's going on. We, 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 we I'm, sh I'm, I think most people from the outside in could see, looking at them, that, yeah, you know, you know, outside of the money and opportunities and the privilege, being the, being the daughter or being the kid of Ye and Kim probably isn't the most stable of parents to have right probably not the the best um parental figures to kind of look at or to kind of look out for you you would imagine outside of what they can provide for you in terms of a roof food in your belly opportunities blah 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 as parents you know not the greatest we can see it but 
I'm sure there's two sides to both story. He's painting out Kim to be the awful, evil influence on his kids, but I'm sure there are things that he's done that don't shine him in a good light. So what what do you want us to do? How can we pick sides of this? How? Really? What can we do? What can we actually do? Adidas crash no, the richest did. nigga all time. Hey, Adidas was begging. Wait a second, wait a second. I put up one tweet and then Ari Emanuel put, oh, we got to drop this nigga and all niggas just watch. The only nigga that had the Trump hat, the only nigga that went and got them billions, the only nigga that's breaking through all kinds of ideas and fashion. I've been calling a faggot so many she's, times for tight jeans. She's still standing up. She's still standing up. Big of her. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got niggas from Chicago that I take care of that's still trying to sell me. Oh. Trying to say I can't go to motherfucking GD. Nigga, I'll be way bigger folks than you, nigga. You niggas don't take care right of me. Right now, your thing is. Why, who, you wait, say, say, wait, say, who you? Who you? Shut up. Who you think? No, hold on, hold on. Who you think the old man called? You. We put, we put Drake on. We put Drake on stage. Who the old man called? The girl in the background's hilarious. You, you know what I'm saying? Does God put you in position? Nigga, just because I had a. Because <laughs> God put you in position. You know, blackout girls are trying to get in. The blackout girls want want to get in. They want. <laughs> they want that Yeezy hitter. Hard, nigga. Fuck everybody, nigga. You the biggest best. That's what I'm trying to say to you, niggas, yeah. right Vessel. fucking now, nigga. Vessel. This is what chopping away. <laughs> You're the biggest vessel. <laughs> I want your vessel inside of me. That's what they actually mean, isn't it? Jesus Christ, biggest vessel, huh? I'm sure, sure. Sure. <laughs> for Drake, this is what you've been waiting for. Jay Z, this is what you've been waiting for. Kim, this is what you've been waiting for. This is proof as well that you could be legitimately crazy. You could be having a psychotic episode in front of people, but if you've got money, clout, status, fame, they're gonna enjoy it. They're gonna look at you and just laugh because you're providing the ambiance. Because most likely, Kanye got the drinks. He's got them in a nice room, right? Wi-Fi. They're playing music. They're mincing mingle. You know what I mean? Like, he's got he's going through an absolute episode in real time. And they're all just there sitting around looking at him. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. There's something kind of uh, metaphorical about this, isn't there? All you niggas, look, let me tell you something. This is the way the world God works. God is Karen. using him be right now. Okay, be quiet for a second. I'll scroll for a second. <laughs> I love you, Bo. Okay. No, no, you got to get over here. Hey, stop, sorry. Calm down, please. God, God <laughs> runs the world. <laughs> Calm and down, please. That, you got thousand-year-old family. This is the one bit where I think is true. This is this is a really accurate assessment of how the world works. To be fair, I thought this was really on point. Hey, stop, sorry. Calm down, please. God, God please. runs the world. Then under that, you got thousand-year-old families, Medici. Under that, you have the Vatican, the Pope. Under that, you have the financial groups that control all your shit. The Black Rock, Rock, Rock Vanguard. After that, you have Putin, you have Trump, you have all this shit. And after that, you got what all this shit is, entertainment, Podcast. Hollywood. Podcast. Take that, run that back, run in the schools. But I, I'm going to give y'all uh, one last... Hey, yo, Seven Dirt, you're right. I'm, of course I'm glazing too much. He's the greatest artist of his generation. He's the greatest artist of all time, maybe. Living greatest artist. But he's also fucking crazy. <laughs> and I love it, it being on full display because this is proof that the only way to really achieve that level of genius is that you have to be a little bit unhinged. I think most people, if you give them, if you give them, if you put them in front of a camera, most of high, most kind of, you know, artists that you you think are high level and genre defining, right? Geniuses, right? Mavericks. They sound like, yay, behind closed doors. He's just the only one that's on camera willing to put it out there. But if you're, if you're a real artist of the truest, you know, in the truest sense of the word, you're super high caliber, you're going to be a little bit nuts. You're going to be a little bit nuts. Not even a little bit. You're going to be very, very nuts. And this is an example of it. There's no other way to get to that kind of level of of expertise, of execution, of creativity without having a couple of screws loose. It doesn't happen that way, which is why I'm happy to see he's doing it in fucking full, full, full fucking power. So yeah, I'm glazing. I'm glazing him like a fucking donut. I'm licking that fucking bad boy, right? Because he's the greatest, but he's also fucking crazy. Thing before I go. When, when, you, when I first put the tweet up, I was dealing with a divorce lawyer. And I explained, I explained to the lawyer what my issue was. 
And his response was... <laughs> Sarlux. Yeah, it's just too bad that he has a racist and right-wing fascist. Yeah, exactly. A little bit bad, isn't it? Oh, that's the only thing wrong with him, right? He's a little bit racist. <laughs> He's a little bit of an anti-Semite. Just a tiny bit. <laughs> That's the thing. It's a tiny bit, you know? Like... <laughs> oh, mate, I still can't believe that anti-Semitism world tour he went on was fucking brilliant, man. What a way to tank your own career. I fucking loved it. Listen to me. If you keep up this anti-Semitic rhetoric, then you won't see your kids. A nigga I knew said I couldn't have an opinion. Or I wouldn't see my kids. Y'all know who y'all fucking playing with? This is a vessel of God. He gonna burn all your shit down. I swear. I knew these niggas is trying to make surviving yay, surviving this way. That's why I sent it up while I was still in the high schools. What? Bill Cosby couldn't do shit by the time they got him. What? R. Kelly couldn't do shit by the time they got him. I love it. I love it. He still on that R. Kelly and Bill Cosby are innocent vibe. I fucking love it. He's always been on this kind of thing where he's anti cancel culture anyway. But I love how he's, in a way, by talking about surviving Ye, is he kind of admitting that he might have done some crazy shit in the back in the past? Or is he saying that someone would have put out a surviving Ye duck to bring him down? What's he basically saying here? Is he trying to say that R. Kelly and Bill Cosby are not guilty of their crimes and they went against it, they went against the establishment and the establishment brought them back down to earth by making accusations against them that would tarnish their careers what the fuck is he saying yeah <laughs> i don't think he understands that whole surviving whoever meme isn't just like flippant it's more so oh this guy or this guy or person is just some fuck shit that's what that meme is about surviving whoever is more of a this person's into some fuck shit look into it a bit more even though it hasn't been maybe you know confirmed whatever it may be i don't think he kind of understands the meme but maybe i'm wrong but I, I do love the red vultures merch i'm not gonna lie the red vultures merch is fucking hard that logo is fucking hard also i'm not gonna lie send it up because the same send niggas that made them rich is the same niggas doing the documentary and fuck cootie fuck you because everybody saw that third episode that's what the whole shit was about period Me selling opioids who's cootie I'm not even bipolar and there are signs of autism from an accident. Kanye thinks he's not bipolar and he also thinks he gets he, he got autism because of a car crash. <laughs> fucking crazy, isn't it? Kanye thinks he has car crash induced autism, which is fucking hilarious, really. That's something that you'd think that's something you'd get from a fucking Facebook video. They're gonna hit me with a fucking medication, have us selling opioids for them. They made me the face of bipolar. Okay, nigga, big pharma, where my royalties, nigga? A lot of fucking drugs you done sold off of the idea of yay being bipolar. Don't say shit right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They come here. I think, crazy I, think I pretty much wrapped up. Like, like, what are you I'm just saying. They yeah, take out. Take out. Take out. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Come on. Ready? I'm just saying. I was I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Come on. Nigga, take. They can make it. <laughs> the blackout girls got chucked out fucking hilarious man. i fucking love them big up the blackout girls um big up yay i love the craziness i'm not gonna lie i love seeing a good crash out i love seeing it play out in real time i love that everyone's crying online about his opinions again i fucking love it the music drops it's gonna be hard i'm gonna be banging it in the gym when it does eventually drop so when vultures does drop let me check my phone is it out yet? I don't think it's out yet at the moment. But when Vultures does eventually drop, I'm going to have that on my phone. I'm going to be banging it out, pushing weights, listening to that shit. And, you know, things will continue. Let's see. Is it out yet? Nope, still not out. We've got one song, but no fucking album. So we'll wait until it drops. It is what it is. It is what it is. Big up everybody tuning in by the stream chat. If you're enjoying what you listen to so far, make sure you smash the fucking like button down below. Don't be fucking stingy. Smash the like button down below if you may. That'll be greatly appreciated. But if you don't want to do so, I also understand. Cool. Moving on. Let's get into some Shub Show shit from last week. So Shub Show from last week was fairly entertaining. I got a couple of clips here I want to play for you guys. The first clip, the first clip is an interesting one because in this clip, Brendan says that Showtime were kind of forcing him to cover Bellator. 
interesting development or insight that we probably didn't know about previously. He's now accusing Showtime of not understanding the MMA environment, industry, scene, whatever it may be, and that they were trying to get him to cover Bellator when really the UFC is the only competition, the only fight league in the game. Bellator doesn't matter. Who cares about fucking Bellator? It's only UFC, which is interesting because it also shows why Showtime would have, you know, basically told Brendan to kick rocks. It makes sense now, right? Because he wasn't willing to do any of the work. <laughs> you know what I mean? He was, it's kind of like, it's weird because he's, he's basically admitting that he didn't want to do more work than what he had to. He only went to cover the UFC because that's what he knows, but he didn't want to research a new fight league. He didn't want to research names or whatever. He just went to do the UFC stuff and that's it. But he's kind of admitting it as a way to like show that Bellator didn't understand what they were doing. And really it's making him look bad. But hey, you know, this is, this is fucking Brendan. So let's play the clip here. I think, what is it at? It's at 27.10. And then let's play him saying what he's saying. It's a very interesting development here. Brendan's saying that, Showtime asked him to or forced him to cover Bellator when he didn't want to. Let's play it for you here. Bear me a second, I'll get up on here. Boom, there you go. Discovery, the worse it is for the UFC. My my only question is so how's UFC different than like I know how they're different in aspects of the NFL are employees. The players are employees. They're not subcontracted. Yeah. The UFC says they're not employees. They're subcontracted. So the you know the union, all that stuff. All right, cool. I'm I'm just curious how the NFL is not a monopoly. The NBA is not a monopoly. There's somebody way smarter who can explain this. Who's pulling their hair out right now? Like this is why I get it. I'm just I, it's just a simple question. How can the NFL and NBA and MLB do it, and the UFC can't? How are they different than that? Now is. Oh, come on. Load for fuck's sake. I'm I'm just curious how the NFL is not a monopoly. The NBA is not a monopoly. There's somebody way smarter who can explain this who's pulling their hair out right now. Like, this is why I get it. I'm just, I, it's just a simple question. How can the NFL and NBA and MLB do it and the UFC can't? How are they different than that? Now, is it just because they're – Fighters are labeled as sub subcontracted, so they don't have to share as much revenue and health benefits and stuff like that. And for one, I thought you nearly said sub cock tractors, sub cock tractors. I thought you had to say that. Case and retirement and compensation. I assume that's how the UFC finagles their way around it, saying they're subcontracted. We don't have to give them that much money. Where the NFL can't do that, NBA can't do that, even though they're monopolies. Yeah. Nobody knows, do they? I do. Just a bunch of Hey, maybe you find out yourself, in it, right? Maybe you do some research and find out a little bit about yourself, no? Maybe. Okay, people saying the video's quiet. Okay, cool. It's just it's not my fault, it's the fucking video itself. So can I lower hire it? Let, let me wait for a second. Apologies the video's a bit quiet. Let me add, let me actually add a filter. Let me see if I can put up the gain on here. Maybe one second. Let's put it up to about Let's do eight. Let's do eight dB. Fuck it. Let's go. Let's go crazy. Let's do eight dB. Let's see what that's saying. So, so, so yeah, we're dumb. But I mean, that makes sense. Every other big league has a players' union. They, they have to collectively because bargain. They're employees. Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. they're in it together. The UFC is not. Mm -hmm. It's the UFC or bust. So the UFC is basically it's subcontracted. Whatever they can benefit from them as being contractors, and then whatever they can benefit them as being actual employees, they're trying to do the employee thing, but they're contractors. That's why there's yes. like a yeah, discrepancy. Yeah. So certain time, like you have to you have to wear this Venom outfit. Okay, but we're subcontracted. Yeah, the likeness stuff was yeah. also crazy. And too. we also own your name and likeness. Yeah. Okay, but we're subcontracted. Subcon because you're treating us like employees. Big up Stinger Goo. like we're subcontracted. Mm -hmm. Jake Paul fight tonight, I think, in a couple hours. Oz fight companion. Now, probably not, Sarlax. I don't give a fuck about Jake Paul, to be fair. I'm, I'm over paying to those fights. Big up Stinger Goo, appreciate you. Bop is like that he got hired by 1FC. Oh, yeah, true. I forgot about that lie, innit? Did he say he's going to be the 1FC official media partner or some shit? What happened to that? You're right. That's a complete lie, isn't it? Bloody hell. Um, yeah, um, but yeah, Sarlux, I'm not gonna watch that. No, I'm not watching Jake Paul stuff. I've what I don't know, what's the last fight I watched? 
What was it? Oh, the Tommy Fury one, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not doing it again. They sold me, you know what I mean? They fucking scammed me one one time. They're not going to get me again. They're not going to get me again on that. I'm, I'm done. I'm done watching those YouTube fights. I'd much rather watch rough and rowdy type things than do that. No way. No, thank you. So I, I assume these lawyers are way smarter. You'd be surprised, man. Way yeah. smarter than me. That's their <laughs> argument. Oh, yeah, the watcher. They're, it wasn't even like employees. It, like, it wasn't even Fury, was it? It was fucking Dylan and Paul, yeah. Like they're subcontract and they have no benefits. They have no leverage here. And then they control the entire market. So they got to be employees. Yeah, we'll see what happens. With now, the it would be cool if they said on, okay, they're employees, we're going to give them benefits, but we won't pay $5 billion. That's probably best case scenario. Where it changes the game forever, they're employees, they get their benefits, and they get compensation they have to pay like the nfl or nba of 50 percent or 47 percent whatever they come to agreement to but they don't have to pay that lump sum fine of five plus billion dollars because that's gonna make them go belly up and then we don't have a job it'd be tough yeah others oh, if this show is based on pfl bellator why do you think showtime went belly up oh i told you beast of a businessman eh Brendan basically saying Showtime and Showtime went under because they wouldn't listen to him. Imagine the ego you'd have to have to say that the entire network went under because they wouldn't take your advice. Brendan, the leader of Thick Boy Network with such blockbuster hits like The Golden Hour and The Shorb Show and Food Truck Diaries, which doesn't happen anymore. He's now saying that if Showtime wouldn't listen to him, they would have maybe still been in business. They focused on PFL and Bellator. And not fucking UFC. You gotta love it. You gotta love Brendan. You gotta love the ego to think that your advice was the one. I'm PFL Bellator. Why do you think Showtime went belly up? I told him <laughs> you can't have a business off Bellator. It was my <laughs> number one disagreement with Showtime. I'm sure that's not true. I'm sure there's somebody out there who only covers Bellator and does very good for themselves, very well for themselves. Sorry. I'm pretty sure there's probably less people out there covering Bellator than UFC. So if you're a content creator or you're a network and you focus, hyper-focus on a league that isn't getting enough of media attention and you use it as a way to kind of prop yourself up and to signal boost that network or that platform or that fight league, you might actually do well for yourself. I'm sure they exist. I'm sure there's YouTubers, content creators in general who only cover PFL, Benator, um, what's Khabib's fight league, right? Eagle, whatever it is, who do pretty well for themselves. So hyper specification is actually a thing. It can actually work for you. Maybe obviously the UFC, UFC is the biggest league and everyone knows the UFC fight league. Um, they know the fighters way more. They know Dana and everything about it, right? It's the one that's obviously the most well known. But if you actually want to be successful and carve out a bit, a bit of a niche for yourself, a bit of a niche, a bit of a niche, you probably should cover stuff like be a better tour. And anything, forget all that, if you're a former professional fighter, it doesn't matter what the fight league is. You're going to be interested in all, all forms of fighting. All forms of combat sports you're going to like. It doesn't matter if it's a, a league in people's garden, whatever it may be. You're going to be interested in it or keep an eye open for it because you're interested in fighting. You love fighting. You love to see new fighters come up. So it doesn't matter what it is. European leagues, whatever, you're going to be fucking into it. So the fact that he isn't, it's probably the most casual thing he said, to be honest, isn't it? That's quite a casual thing to say. I only care about the UFC. I don't care about any other league. It's like, didn't you used to fight, though? Aren't you involved in the fight business? Isn't your one and half of your business funded on fighting? Why would you only care about one league? I can't do a show covering Bellator. Why? Nobody tunes in. And again, only views. It, it, this is another indication of why Brendan's career is where it's at. Only cares about the views only cares about the money, not covering things just for the passion, just because he's interested in it anyway. Nah, if he doesn't bring views, what's the point? Oh, yeah. we disagree. We just got to build it. Nah, I'm telling you, you can't do it. Of course. If you can't, if you don't want to do it, then you're not going to build it. And if you don't build it, it's not going to happen. But again, weird, weird way to speak about Bellator when he was allegedly the one FC fight, you know, media partner or some shit. Remember that lie he made up as well? That was a fucking crazy lie. Now he's saying that Bellator does not matter. Bellator is basically blockbuster. They would force, right? They would force me to cover Bellator. And that was my contract that, you know, they had investment in Bellator. So remember, you guys would get, make sure Brendan covers Bellator this and Bellator that. I'm like, there's nothing there, man. Jesus Nobody Christ. cares. Look at look at the proofs in the pudding. Talk about UFC, you get this. Talk about Bellator, you get this. It's very clear.
Again, they had investment into Bellator, and I get it. Scott Coker's great. Absolutely love Scott Coker. So there we go. There we go. Brendan basically saying he does not think that Showtime would have been successful because they were focusing on Bellator. And again, it's just another indictment of just how short-sighted and narrow-minded he is when it comes to sports. Because I still think the Showtime deal and fucking it up or, you know, basically pissing up a wall, that was definitely one of his biggest faux pas and such an avoidable thing to do. Because if anything, all he had to do was put a little bit of effort into that show, um, a little bit of research, a little bit of preparation, and he would have had a lifelong partnership with Showtime that probably would have rolled into other things in the future also. But the fact that they binned him as soon as the contract was up, didn't renew it, and then signed Luke Thomas and Brian Campbell, who were doing absolute numbers after the fact, really made him look horrible, especially when you think that he was a former pro fighter. Do you know what I mean? He had no, you know, he it was it was embarrassing that he was in that situation in the first place, you know, depending on Showtime the way he was. But then when you are depending on them and they're using you as a sort of a um, marquee, right? They, I think if you if I remember correctly, Brendan signing to Showtime was also a big deal because that was the first time they really got heavy into MMA. So they basically were trying to get into MMA by using Brendan as like the main guy. And it didn't it didn't work out. And obviously they went to sign Luke Thomas and Brian Campbell, who then ended up doing really well in terms of the show, the prep, the information, the entertainment, all that good stuff. So this is another indication of why it never worked out because he just never got the long game. He always was very short-sighted, only saw the UFC, didn't see it any bigger than anything else. And now it's transpired that, you know, look at what Francis is doing with the PFL. Look what all these other fight leagues are doing now. They're all coming up again. They're merging, all these sort of things. Like it's actually becoming quite competitive, I think, in a fight league world. I think if you're an actual fight fan, you like, actually love it now more than ever because yes the UFC is still the number one you know league in the game but if you're an actual fight fan watching you know Bellator cards watching PFL cards is actually quite entertaining nowadays because there's loads of fighters out there the UFC can't sign everybody um, and some people would rather you know fight in a league where they maybe have a little bit more leverage um, the contract's a little bit better negotiated with maybe um, and obviously they put on good for fun fights as well so I think all of that stuff it's proof that the fight game, if anything, is more healthy than it's ever been. You know, the UFC maybe doesn't have as strong as a monopoly it maybe did in the past. So if he would have invested some more time in the Bellator thing, maybe, you know, there'd be some room to kind of grow into the PFL thing also. But he already, you know, it was quite anti-PFL as soon as fucking Francis signed there. So it's no surprise that he has that point of view. It's absolutely no surprise. Then the next clip I'm going to play here is... Bubbity, bubbity, bah, where is it? Oh, it's Brendan talking about Scott Coker. No, it's Brendan talking about Dana White, actually. And Chin makes a very interesting statement about Brendan and Dana, which is fucking bizarre. Because if you know anything about Brendan and Dana, you know that they had a very personal beef because of Brendan's time at the UFC and how he was trying to fight for fighters' pay, which wasn't him fight. It wasn't really him fighting for fighters' pay. It was more so him being annoyed that the UFC wasn't allowing him to get as much money as possible because I think at the time, um, even though he wasn't one of the top fighters, I remember Brendan was actually making quite a bit, a bit of money at the UFC because that was when they allowed you to put the sponsors on their shorts, which I still don't get why they don't do. If the UFC doesn't want to pay their fighters a fair wage or a fair salary for whatever reason, which I think is horrible, right? Some of the fighters in the UFC don't even make 20 grand a year, which is fucking crazy. If they don't want to pay them a salary, then why don't they just let them make up the difference by having their own sponsors on their shorts? You know, like that might be the best way to kind of get around it. If you don't want to give the money, fair enough. Um, they, you only pay them when they fight, cool. But at least let them, you know, make money by having sponsors in their shorts. But they don't do that. You have to wear their fight gear, the sponsors. They don't get a cut out of it. It's fucking weird. But anyway, regardless, Brennan was very big on that. He's making a lot of money and it worked out for him. So he kind of was fighting Dana White because of that. And then um, it turned into a personal beef when they started arguing about, you know, when Brendan basically let the accusation, well, put out the accusation that Dana might have fucked Ronda Rousey back in the day because you're speaking about how Dana and him are Eskimo brothers and blah, blah, blah. So it's been a pretty personal and deep-seated beef. Now, for some reason in the last few years, Brendan has kind of pivoted now and started to like suck off Dana. I'm not too sure if it's to do with the deal that they signed with ESPN or whatever, but Brendan's suddenly gone on a 360 or one gone on a 180 and tried to act as if he's Dana's friend like everything's okay but it's like you can't just say things about people like that and then when you choose f to be over it 
it's over now. The beef is done. It's like, no, that's not how it works. That's, if anything, that's like a form of gaslighting, right? That, that idea that you can just decide when it's over and that you don't have an issue with somebody because you moved on, they should move on also. It doesn't work out. Right. And also, Dana's also known as somebody who's super petty. So him thinking that Dana's going to be okay with him is odd because, you know, he's never going to be okay with, with Brendan. And if you, think, if you think about the recent stuff that happened with him, where Brendan put out that rumour about uh, what's his name about Hamza right he put out some uh, conspiracy theory about Hamza being in collusion with the UFC about missing weight and then Dana dropped that truth bomb and said oh when the journalist at the end said it was Brendan that made up the rumor he said oh that makes sense and that sent Brendan in another tizzy he made another response on Instagram ranting at fucking Dana calling him a you know skinny jean wearing sneakhead which is basically him and it went back and forth anyway since then he's still trying to suck him off and Chin also adds to the suck off by insinuating that Dana and Brendan would be friends if they just sat down and had a coffee, which is a weird thing to say. But hey, let's play the clip. Yeah, Scott's amazing. He's the one that brought so many UFC champions from Strike Force, right? He's the one that found all he this talent. Strikeforce. Yeah, I mean, he started Strike Force, had got all this talent, and those talent. Those talented people became champions in the UFC. Here's the question. Is Scott Coker too nice to run a fight organization? <laughs> is he too good of a guy and too friendly? Because Dana's a shark. Yeah. You look at any, like, Fortune 500 company, go meet those guys. It will hurt your feelings how nasty they are. That's why they're there. Yeah. Scott Coker, you'd want to sit and have coffee with them all day. Dana, I don't think so. That's also not a fair point to make, actually, that all, all, all fight league or all um, sporting league CEOs, owners, commissioners, whatever it may be called, are pieces of shit and evil. No, I, don't, I wouldn't think so. Are they very, um, you know, maybe uh, business minded? Do they basically don't lead with emotions and it's all about business? It's never personal, maybe. But would you say they're all evil and pieces of shit? I don't think so personally i don't think that's the case it's a, it's a weird thing he has in his head that you know if you to in order to be a great businessman you also have to be a piece of shit person i don't think that's actually the case to be fair so who knows man no i, know. I mean no i know no <laughs> chill. oh good question i know i've sat with both of them i know i mean you could tell scott it seems like a more chill dude for sure i'm telling you he's really yeah. nice yeah. yeah super nice D D you know, just if, if I remember correctly, Dana and Brendan have never really liked each other anyway from the minute it's zero. I think it stemmed from, oh, was it that one fight card? Do you guys remember there was that clip of Dana talking about, remember there was, it doesn't happen too much now, but back in the day during UFC, um, Megan O'Leary would interview Dana after fight cards. They stopped doing it now because I think Dana was too hot-headed after the fight cards, but Dana would let it all out. You'd say, oh, yeah, that fight was horrible. That was boring. He didn't really try to knock him out. He wasn't trying to fight. You know what I mean? Like, he'd go fucking crazy. And I think after one particular fight card, I forgot which one it was that Brendan was on, it wasn't a good performance from him. And Dana kind of called him out. So I think they've never really been cool with each other anyway. Dana's never liked Brendan. And Brendan's always got, you know, you can see from Brendan's personality, he's one of those type of people that he thinks he's smarter than what he is. So it wouldn't surprise me if he also fought he was deep down better than Dana or something, you know? That kind of weird battle they have between each other. Just in order to get that level, you got to be a bit of a sap. Those NFL owners, go sit down with Jerry Jones. Let me know how it goes for you. They're fucking savages. When Steve Jobs was alive, go sit down with him. Savage, dude. I do think, though, that like if you and Dana, because you don't, you don't work together anymore, if you and Dana were just like together, you guys would get along really well. I we think along Chin, you are fucking read out to thinking that. If Chin thinks that Dana White and Brendan would get along if they were in the same room together, it's absolutely insane. If anything, they'd probably come to blows. That would not end well. Like, that would not end well. Can you be imagine if Dana and Brendan were in the same room? Come on. Dana's going to say the most hurtful thing straight away. He's going to let it out straight away. He's never liked Brendan. Think about it this way. Dana's really close with Joe. Dana's really close with Theo. A lot of people that Brendan's close with. And I'm sure in the background, Joe's probably tried to reconcile. I'm sure Joe Rogan's tried to make Dana see the good that he sees in Brendan. But Dana still doesn't see it. So Dana's got all these people around him that like Brendan as a friend or like him as a person who are probably telling him, hey, he's a fine, he's a nice guy, nice guy, but he doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> right and obviously Dana doesn't need Brendan either it's like one of those weird it's one of those weird instances 
where somebody doesn't bend to Brendan's will because I guess because Brendan's got association with Joe Rogan most people would probably be willing to let bygones be bygones because Brendan's Brendan and he knows Joe but in this one occasion Dana's already got himself established he doesn't really answer to anybody so he doesn't really need Brendan for anything so he can afford to just say no go fuck yourself so I don't think it would ever end well personally and I also think Brendan's lying about how he's cool with Dana I think if Brendan also saw Dana he wouldn't be just be like wanting to hug him and shake his hand. All those feelings of resentment he had for Dana all those years ago would also come up. I think he's just saying he likes him, trying to be cool with him, to act cool on t- to act cool on you know content on TV, to make it seem like he's more mature and grown up. But really and truly, if he was in the same room as Dana, it wouldn't end well either. It ended the same well it ended with fucking um, what's his face, uh, with what's his name behind that fight. Fine fact, on everything. Yeah, the fact that you guys work together, that's why it was kind of like agree. Yeah. That's, that's why. That's why. Like, it, it, it's we- it's weird how long it takes for the public to get over something. Like, no, it's not weird. I love how he's pretending that to ign- look. Should we get up? Let's get, let's get it up. So, Brendan, let's get let's get it. Uh, claps back at Dana White. Let's see if we can find the, t- the tweet. Someone must have a screenshot of the tweet because he's acting like it's no big deal. But the things you said about Dana, bro, like most people wouldn't be okay with you after the fact i love how he's pretending like it's no big deal what do you let me see if i can find the, the instagram the instagram caption so i must have it as an image here he says some crazy shit about and again it's, it's okay to say it i think he was in a right to say what he said but to pretend like it wasn't a big deal is fucking l- insane let's see if i can find it here has anybody got it here oh man where is it someone must have it let's see uh in, let's write instagram because I'm sure I'm not the only one that's going crazy here. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Here 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 we go. So here we got something, right? Let's let's write here. We've got this. What say here? Um Yeah, here we go. So I guess this this is under yeah, this is under it, it, one of Izzy's posts, right? It says I think this is Izzy posting a clip of, of Brendan talking shit on him. Because again, ben, Brendan's a sly hater. He is a big hater, but he kind of doesn't really admit it. But um, they don't write, write, write the following. Such a fucking tool. What the fuck does this idiot know about the sport or business? At Stylebender, for you to be listening to one, of the, for, to one word from this moron is a waste of your time. The guy went 6-5 and five in the UFC. The only thing he could teach you is how to get KO'd. Tune into it, tune in like this out. They don't fucking get it in. Brendan replied, who look, uh, whoa, look who got a break from folding Ronda Rouse's, from Ronda's laundry. Oh, that's actually quite funny, actually. Look who got a break from folding Ronda's laundry, laundry to jump on Instagram. Bravo, sir. He's right, style bender. What do I know? Listen to the bald guy who has never been in a fight in his life. Do that. You're a, you're a monster. I was referring to guys like Little MMA Saki. With a, okay, cool. So they said that, right? So that already back and forth should be enough to tell you that we're not boys. Another one. Let's see what else Brendan said about him. Uh, yeah, look, 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 look at it. Look at this one. Look at this. 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 Look at this caption. This is hilarious. Yes, Joe Rogan is one of my best friends and played a significant role in my post-fight career. No doubt. You're right about that, Dana White. Two TV shows, sold out worldwide comedy tour, two successful podcasts, and just booked my first major movie. Super grateful. However, if it weren't for the Fratinas um, loading your ass millions of dollars to invest into the idea that wasn't yours from the start, you wouldn't be shit. How does it feel to know once the real businessman brains left, the UFC has been a shell of itself, if with you at the forefront? You tried it all, CM Punk experiment, begging Brock to come back, and praying at night for a context. Tough job to do without Lorenzo holding your hand, making sure you don't mess it all up. Can't feel good. You're a cardio kickboxing coach in Boston in your 20s. Oh, sorry, you'd be a cardio kickboxing coach in Boston in your 40s, hoping to grab a ticket to my stand-up front row if Lorenzo Fratida didn't save your ass. Also, this is no way to talk to an Eskimo brother. Last warning. And he's, and again, in that clip, he's saying, I don't know why people can't get over it. This is proper beef. Like, this isn't like... This isn't like some subtle shit. This is like actual, actual beef. And that's and the, and the and the last comment he makes, not about skinny jeans. Let's see if I can get that one. 
It was something about skinny jeans. Let's see if I can get it. That's the last comment he made, right? Let's see if I can find that one where he said something about him skinny jeans. Let's see if I can find it. Is this the one? Bear with me a second. Yeah, that might be the one, actually. This might be the one. This might be the one. Something about skinny jeans or something. Let's see if I can find this one. Bear with me a sec. Bear with me a sec as I find it. Bear with me a sec as I find it as it loads up here. Um, okay, cool. There we go. Let's, let's play this. Oh, can we, not, can we not read it? Okay, cool. Here's the one. Yeah, so here. Oh, yeah, here's one. So it says, he says, oh, God, here we go again. Uh... What's that? Is I've been I've been, what's that? I've been nothing. Oh, let me take the sound off anyway because this is gonna fucking copyright me. Here we go again. I've been nothing but cool. Yeah, okay, cool. Here we go again. I've been nothing but cool and thought you'd learn from last time you mentioned my name and got destroyed. Unfortunately, not surprised you're a bully. Always have been. You put on a pair of designer jeans and some hip sneakers and you think you're cool. That sounds a bit like him though, doesn't it, right? Um, you're still a dork with a frat bro vocabulary. Spider-Man meme. Um, calling me and numerous people dummy, dumbass, fucking idiot because we have questions about the chaos at UFC 279. Also, no one is talking about the gate tickets. I was referring to pay-per-view buys, how UFC 279 was trending, which you don't release to the public, but will say it went fucking great, bros. Sorry, we just don't buy what you're telling us. After lying numerous times about the sh to the sheep media, you, what's that? You picked to attend events. You don't have the balls to call out the call you out just in a recent press conference you went and caught lying about extra stuff okay let's i'll let it load out again but anyway you get the point you get the fucking point right you get the fucking point brendan brendan and fucking dana have been warring for a while they said some really hurtful things to each other and for some reason he thinks it's all good i don't know why every move you make is a copy of a vince mcmahon only thing you have in common is that you're both on steroids and you dress like assholes need i remind you your origin story is a failed cardio kickboxing instructor who had two rich friends in high school to fund his business now go make a cool video with the nelk boys to stay relevant and have your PR team come up with a good press story to distract the fans away from the fight to pay and how they have to wear those awful Under Armour rock shoes and won't see a dime, dummy. P.S. Quick stealing my shows on Fitboy Network and recreating it on Fight Pass, okay? Also, leave Pat Militech alone. <sighs> so for me, that sounds like beef. Yeah, I'm not forgiving somebody when they say something like that about me, especially if you're Dana. Dana already, like, he's already a very petty, vindictive bully of a person. Imagine if he actually doesn't like you and you actually have a personal beef. Do you think it's ever going to be cool between Brendan and Dana? I don't think so. So, this idea that Chin has that if Dana and Brendan get into a room together over coffee, they're going to be fine is absolutely insane. Ridiculously insane. Let's go back to it again. And him trying to gaslight the fans. I don't know why the fans just don't get over it. It's like, bro, did you see what you you said about him? Like, <laughs> that's why it was kind of like agree. Yeah, that's, that's why. That's think. why. Like, it, it, it's weird. It's weird how long it takes for the public to get over something. Like, even when I do my uh, tour, fans come up like, "Dude, you see Dana? Dude, stick it to him." Or I loved when he stuck it Dana. I'm like, God, that was years ago, dude. Really? I mean, you didn't like, stick it to Dana. You're like, you're fight, no, fight for fighter pay. I won ten nine. I love how he says years. I love how he says years. You can't even pronounce years. Uh, look how he says years. To him, or I loved when he stuck it Dana. I'm like God, that was years ago. Dude. Years ago. Years. <laughs> years. Y a r i y a r r s. Years instead of years. Years. Yours. <laughs> Stick it to him. Or I loved when he stuck it Dana. I'm like God, that was years yours, ago. Yours. Yours. Really? Yours. I mean, you didn't like, stick it to Dana. You're like, you're fight, no, fighting for a fighter pay. I won ten nine. To be fair to Chin, you know he knows where his bread's buttered, right? Chin is a podcast producer. You know, there's not you know there's not many successful podcasts around that can probably pay what Brendan's paying him. He's allegedly got equity in fucking Thick Boy. I get why he's doing it. I mean, he's making sure he knows where his bread's buttered. He's making sure he's keeping fucking Brendan sweet by gassing him up a little bit. But this is kind of cringe. 
<laughs> I stuck it. But you're, you're for fighter. You're saying about the sponsorship shit because which, it affected which made sense. me. And it affected everyone else that had sponsorships. Yeah, and now that I'm older, a little more wiser, I'm like, oh, he wasn't making a decision off of. I love how you're saying now he now he's older, and he has more money. He now understands why Dana is greedy and doesn't want to pay the fighters a fair salary, or that, or wants to pay them the least possible and get the most out of them. He understands now why capitalism is a good thing. Oh, I get it now. Why you should keep all your money and not pay the your, your the people that make you all the money. Yeah, I get it. I get it. How can this hurt Brendan? Where I took it so personal. Yeah. He was like, "How can?" Of course, you should take it personally. Why wouldn't you? If you know, honestly, there are some fighters in the UFC roster who don't get 20k a year. There are some fighters in the UFC roster who do not have, who do not get paid a salary base of like 20k per year. Do you know how that, how insane that is? And they literally put their lives and bodies on the line and don't get 20k a year from the biggest, you know, fight league in the fucking world. I make my business more valuable. Talk to the top guys, even though I was a top 10 guy. I was probably top five in sponsors in, in, in that division. Probably top 15. I don't think he was top 10. But he, he would have no idea. He, he's, he's worried about his business. Yeah, he has Not the Brendan Schott hundreds business. and hundreds of fighters. Yeah, yeah, dude. But remember, at the time when you're fired, you, you're in your own world. So I took it so personal. I got so mad. Launched a show, talked all this shit. And I, I give him kudos for that. Now I'm older. I'm like, oh, I get it. I and now it. that you're running your own business, you absolutely get it. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Chin sucking off. This is really weird to see Chin in this way. He's really actively going out of his way to like, you know, make Brendan look like a good dude. Doesn't work though. Hundred percent get it. Hundred percent get it. I have no issues with him whatsoever. Even on Golden Hour, Eric, because uh, uh, Nick and Theo went to go do a podcast with Dana. I'm asking Nick about it. He's talking about Eric. He's like, oh, I thought you guys hate him. Or when I was on the Fight Companion. Um, and he's like, man, you're being way cooler about Dana these days. I'm like, I'm 40, dude. He's done great stuff. Like, my, this entire network is based off UFC content. Like, I owe a lot to that guy. I have no issues with him now. Zero <laughs> yuck, issues. yuck, 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 yuck. yuck. Rogan's like, I liked it when you were more of a hater. Like, it, <laughs> dude, isn't Dana your best friend, one of your best friends? So am I. Wouldn't you want us to get, a, get along? No, you, you can't get along after what you said and what he said. There is no getting along again. Honestly, let's go back to that fucking screen. Where is it? This one? How can you get along with somebody after they say these things? Like, am, am I the only one that's redacted here? Like, and again, he has every right to say what he said about Dana because Dana was being a, an arsehole to him. But there's no, there's no coming back from this. There is really no coming back from saying the stuff that was said like this. How can you come back from that? <laughs> You, you you took a break from folding Ronda's laundry. <laughs> and you've got a wife and kids. Let's remember too, Dana has a wife and kids. So Dana, Brendan is not only baiting up Ronda, he's also baiting up Dana and his, and his situation. Putting that into turmoil. And we already see what Dana does to his wife. You know what I mean? Very dangerous games to play. But anyway, that's, that's out on that one. What are you guys saying here in the chat? Um, yep, AZ, he's not a draw. Sure thinks he's a contender. Just like him saying he loves Bobby. Dana and Bobby Lee were never the, like the guy exactly. Big up, uh, Ryan Joseph. Appreciate you, Seven Dirty. Says, for someone that hates Dana so much, he relies on him a lot. Exactly, Seven Dirty. Good point. Um, blah, blah, blah. Oh, actually, you, what are you talking about? talking about BGL. Fuck it. Let's talk about BGL. Because BGL is back. BGL is back. And he's letting his nuts hang. He's throwing out some very, very crazy accusations. I'm not going to lie. The BJ accusations I've seen are fucking insane. So let's go through some of them, right? This is courtesy of the one and only Reddit. BGL was quiet for a while and then he fucking jumped up out of nowhere and now he's actually speaking and saying some fucking wild shit. So let's go through some wild shit that BJ was talking about, yeah? So first off, um, I'm going through some of the posts here courtesy on Reddit. Let's see what Hella Mark Harley's been saying, aka the one and only Big Gay Lion. So um, what's the recent one? Da -da -da -da. One, two, one, yeah, well, two days ago. Um, a stick of a perfection. He says, I remember being in a room for this conference call with the PR lady, this scammy agency of 24 year old forces connected with him to get Tiger Fig verified, I think was a goal. So it would stop getting shut down every 12 hours. The lady who wrote these articles was like 73 years old and sounded like she was speaking from a nursing home. Uh, okay, we don't care about that. Um, let's see. 
Okay, cool. Short question the fallout of with Theo and Vaughn. So this is BGL. According to him, he says, I'll explain further. But yes, legit on several occasions, Brendan has expressed private accusations that Theo has siphoned off like 5K per episode for however many episodes. Brendan's accusing Theo of stealing from him. What? After some audit by one of Brendan's retarded business managers, the only vaguely brought it up to him because he's a huge pussy to anyone socially above him. So Brendan thinks Theo is stealing, but because Theo's bigger than him, he's not going to say nothing. What? I overheard an hour-long conversation on a speaker. The retrospect was about the podcast thievery. Theo's like a brother. You're fucking it up. The money not coming in, and you're bad at business and managing money, of course. And Brendan didn't take that too well and wrote Theo off as being a mentally ill. Wow. Difficult to work with and ultimately just in the wrong. How that work out for Fat Patrick? And by the way, I don't think Fia stole the dime. I think Brennan is just fucking idiot who can't do basic maths. But the false accusations was twenty five to five hundred k stolen. Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! So that's an odd accusation to pull out there, isn't it? Very, very strange. So they're accusing Fia of robbing Brendan of money. Which is what led to the breakup. I'm going to press X to doubt for that one. I'm going to press X to doubt. My running theory is it was a combination of things. Now that we know that Brendan introduced Theo to Podcast One, I have a feeling that most likely Theo was always a little bit, you know, wary of working with Brendan long term because of all the drama around him, right? The beefs of other comedians, the fact that he wasn't looked at the greatest and also the work schedule. Because I remember beforehand, before they did the whole refurb of King and Sting, before he went to that dark blue, black colorway and it was that yellow thing, right? With the bee and the fucking uh, scorpion thing. Fia was talking about being overworked. So I guess he'd always wanted a, a different type of work-life balance. He never liked to do like so many shows of King of the Sting. they do his own show, blah, blah, blah. So most likely he didn't like the work schedule or the workload. Um, he was a bit, you know, uncomfortable with Brendan and the controversy around him and being associated with him and how badly it would look at him. Obviously, the, the Podcast One deal probably left a sour taste in the mouth because Brendan introduced him to Podcast One. Then they end up fucking... Um, then they end up uh, holding his money and shit. Um... And then I guess that's it. But I think all those things played into it. I don't think it was only one thing. But I very much doubt that Theo stole money off him. I very much doubt that. I guess because if that was the case, he would have said something. Do you know what I mean? See, like he would have said something and he would have been a bit more, you know, vocal about it. But, or maybe insinuated uh, that something like that happened. If anything, most likely, this is probably proof that Brendan probably gets so much money via podcasting and he has so many horrible people around him who are probably stealing off of him that they accuse other people of stealing. That's probably what happened. I bet you. I bet you any money that most likely somebody else is stealing and they pointing at fear of to want to be stealing to take attention away from him. I bet you. I bet you that's the case. I can, I, I can believe there's a situation where Brendan doesn't know how much exact money comes through his account. Do you know what I mean? Or how much money he's meant to get. How much money he should be receiving and people are siphoning it off and then he's thinking it's going other places. So that might be part of the reason why. I'm not really too sure, but I think so. I think so. Uh, what are you guys saying in the chat? Does the cash go into the bank account exactly? Um, I remember we tried to get the sub to subscribe to his wife's OnlyFans. Really? Oh, shit. Uh, press X for doubt for Theo. Like, exactly, 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 exactly. exactly. Um, but do I think that Theo didn't, wasn't honest with Brendan while he left? Yes. I have a feeling that's true. I have a feeling that Theo is probably not very good at, I won't say confrontation, but like at being direct with people. So he probably didn't know, let Brendan actually know why he actually left. He just kind of made it seem like something else. I, I'm always surprised if Theo lied and told Brendan, I'm going through some mental health thing. That's why I don't want to do the show or something. He wasn't honest. Like he just didn't want to be around him because it was bad for business. Because that's also another theory. Another theory is that somebody high up at CAA, noticed Theo's talent and said hey if you really want to go for the stars if you really want to achieve some big things you've got to drop Brendan and it's no coincidence as soon as he dropped Brendan Theo's gone sky high so I think most likely somebody in the industry somebody within the scene industry plugged in business guy was like hey you've got to drop that guy he's not good for business and um, yeah he hasn't looked back ever since big up high def you're just jealous Lil Brows and Chin are in the green room with groupies sipping whiskey. Exactly, and exactly, Hi Def, exactly, exactly. That's exactly why I'm jealous. 
sipping that good old whiskey, whiskey neat in the green room. You know what I mean? Isn't it funny too? Have you guys not? I just think think for us. Big up high def. There was no tiger fic in that video. That little browsing chin video. There was no tiger fic. Interesting, isn't it? You'd think that Brennan would want to push tiger fic on that video, but there was no tiger fic whiskey. No big long shot of the whiskey there. Like nothing. Hmm. Huh. I wonder why. Maybe because that shit isn't good. <laughs> Maybe because this fucking actually battery, you know, battery fluid and shit. You never know. What what do I know? What the fuck do I know? Um, let's continue here with uh, some BGL stuff. It's got an email live that feels podcasted literally hundred times numbers of TFK does. I've never met a person who pretends to her heart to seem happy for people while being extremely jealous and hateful, dismissive in private. But I think that's how they all are, to be fair. This is a really good point by BGL, but I think they all like that. I think that whole thing they all do, where they all kind of repeat what Rogan says about, oh yeah, the comedy community is super helpful. We all help each other out. I think they all just say that to lip service, to like act like Joe Rogan. But I think they all privately hate each other. That's my running theory. I think most stand-up comedians are all jealous of each other, with the exception of Joe Rogan probably, because he's made all the money. But I think most of them, they all pretend like they're all good friends, which is good anyway for the sake of it, because I think on paper, sorry, on the screen, they all kind of look, pretend like they're all friends and it helps their career because they all come on each other's pods. They all record content with each other. So that's a good thing. They all help each other out. But I think privately, behind closed doors, in green rooms and shit, they definitely talk shit about each other. I don't think that's a, something that's only specific to Brendan. I think they all do it. And one thing about Brendan, he's very much copies what everyone else does in the industry. So, so he does what everyone else does. So I think they all do it personally. I don't think it's just Brendan. Another one here, uh, reposting my reply from another friend. I'll explain further. But yes, legit. So, okay, cool. Uh, Papa has in fact spent 30K plus on PR firms for incredible results like this. He spent, oh my God, bro. What is that? Let me actually see what that is. What's that? A sticker for perfection. Maybe one second. He spent 30Ks on PR firms to do what? To revamp his image or something. I guess that's what he means. Oh, okay, cool. It's this article. I guess, okay, cool. It's, it's, it's this article that was uh, posted on the Friday Kids sub. I didn't think that was real. Is that the Dallas Morning News? What the fuck is this? Holy shit. What is this? Bear me one second as it loads up on here. So this is a part of the PR firm article that he gets written about it says national touring entertainer launches alternative beverage for santa this holiday via the dallas morning news he had this article published to make himself look like a what a fucking um a tycoon i guess this is what those guys online do isn't it all those um motivational speakers guys this is what they probably do isn't it and this is how you probably get verified if you want to get paid for it you pay a pr company to reach out to news outlets or whatever to write favorable articles about you then you reach out to places like instagram and say hey this news article this news company wrote about me verify me you get verified and then you use the clout from the verification and the endorsement from that news article to then spread your scam pretty wild isn't it but i think that's what they do it's a pretty crazy game. So that's why some people, when they get scammed, is you have to have some sympathy for them because on paper, how would you not think some, how would you, how would you guess somebody is a scam artist if they have a verified, you know, Instagram page, they have articles written about them and their business in legit news publications. It's hard to see what's paid for and what's not paid for. This is obviously a bit pe bait to, you know, the, even the title, right? But it's hard to kind of tell if you're not really plugged in like that. So God almighty, bro. Fucking hell. Anyway, continuing on with the BGL post. Let's go back to that. Da, da, da. Posted more from the full story. Da, da, da. Another one says, yeah, he honestly gets so, what's that? He honestly gets so terrified at people who support him the most. An Uber driver or a fan at a show or a guy on the street saying what's up, he always acts like it's the biggest inconvenience all the time and he just couldn't wait to exit the interaction. His favourite phrase is to refer to two people having a normal convo as you guys almost done a podcast. Jesus Christ. Ah, yeah, that's true though because you see it a lot with those, with those clips of him behind the scenes where a, a fan will come up to like a genuine fan like loving him, giving him loads of praise and he always acts like, I don't know, he's just nervous. Maybe it's because 
he thinks everybody's a troll in real life. Who knows? But he doesn't really seem like he's really appreciative of people coming up to him and saying something to him. Or maybe it's an ego thing. Maybe he thinks he's the biggest star of what he is and he really feels like he's inconvenienced because they're coming up to him. Who knows? Um, let's go to some more BGL post here. Um... I am now in contact with a lady from a labor board handling my case. So things are moving along a black slowly. Okay, cool. So that's to do with his pay. Hopefully he does get his pay done for him um, soon. He's, he's, uh, his wages have been withheld, which is fucking crazy, isn't it? Only Brendan would do that. Brendan is such an idiot because most likely BGL is going to win that case, right? Because Brendan is allegedly withholding um, wages from BGL and he's filed a... What's I think what well, I forgot what that term is in the fucking employment courts, right? So most likely they will side in BGL's favor, and most likely because of the inconvenience and the time it's taking, he's gonna be able, he's gonna have to pay BGL more than what he's actually owed. So to spite BGL because of BGL put his news out there, he's you know he's gonna spite he he spited BGL because of him exposing him, but he's gonna end up paying him more money. It's so dumb. Just pay him the money and get him out of your life. You don't need to like with whatever. He's such a, he's 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 such a stickler for shooting himself in the foot. He's so dumb. Exactly. Attorney fee. All that. Just, anyway, whatever. Um, another post here. But speaking of personal experience and from three or four months of specific, what? Okay, cool. Speaking from personal experience and for at least three to four others who've given me specific examples, Brendan is, has a strong rec track record of saying he will pay a specific amount, especially in verbal agreement, then abruptly either not paying it or cut the pay in half or more for some silly made up reason that he'll have his manager tell you. Not going to name names out of curiosity, but besides myself, I know of guys he's fucked out of 30k for not following through on financial commitments. And I'm not talking rich dudes. I'm talking about struggling to make ends meet in LA. This is me near the top of the unforgivable narcissistic traits. Jesus Christ. Again, great guy, never met him. Another one. Factual part. Since I've known Brendan, he's maintained a regular ongoing sexual... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the factual part is since i've known brendan he has maintained a regular ongoing sexual relationship with whitney cummings that i don't know the deets but i do know from multiple side pieces he has a huge breeding fetish and refuses to wear condoms she won't sh so we won't know without paternity test uh, or really just an iq test but it's most certainly not outside the realm of possibility so people are saying that Brendan is BG, is, is Whitney Cummings' baby dad. The father of Whitney Cummings' unborn child is Brendan. <sighs> if that's true, he's fucked. If that's true, he's fucked. He's married in LA, right, California. They've got some crazy rules about, um, what you call it, settlements and shit when you're in divorce. If that's true, the Mexican is going to get fucking paid. If that's true. She's going to get fucking paid. And Brendan's going to have what? Child support? Oh my God, bro. He's already got three kids of his own. Plus Whitney's. He's going to have four kids under the age of 18. Yes, to support. Holy shit. <laughs> four kids under 18. Four kids under 10. He has support. In LA. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. And for sure, Whitney Cummings' kid's going to go to Sierra Canyon as well, right? Whitney Cummings' kids ain't going to some public school. Whitney Cummings' kids is definitely going to fucking Sierra Canyon, right? And, you know, and see the cyanide hospital and shit. Fucking hell. Um, do I think it's true? I'm going to press X for doubt. Do I think Brendan and Whitney have fucked, you know, since the time they used to date? Probably, right? It's LA. People do some fucked up shit. It is what it is. But do I think to the point where that kid might be his? Nah, I think that's a bit of a stretch. If it was, we would have probably heard more about it already. I think so. I think so. Have they fucked before? Since they've broken up, probably. I, I would probably think they have. There's more likelihood of them fucking than with Brenda being the dad of her unborn kid. That's fucking wild if true. That's wild if true. 
Because isn't she in a relationship as well? Whitney? Is it, is it, is it Whitney dating somebody? Like a doctor or something? Or am I mistaken? I, feel, I remember last time I checked in, or oh, I saw content, she was talking about being with some doctor person or something. I'm not sure if that's true. But if that is true, and that guy thinks he's a dad, he might as well, he, she should probably get a paternity test. Just to be doubly sure. But yeah, fuck it now, bro. Fuck it now. <laughs> Mufasa level dies, level lies. Big up <laughs> Rodeo Brito. That's hilarious. My colleague's receipts. Exactly right, Joseph. Whitney Peck Bubba. Don't question the big near lying. You get it in that moment, though. Yeah. Whitney's the last woman you'd want to be your baby daddy for. Yeah, Whitney's kid will have the best of the best. Nanny's education. Exactly. Brent's going to have to pay a big dollar to keep her out. Fuck you, know. AZ the papa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I am the father. I am the father of that kid. Oh, oh Whitney's single, Josie said. Okay, Whitney's single. Okay, fair enough. Whitney's single, but she's pregnant. Huh. <laughs> Whitney is Mary. Whitney is Mary, <laughs> mother of Jesus. Um, I'm gonna finish, what, what say specific needs. Talk shit behind people's backs. Many fans. Then what he thinks. Fuck Daniel Day Lewis. He scared shitless of beefing with her. See him. See him after he got off the phone with Kalila. She ripped him a new one, like he was seeing a 20 year old kid coming from Vietnam War. Changed for life. One percent correct. Human interactions. Don't do the do. Uh oh, okay. Things are going well. Doing couples therapy. Hold on, God blow my lungs. One second. Isn't isn't doing couples therapy the comp the the complete opposite of doing well relationship wise? Isn't that a sign that your relationship isn't going well? Or am I looking at it too, you know, simplistically? If you're in couples therapy, isn't that more so a sign that you're not going well? Or is that just something, what's that thing called? Or is that just something you do positively to help your relationship? I don't know. You tell me in the chat if you go through couples therapy. I always thought couples therapy was a way for you to like reconcile and to kind of deal with your issues with a third party so it, so it wouldn't get too crazy and you could talk through your problems, understand each other, blah, blah, blah. But usually it's because you've gotten to a place where you can't communicate well. So you have to have a third party kind of act as the intermediary, no? No? Or am I mistaken there? I don't know. Wishing on the luck though. Wishing, wishing BJ and Luana the luck. More luck than ever. I want them to breed, have loads of BG and Luana babies around so we can have more entertainment to kind of talk about, to be honest. I want them to be together for fucking ever. Please be together forever. Um, we all saw him lifting a car. What do you think? <laughs> exactly. Okay, good point. <laughs> exactly. Good point, good point, good point, good point. Um, have a dead car, dead, dead lifted a car in weeks, he says. Uh, sounds about right. Not far as critical. Thinking the high school level. The, okay, here. The problem the problem with guys like Brendan is he has this pipe dream of being a big shot businessman CEO like his dad. But he knows nothing about managing employees, running an efficient business, time management, delegation, micromanaging. He can't do any of the skills he's ch in charge of people doing like audio engineering, video recording, editing Photoshop uh, for fun thumbnails. He even sucks at booking guests compared to the guy he they hired last year, uh, Dai T Fat K. He's in charge, but does nothing competently or often just can't do it at all. So when he starts pretending like he knows the first thing about financially auditing and production budgets, then vocalizes that privately to accuse his best friend is secretly stealing several hundreds of thousands of dollars from him over the course of four years. It's just the biggest yikes of all time. Okay, that's fair. That's fair accusation. You know what's really interesting too? It's that idea... A lot of these guys do it, though, to be fair. A lot of these podcast comedian guys are like, I'm a hard worker, I graft, I grind. Well, really, they have entire production companies or production people doing most of the heavy lifting, like recording the shows, clipping them up, thumbnails, titles, you know, lighting, cameras, all that shit is done by somebody else. But yet they're acting as if they're like doing it on their own. Where really, what they do is turn up and sit in front of a microphone, basically, right? And that... And again, that's like half of the work because if you don't think about making content, half of the thing about making content is actually the editing and the final touches when you upload it and shit. So the fact that they talk so big about what they do when they don't really do much is hilarious. But yeah, 
and it's also must be hard for Brendan too because he's, if you know anything about his dad's story, I remember seeing a post about his dad on LinkedIn or a LinkedIn post of Brendan's dad showing his, 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 his history and shit. And that guy's really accomplished. You know, he served in the military, uh, had, you know, worked in several companies, owned several businesses, big promotions. Like he's actually, you know, a legit guy on paper. Like he's actually super smart, looks very, very ambitious, very successful in business, career-wise, whatever it may be. So if you're Brendan and you've got that guy as a dad, there's probably a uh, internal pressure, or maybe you just think because he's your dad, you you're also the same as well. When really you're not. You know what I mean, you're not the same at all in the slightest, especially when it comes to IQ. Um, can't believe I didn't realize he was dumb and boy when I worked with him. Uh, dude, I don't take IDs anymore. Any temporary boost of productivity you feel makes me feel like sh okay. Uh, I don't have any intel about the prediction. Is less views, quality entertainment, less consistency okay we don't care about that and that's about it really you know? i don't think there's anything more that was broken but the main news is that bgo is a legend bg bgo is out here a legend that brendan is allegedly sleeping with fucking whitney behind everybody's back which is fucking crazy to be fair if true but i don't believe that rumor to be fair i'm not gonna lie i don't believe it if anything i believe they might have been fucking before but i don't believe to a point where brendan is secretly fathering her fucking child that is that's just too that's too telenovela for me. That's too much. What do you guys think? What do you guys... Actually, let me, let me make it as a poll. Um, let me make this as a fucking poll. Fuck it. We've done poll in a long time. Let's do a, let's do a fucking poll. Um, do you think... Do you think Papa is Whitney's baby daddy? What do you guys think? Let me know in the poll. Let me know in the poll what you think. Because I think no. I think I think this is a real stretch. Have they fucked? Yes. Is he the dad? Probably not. What do you guys think? Let me know in the poll down below what you guys think. <laughs> yeah, that would be epic if he cheated on his wife for Whitney. It's not even for Whitney. It's just, it's just the ludicrousness of it. Like It doesn't matter what she looks like, who she is. It's just the insane ludicrous nature of like having another kid with another woman who happens to be in the same industry you're in like it's just like what like former colleagues friends ex i don't know it's just so unnecessarily messy but it's also it's also a classic you know shoot yourself in the foot thing from brendan so i could believe it to be true but i don't i don't think so what are you guys saying here early votes in so far oh it's tight okay cool it's tight most people are like maybe on the no thing but it's tight it's not it's not unanimous so far it's not unanimous. Good to see. Good to see we've got some smart people watching the fucking stream right now, right? You're not sucking into this fucking, um, you know, hyperbole from fucking BGL. Again, I don't think he's lying. BGL for sure was definitely closer to Brendan than any of us will ever be. He was definitely in there. He saw everything from the inside. But do I think he's fathering Whitney's humble child? No. But if it, if it is true, I'm here for it. Because that's going to be fucking amazing. That content, that child support content is going to be so good, right? And him raging and ranting about it when she gets on Instagram live and exposes him. That's going to be so good. That drama around it is going to be blockbuster. That's the, that's going to make the whole Bobby Kalala thing look like children's play. So I'm here for it if it's true. If it's here true, I'm fucking here for it. I swear to God. I'm so here for it, but I don't think it is true. Anyway, let's switch over and let's watch the interview that I didn't check. That one from, uh, what's that thing called? Adversity Kings. Where's the guy? That Adversity Kings interview. Let's see if I can find it. We're going to go through that and then see what this guy is saying because I have a feeling that this guy might be an undercover troll or something because I don't know why Papa went and sat down with him because God almighty. God almighty. Let's get it up on here, baby. Give me a second as I find it on one of my fucking tabs. Where are you? Where the fuck is it? Adversity Kings, where did I put you? Nope, not that one, not that one. Is it this one? Maybe it's this one. No, it's not that one. Is it this one? No, it's not. Is it this one? No, it isn't. A great, fantastic. It's not that. It's not that. It's not that. Or oh, is it this one? Yeah, there we go. I found it. Cool. So, Big Up Adversity Kings. I'm not really too familiar with this guy's platform or who he is, but from the clips I've seen so far on the Friday the Kids subreddit, it looks fucking funny and interesting. And I just love the setting of the interview. Look at the fucking backdrop. They're in a hotel lobby, so I'm assuming it's whatever city that Brendan went to go perform comedy at um, recently. And obviously, Big J is Brendan's road manager and security guard. Um, so they went out, 
you know, wherever city that I was in, and the guy decided to do an interview with Brendan in the fucking hotel lobby he's sitting in, which is fucking crazy, to be fair. Like, it's, you know, worst place ever to do a fucking interview because there's many, many people passing through the hotel lobby, you know, of a busy hotel in the metropolitan city, but whatever. Um, the interview is still entertaining to, for, for the sake of it. Let's just check it out and let's see what we said. This is uh, Beyond the Mic with Brendan Shaw and Jay Short. I love how he spelled his name wrong as well here. Jay Shab. What do you spell that for? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a troll. I'm not too sure, but let's let's, let's put it anyway. Yeah, I'm in the two fields that deal with you know a lot of toxic. Like it's extremes. Like you have people, you fans who love you, and people that hate you. But when you're in the middle, is is when you're a little bit in trouble. Yeah. As far as like making a business as, out of what you do, whether it's podcasting, stand up, if people do have no opinion if they're just lukewarm on you yeah you're sure as hell not get them to come out and spend money on a babysitter and tickets at a show so, um there's too much podcasting out there so especially now when i started it wasn't like this now if you're just in the middle yeah you're like yeah he's cool yeah it's, it's gonna be tough to make it sorry about that let me, let me play that again one more minute. living man yeah so for me it's it's the void Oh, shut up for me. It's a Floyd Mayweather. But what, big up high def. Appreciate it, brother. What did you say here? Let's one more time. Did I repair the message? No, it's not. Um, if, if Brendan had a kid with Whitney, he'd be the beast of a dad. Of course he would be. Of course he would be. Of course. You want to replay? Okay, you want to replay? replay? No, it's not replaying. Cool. Let's continue. Mayweather effect where you are either paying to watch Floyd fight whether you love them or you want to see him get knocked out. Yes. But you, you, act, you cared. Yeah. You cared. So like when I see, and this is Joe Coy's thing, it's, he's like, man, whenever you see someone, like they tag you on something or, and it's hate, that's just promo for you, man. Yeah. It's a, it's a form of promo. No matter what, if they're making this. Nah, I, dis I disagree on that one completely. I completely disagree. This idea that if you, because because again, maybe I'm, I'm a bit too in the weeds because I watch a lot of detractor Brendan content and obviously I make a lot myself. But I generally do think that this guy might be one of the only people in media out there who legitimately has more haters than fans. Honestly. Like, act by numbers. Because, you know, he does comedy club gigs and comedy bars and he can't fucking sell out a comedy bar with like 50 tables. Do you know what I mean? That's proof that... His fans aren't really coming out from him like the way they used to. He cancelled a European tour because he couldn't sell a you know a certain number of tickets. Even though he lies and says because of his kids, he obviously cancelled it because he couldn't sell tickets. So clearly, the demand for him isn't where it was. And, and I think most people don't like him. So I don't think that's healthy. You have to maybe be a bit more um, introspective and think about why people don't like you and try and change your ways so that you can have people, you know, get back on board with you. Because I honestly don't think that he has as many fans as he thinks he has. And the pro and the, the hate that he is getting isn't like, um, it's not good hate. It's like people like questioning why he's successful. People saying he's not smart. He's not funny. This is like, you know, pretty personal. It's not like even like hate for his like, oh, that stand-up special wasn't. So people are just like, hey, how the fuck did this, how did he even get this far type of thing? which is probably the type of stuff that you don't want to hear from people, really. Horrible YouTube video or this Instagram or whatever. It's a form of promo because most people aren't cheap. Another episode of Reversity Kings. We've got special guest today, Brendan Schaub. And then my man right here. Jay. Jay? It's yeah. my little brother, Jay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's he's my, go. He's my, yeah, he's my manager on the road. Let's go, bro. So yeah. Jay, Jay Schaub then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Jonathan. You're, you're from Colorado? You yeah. guys are both from Colorado. So my top two guys in my company are from Grand Junction, Colorado. Oh. Yeah, yeah I don't know how yeah. close that is. It's, it's, a, it's a hike. Yeah? Yeah, go with it. Four hours? At least. Five. It's, all, it's all, all the way up. Yeah. Like, I was just... Western border. Right before I came down, I was just talking to the dude's dad. His name's Justin. And he came came out like two years ago. I'm not going to say nothing about Jay Shorb. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to say a word. I'm not going to say nothing. Big up Jay Shorb. Uh, to work with us out here in Chicago. But they get elk. You know what I mean? They were going to ship us some elk. So yeah. do you guys do any elk hunting growing up? No, nah, that's at Grand Junction. Yeah, that's what he said. Like they're real country. In Aurora, no man. They're real country. It's more city out there. Very first thing I had in my notes was <clears throat> the uh, Bobby Lee controversy. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this guy's fucking amazing. 
he warmed them up by saying that oh yeah there's like a couple of guys in my fucking uh company that work that from colorado you know like trying to get them to like you know connect and then the second question okay so bobby lee <laughs> kalila <laughs> okay so you try to fuck kalila <laughs> This guy's a fucking psycho. The second question. Holy shit. Warm them up first, bro. You know what I mean? A little bit of kissing, a little bit of foreplay, a little bit of hugging, you know? Maybe put on some R&B, scented candles. He went straight in. Fucking hell. <laughs> so, you tried to fuck Kalila. <laughs> oh, listen, let's go back again one more. Bro. This is fucking brilliant. Look. One minute fifty two. One minute fifty two. <laughs> okay, Bobby Lee. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh shit! Went backwards. No, what, what's happened there? Cool. Let's go back. Come on. Oh, that was so good. One sec. One sec. One sec. One sec. Let look. Let look. Let look. Let look. Let look. Let look. Oh my god, that was fucking brilliant. One minute fifty two. So, Bobby Lee. <laughs> the Bobby Lee controls. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh mate honestly um let's let's continue let's let it load One to go uh to work with us out here in chicago but they get elk you know what i mean they were gonna ship us some elk so yeah. do you guys do any elk hunting growing up no nah, that's that grand junction, grand yeah, junction. Was, that's what he said like they're real country yeah. Aurora, no, man. they're real no, it's, country it's, it's more city out there <laughs> Very first thing I had in my notes was the uh, Bobby Lee controversy. Uh, man, that's how you started. Dude, I was yeah, like, this is the very it. first thing. Um, I was like, I mean, there's not much there, brother. You know, it's like, um, my, I, I love Bobby. You yeah. know, it's, um, yeah, good, good comic. It, it, you know, stuff happens. You yeah. Know, shit happens. But. Yeah. That- mm, shit happens. What? Like trying to fuck your friend's girl? That's not shit happens, mate. That sounds like a premeditated shit happening. And again, maybe it's me being a little bit G-A-Y, but isn't that a form of fucking narcissism as well, in a weird way? That kind of like gaslighty, I'm over it type of thing. I have no problems with that guy. He's a great guy. It's like, no, you have problems with him. You had you have beef with them. If anything, your episode probably led to them breaking up. They're obviously every, always going to break up anyway, but... He probably played a role in it. That whole, you know, thing that happened with them, where where it was a, where the accusation was that Brendan tried to holler at Kalila and tried to fuck her and shit behind Bobby's back and got exposed, and then that led to the Annie stuff and whatever it may be, and Brendan Brian spazzing out Bobby Lee. Like that's not something you just get over, you know? I don't. I wouldn't think so. And Bobby Lee's even been said it on record, right? He's been on record saying that he's not friends with him anymore. Yeah, big up, Steve. I appreciate you. Jay looks like he still eats crayons. <coughs> <coughs> no comment <laughs> no comment no comment big up still good but no comment you're not getting me on that one no comment no comment big up jay big up jay Shaw, right holding it down for his brother but no comment no comment on whether or not this guy eats crayons or not no fucking comment zero zero fucking comment you're not getting that for me zero this is a safe space so if you if you like to eat crayons you're amongst friends okay cool it is what it is we moved on yeah you know what i'm saying but nothing but love for bobby shit happens man. yeah you know absolutely <laughs> shit happens <laughs> shit happens <laughs> it's fair to say that one that one drama might have done more harm to brendan's career in no or like his friendships and connections with people in comedy as opposed to the specials and shit most likely because people did pick sides and unfortunately for him, no one picked his side. Look, judging by the guests they have on and shit, judging by where he performs and shit, it seems like everybody picked Bobby's side in the war. I want to go into, uh, I'm going to bounce around all over the place, but uh, comedy career, I always, I always get inspired. Oh, look, he made a little look. He did look, look to Jay, didn't he? He did, gave Jay a little look, didn't he? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to bounce around all over the place, but uh, comedy career, I always, I always get inspired <laughs> because getting into insurance, you know, it's not an overnight thing. And I always tell people there's way harder things out there than insurance. No way did he start his interview asking about Bobby Lee and then pivot to like how hard it is to get going in careers and shit. Like what? This guy's questions are fucking wild. 
Because <laughs> I look at the, I look at comedy and I'm like, bro, that's got to be one of the hardest things in the world. I mean, when, definitely hard gigs in comedy though, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, when did you get started and what's that? What's the career been like for you? Uh, I pray this is like nine years. Yeah, about not where we're getting to that. Yeah, about shit. Nine so like 2014. Ago. Yeah, 2014. I started doing live firing the kids on stage, <clears throat> and then my first like straight up stand up set was at the comedy store in 2015, maybe 2014. So, yeah, a while now. Yeah. That already is proof why everyone hates him, isn't it? Imagine getting started at getting started doing stand up comedy, and the first proper set you do is in the comedy store. You have no business being in there, really, innit? unless it's an open mic. You have no business performing at the comedy store, but because he's Rogan's friend at the time, Rogan got him all the gigs, which, again, I've always said before that as much as, you know, I think Brendan's not funny and he probably doesn't, you know, he's probably got an, an unloved, an under-earned level of um, success. You know, I won't say undeserved, but I say unearned. If I'm Brendan, I'll still be a little bit pissed off at Joe Rogan. Rogan was okay to have Brendan perform with him at the comedy store, but then as soon as he opened up his own club, he was like, nah. <laughs> That's kind of fucked up. You're okay to bring me on the road. No, not bring me on. You're okay to have me play at your shows at the comedy store. But the moment you open up your own club, suddenly he had standards. Suddenly he's like, nah, you don't meet the threshold of being funny that I need. I can't have you here. Suddenly he has standards. Sometimes suddenly he has principles. Suddenly there's morals involved there. I'd be really, I'd be really pissed off if I was Brendan to Joe. I'm not going to lie. Even though Joe handed him everything on a silver plate, it really annoyed me. Because why Why was I okay to play at the comedy store one year in with you, but I can't do a weekender at your club eight years in? Just, it's just a grind like anything else. Yeah. A thousand hours, like nonstop. Yeah. Um, just, you know. I, like in anything worth getting good at it takes time, man. Absolutely. You know? So it's like I try to relate everything to jujitsu. What? Josie, big up. I heard from a comic on Kerry Fian's podcast that Mark Norman just got passed at the comedy store this year. Mark Norman just got passed this year. If that's true, Brendan has no business being there. Exactly. Oh my god. <laughs> Mark Norman just got passed this year but Brendan was performing at the comedy store one year into his stand-up career because of Rogan being his friend because I'm like yeah. when I get guys new insurance even though they don't know jujitsu language, language I'm like <clears throat> I don't know your first couple of years you just get tapped out by everybody and then like yeah similar to similar to jiu-jitsu where you're gonna suck at first yeah. hold on hold on hold on is this guy trolling did he ask did he start the question off by saying that stand-up is one of the hardest jobs in the world or something is he trolling? Do you think? Do you think this is all? Do you think this is all one of like that some like Sasha Baron Cohen shit? He does jujitsu, but allegedly he has some sort of insurance firm. He starts off the fucking podcast by asking about Bobby Lee and Kalila, and then he starts saying that comedy is the hardest job in the world. Do you think he's taking a piss? <laughs> is this one big troll? <laughs> this guy's a psycho. What the fuck? Yeah. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna be a white belt and you get beat up, and it's gonna be tough for a while, and then like just two minimum ten years to get your to get your black belt. Yeah, and and even then, I think about like people walking in front of the camera. Fucking brilliant. Like uh, I hear a lot of guys. You know, I think John Dunhair was on. You know, Lex Friedman episode. I don't know if you saw the little clip they put together, and he was like, "What does it take to get a black belt?" And uh, Dan Hare's like, not much. You know what I mean? I, I think of that reference because I've <laughs> gone to different gyms. Lady walk by again, and there's black. Um, Dexter Watson I wonder if Brendan did sleep with Bobby's girlfriend Kalila which would lead to a fire nail and a coffin thing now nah, it would be perfectly fine my theory is this I don't think they did fuck but this is my theory my theory is because from what I've read online and from what I've surmised from other comedy videos and stuff especially the comedy enforcement guy who seems to really fucking hate Kalila and a few other people don't like Kalila too now, but in that whole like Tiger Belly Bobby Lee scene it seems like Kalila has always been a little bit of a freaky lady herself, right? She's always been a bit sex positive in that regard, right? She's into, um, what should I think called? She's into uh, gang bangs and threesomes and whatever. Polyamory. She's always been to an alternative sex life thing. That's what always been her thing, I guess. My theory is this. I think Brendan found out about that some way. Like how dudes do. He heard through the grapevine that Kalila's a bit of a freak. And that got him horny. 
and in that horniness he probably reached out thinking oh she fucks anybody or maybe he heard she fucked another comedian because that's also that's also a possibility maybe she fucked another comedian behind bobby's back and brendan thought oh if she's fucking everyone i want in too so he reached out but then he didn't realize i think he underestimated how much people like him maybe Kyla never liked brendan maybe she always thought it was a bit of a douchebag she was like i'm definitely not giving you any pussy so even though she might be technically a bit of a slag according to some people she still turned him down which probably did a bit the damage to his ego and then you know she went back to bobby and said what she said but that's my theory i think brendan probably heard about what she gets up to got excited and reached out but he didn't realize that she never liked him as a human let alone trying to fuck that's what probably happened black belts that like i feel pretty confident with and then i'll go to like the gym i train at now and there's blue belts that make those black belts yeah like, there's, there's levels levels I mean, to it at all yeah like a, a, a black belt from <laughs> brendan looking at it thinking um don't explain jujitsu to me brendan had got that condescending tone to him is he gonna really explain jujitsu to me like oh, i'm a black belt you know john Danaher or yeah, a Enzo Gracie, it means something, you know, so, I, don't think. I mean, I, yeah, so it's like, yeah, I'm sure there's other insurance guys, yeah. but then there's, like, insurance guys, you yeah. know, like, there's, like, there's black belts, but yeah. there's, there's fucking like black belts, dude. Patch by David, you had, that's a big inspiration for me, because it's, yeah, like, it's the same, it's the same, I look, I look at all his stuff, I'm like, bro, how can I do that faster, mm -hmm. because it's like, I guess, similar, similar paths, got into life insurance, then started his own deal, Yep. and, uh, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I got you gotta love America, innit? There are there are guys out there who look up to Patrick Bet David. They wanna be what? Insurance guys that wear suits and shit. Huh? Okay. Isn't Patrick Bet David just like an MML guy as well? Multi level marketing. Dressed up as like <sighs> You gotta find better heroes, man. You gotta find better heroes. Yeah, huge, huge inspiration, but that would be like top tier black belt in the industry Correct. because i don't feel like anybody else is, does also i've never understood how you can just get i've never understood how you could be famous or you could be successful just because you talk to successful people like as if like because you sit down and do it's like the lex friedman thing because you sit down with people that are really smart and really accomplished somehow that makes you smart and accomplished not really though isn't it? what have you actually done what have you created what have you made nothing like you just what? You're friends with people that are smart. And? <laughs> it's like, it's so weird, isn't it? That whole economy of people. It's like, anyway, whatever. I, I don't want to get into that rant. Whatever. Who cares? Do, do you? Do you? I did life insurance to the extent that, that he did it and kind of created like Yeah, that it's space. similar. Like, you know, it also with jujitsu, with black belt, I think it's like less than 1% of people that start jujitsu get their black belt. Yeah. So it's like, it's consistency and time. And yeah. It takes a long time, man. If you're doing it right, like you might be able to buy one off the internet. Yeah, you know, I always you know. joke with my coach. Man. Didn't you buy one? Brendan got one, didn't it? By force. His kid was asking him if he had a black belt. Then he just pulled up to his old trainer and got a black belt, give it to him. Even though he, he hasn't rolled in ages. So Brendan's actually one of the people he's speaking about. I'm just going to buy one off you, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how much does this cost? Yeah. Uh, Which you'll see some celebrities do, you know? Be yeah. Like, Mark Zuckerberg's a brown belt. You're like, but he's been <laughs> on for two years. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, next thing I got in here. How do you deal with the hate? You know what I mean? I was like, I personally, I've, I've been... <laughs> These questions. <laughs> These questions are fucking wild. Five minutes in. <laughs> Over the last two years, just getting more and more hate, especially being in sales, everything. People look at sales like, that's a scam. That means you're really? doing well, bud, you know? And I wanted to get perspective from you and just the audience. People getting into comedy, yeah. fighting, whatever. Like, I'm, how do I'm, you deal with that? Yeah, I'm in the two fields that deal with, you know, a lot of toxic, like, it's extremes. Like, you have people. I love that disassociation that he does. He's very good at that, to be fair. One thing that Brendan's very good at is disassociating himself and making it about other people. So, in this regard, he's saying, the reason why he gets a lot of hate partly is to do that he's involved in very two industries that have the most toxic fan bases in terms of stand-up comedy and MMA, which is odd because it means that he's not at fault at all. It's just the, the, the industry he's in. It just, you know, it's toxic. It's like, mm, that's not really how it works, isn't it? Really? Well, you fans who love you and people that hate you, 
but when you're in the middle is, is when you're a little bit in trouble yeah. as far as like making a business as, out of what you do whether it's podcasting stand up if people have no opinion if they're just lukewarm on you yeah. you sure as hell not get them to come out and spend money on a babysitter and tickets at a show we also I hope that doesn't become a thing I think I would like it I would like that in 2024 there's like a major push for people instead of being cunts in order to get a fan base or to garner retention, why don't just be nice? Why don't just be a good, decent person? Treat your fans with respect, put on a good, interesting shows and hope because you're a fun, interesting person that they come out and see you. That's also fun, isn't it? This idea that you have to be hated and people have to be either one way on you or the other or end on you, it's just so odd and so redacted and so tired. Like, why not just be a good person, put on good shows, um, fun times, whatever it may be, and then let people come out because of that, for the strength of your character, the quality of your shows, and then go from there, as opposed to, oh, you, they have to either love you or hate you. It's like, bro, it's just life, man. It's just work, dude. You're not fighting in the fucking Coliseum. Um, there's too much podcasting out there, so, especially now. When I started, it wasn't like this. Now, if you're just in the middle, yeah. you're like, yeah, he's cool. Yeah. It's, it's going to be tough to make a living man yeah so, so for me it's it's the floyd mayweather effect where you were ryan joseph how long can name dropping rogan carry shaw rogan ties is the only thing holding him up forever what do you mean how long forever how long that's the wrong question my friend he's built an entire career off the back of no rogan other people have too it's not only brendan the Rogan thing is something that a lot of these guys don't... To be fair, Brendan's the only one. Even Andrew Schultz, he credits Rogan for actually changing his life and career. Tim Dillon does the same thing. Mark Norman does the same thing. Brendan's the only guy that refuses to acknowledge the role that Brendan, Ro Rogan actually played. Yes, he does a lot of podcasts and he does a lot of shows. I get it. But without that Rogan button, without that Rogan appearance, it doesn't go for him the way it does. But it's going to last forever. Rogan is the you know never he's the never-ending platform. That's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. That's why people still suck off Rogan to this day because it works. It's been like, I don't blame people for sucking off Rogan to get their career going, popping off because it actually can change your life. There's clear evidence of it. So he's going to ride that until the wheels fall off for sure. Um, Ready Henry, Robert Henry Poet, AZ, talking to successful people and making books of full famous quotes and having, without having your own perspective is the oldest scam ever. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Robert. Yeah. So to be fair, I'm the... I'm the sucker for that shit because I'm a big Tim Ferriss fan. Ryan Holiday's got a book out that does all that sort of shit. And, you know, I've got many uh, motivational books on this fucking shelf. I'm a sucker for that shit. I really am. So I can't even talk, to be fair. Were you paying to watch Floyd fight whether you loved him or you want to see him get knocked out? Yes. But you, you, you cared. Yeah. You cared. So, like, when I see, and this is Joe Coy's thing, it's, he's like, man, whenever you see someone, like, they tag you on something or, and it's hate, that's just promo for you, man. Yeah. It's a it's a form of promo. Why do okay, let's say that's true. Can two things be true at the same time? Probably. Let's say if there's a lot of people out there tagging you in stuff and talking negatively about you, that it's also a form of promo because it shows that they're invested in some way, even if they don't like you. Okay. But couldn't it also be true that there's some truth to what they're saying? Couldn't you look at some of the things that people say about you negatively and think, you know what? Maybe if they're all saying it, there is some truth in it. And maybe there's some truth in it. If I change my ways, that might make more people like me. Because if you are in a likability business, as Brendan says, would you want more people to like you than not like you? No matter what, if they're making this horrible YouTube video or this Instagram or whatever, it's a form of promo because most people aren't sheep. They don't go, oh man, I, this whatever troll who made this video, he's right. You know, they, it's just people have their own opinions. Yeah. So it just comes. That's the thing, though, that most people are sheeping is funny because most of the videos, with the exception of maybe who's the person that spins narratives, I wouldn't say anybody, even unique. Most people just cut up clips of Brendan talking on his own show, add commentary to it, but that's it. They don't splice them together to make him say something. He says the redacted thing, they review it. And it gets put out there and people make up their own minds. But there's so much evidence of him saying redacted shit that is almost a given that he might be redacted. But he refuses to believe that. It's like, oh no, this people are not sheep. They can see it. Um, anyway. Come to the territory. I've been doing it long enough now, man, where yeah. I'm in the business of uh like ability you know having fans you know i've been it almost sells traveling. more pay-per-views yeah with these fighters that they just want to see you get like ripped apart and you i look at the paul brothers and i'm like 
I'm like thinking to myself, like, should I just start challenging people in insurance to like box or something? Right? <laughs> like, yeah. You know, I'm like, bro, these guys are making money. Like at the end of the day, I respect the hustle, even though I like look at it. My, you know, my thing's a little different though, cause it's like, I think with like Logan and Jake, with, with like obviously. My boy, are they your boys? Are they your boys? Say they your boys. Come on, I dare ya. What they're doing, but they're, I think if you were, especially at your age, like people would look at Logan and Jake and like, oh, all they, all they get is hate. Yeah, bro. they don't get hate though. That's the thing. That's different, though. That's the difference as well. I'm saying, even even not being a fan of the Paul brothers, you can honestly say most likely they have more fans than haters, right? You can say that, especially because they have a lot of young kids as fans and whatever it may be. But Brendan is the only person who legitimately might have more ha haters than fans, honestly. And it mostly has to do with him just being a horrible person, really. Which is you know, bro, you know how much how many how large that dude's fan base is like Massive. like if he walked down the street he'd shut it down yeah so but if online is it can paint a skewed picture where yeah. people think like oh that's the most hated guy on earth yeah it's like that guy makes a living off selling things in likability and yeah. views so it's like I, I, the, the instagram and youtube the algorithm's set up for negativity absolutely so we think everything's so negative yeah but those guys sell products they sell merch they sell tickets Dude, i think know? prime i think they said he did over a billion so yeah, oh yeah this year, oh yeah man. yeah that company's worth like, i think three or four billion i mean you know it's insane it's insane so i i think you you in this day and age you gotta be like there's hate but anybody doing anything like that just comes with the territory yeah uh, again I, I don't think that's true uh, obviously there's gonna be some people that don't like what you say and like what you do but the levels of hate that this guy gets is just if it was me I, again maybe i'm just a bit naive and a little bit simple-minded if it was me and i was him and i saw people making videos about me where i make mistakes and say dumb shit that's in the millions of views i might look at that video and think to myself what am i doing that's making people think that i'm a fucking redact that's just me though i might take a look at the video and i might put my ego and pride to one side and think hold on maybe these guys are onto something <laughs> maybe you know people are literally paying off their mortgages off the back of clipping the dumb shit this guy says on a daily basis and he thinks it's all just like trolls and sheep and algorithm that's like okay i guess so bro i guess so Absolutely. it just comes to the territory man i had a i had a dude trolling on my uh tiktok the other day and it's it's so funny because uh i guess he looked up like my driver's license number somehow he found i don't know how these like it's kind of scary low-key like they'll send us our address like our parents address and stuff i'm like it's kind of freaky um but he looked at my driving record and he's like you have an unpaid parking ticket i called up my i got like a small lawyer on retainer yeah. I was like do i have an unpaid and he like looks like oh actually you do i'm like i was like bro thanks troll but yeah. I know it, thanks dude i know i was like I, I gotta go make some content on it maybe we'll clip this out and like uh yeah 300 dollars unpaid parking ticket but, like, but you gotta realize too it's like you like you're obviously you know a successful dude and you're doing these things you gotta think about there's no why is it successful how do you know social media when you were getting started like when i was a kid there's no social media Zero. so also putting your drink putting your tin drink on a settee like that is just on a couch is infuriating when there's a table right in front of you you can just lean over and put the drink on the table no i'm going to put it right on a couch next to me great think about all the people especially in sports when they get somewhere like man everyone said i couldn't do it you'll hear this all the time from the hall of fame speeches yeah people you know movie stars man they said i couldn't do it well that's the, this, the same thing's going on they said i couldn't do it just now it's at a much grander scale because now not it's just not <laughs> brother's out here watching oscar speeches at night to drown out the hate <laughs> He's watching Denzel Washington Oscar, you know, <laughs> Oscar speeches. <laughs> uh, all you got to do is just stop being a bully, stop being a redact, stop interrupting people, stop lying and shit. People will literally forget about you and it'll all be good. But nah, let's just watch Denzel Washington pick up an Oscar and yeah, that's my life. Okay, cool. Your family or your small group of friends where you grew up in Aurora, Colorado, Grand Junction, now it's the entire world has an opinion. Yeah. Of course they don't think you can do it. Of course they're not going to encourage you to do it. So it's just a much larger audience now, but you just can't listen to it. To be fair, fair enough to the interviewer, even though he might be a bit of a troll, he did well because he fired Brendan up early in the interview. You got him fired up, right? Ask about the trolls, ask about haters, ask about Bobby Lee and Kyla. 
So it's a good, it's a bit of a risky tactic because he went in balls in straight away, but he got he got the response he wanted. You yeah. of course, because and it's it's there's nothing wrong with that. It's, people are trying to protect you, like your family. Haters aren't, but it's their own insecurity because they would never risk what you've risked at your you know you're young as hell, man. Yeah, and you're balling, so that's triggering. Because ima- imagine people at forty and they're in insurance. Yeah, and they see you. When you're in a suit and you're flying to the Dallas game, you're doing this, that's triggering them. Yeah. So it's not you, it's them. So everybody that doesn't like you is jealous and wants to be a stand-up comedian and wants to have eight podcasts and wants to live in Calabasas and wants to drive trucks and shit. Okay, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's That's percent. triggering for them. And I, you got to be a little bit compassionate about it. Like, yeah. I, the more... <laughs> compassionate. Oh, look at him. <laughs> yeah, condescending is being... I have compassion for them. It's not my fault they're losers. They're just poor losers living in their parents' basement. Fingers covered with Cheeto dust. They do not matter. They're like homeless cats. As I get older and you know I have kids, man, so like if I see a hater, I it, I, must, it's, I feel bad for him. Yeah. Like, I- B- Az, did you see BGL claiming Bapa hired a p- private investigator to follow him around? Really? Is that true? What do you say that? Is that the I might have that somewhere here. What do you say that? Private investigator? Really? What do you say that? Maybe I went through some of the posts that he posts. What What, what do you say that? Hide a private investigator. Huh. Let's see here. What? Nah, okay, cool. Let's read this. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, 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 hold on. Let's read this. Let's read the let's read the let's read, the, let's read, the, let's read this one. What? Let's read. Hold on, hold on. Actually, let's go to the poll. What's the poll saying? Uh, Seventy votes so far. Do you think Papa is Whitney's baby daddy? Forty percent said yes. Twenty nine percent said no. Okay, so you majority of you think he's actually the baby daddy. Really? Okay. Wow. Let's go back to the fucking um, BGL post. Big up, uh, Stinger Goo. Um, and I, what's this? Okay, what are you saying here? And I really tried to make it policy not to lie about drug use. There's there's enough fake natties and closet addicts. I think the greatest good I can do is talk openly about what I've done and continue to do in top call. Um, I think he generally lacks empathy and ability to truly um, connect to other humans and sees those around him as appliances. If he, if they're helping him make his day easier, boosting his ego, great. The moment that curing machine acts up, um, he smacks it a few times. And if it makes him work straight, trust me, cool. Um, what's it here? Uh... Papa took a random side piece to a fertility clinic under the guise that he was going to give, he's going to leave his wife and marry her. What? Papa took a random side piece of a fertility clinic random, uh, and give her kids. Like he presented is a fully sincere plan. She told him about it and showed receipts after getting burned. Her quote, I was envisioning walking down the aisle with this man. Um, there are all facts. I provide text receipts and business cards as a PI and a note. He left on Luana's door while C- Bre- Brennan hired a PI. Wow. And that's not counting his rubber tug addiction. Can't say firsthand, but I remember being right behind him on an exit way to Thick Boy at 8.55 for Brendan Shaw, but Shaw Show at 9. He pulls back on the freeway, going the other direction, and then doesn't show up for 90 minutes. We're all waiting. He doesn't text. Rolls in like nothing happened. Doesn't even offer a, was on a phone to an agent. He was 100% getting a tugger. The week before, he'd been on a crazy... <laughs> <laughs> BGL man BGL is a fucking legend Brendan's getting rubber tongues in the morning after dropping off his kids at school before he gets into work anyway we'll do this later we'll do this later let's go back to the interview let's go back to, let's go back to the interview we'll do this later <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Rubbin Tug. Oh, Brendan Rubbin Tug, bro. Papa Tug. Papa Tug, mate. Out, out here. Papa Tug is fucking out here. Oh my god, bro. Absolutely legendary. Um, hold on. Where is it? There you go. Beyond the mic. I get it, man. Absolutely. I get it, dude. I get it, man. You know, but I've taken a lot of risk to get to where I'm at. 100%. 100%. That's fire. Think about, uh, I feel like every jiu-jitsu gym has like a little bit of an anomaly and there's this kid at ours that's like 17 and just like manhandles you. So I can feel that like vibe of individuals where they're in the industry or they're different industries and I look at guys like, I love watching uh, when John Jones tweets or something like that. I don't know who was calling for his belt to get like stripped. Tom away. Aspinall. He did, he said Tom something. Aspinall because, you know, uh, Tom Aspinall is now the interim heavyweight champion. Oh, okay. So because John got hurt. Yeah. Tom was demand they get stripped. Yeah, and then John was like, "Hold up, dude." Yes, and was like, "Man, just and just, he just he just schooled him." Yeah, yeah. He's like, "I've been doing this for I forget how long." He said, "Like whatever, eighteen years." It's like undefeated. I've seen you before, and now I get hurt and I'm out a year, and you want to strip me of the title? And literally, Tom was like, "You're right." He's like, "My bad, you're right." Yeah. you know, it's like there's just there's levels to it, man. It's insane. Um, next piece I had here is. Maybe one of, one of your favorite pods is, is there is there one that's st- like kind of just stuck out to you that you just kind of put something together and you guys got together and just have a phenomenal relationship now? Uh, which one? Any like is there one that comes to mind? Oh, like, one of them. With all the podcasting and just I know you got a bunch. You know, I almost. I got a bunch. Um, I mean, firing the kids that you know the the peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. Been doing it twelve years now, so that's that, where the comedy started with for you, right? With yeah. Brian Callen. Right? Yeah. I think it was yeah. like two thousand fourteen. Yeah, Callen was my you know my mentor in the comedy. Him and Rogan, but how important is that having a mentor in in oh, just everything. all spaces in life? Everything, especially in comedy. Like, um, again, you, it, and it's just common you know nature where people are going to say don't do it man it's too tough yeah same thing you know when I was in the UFC don't do it man too tough when I was going to get involved in fighting don't do it too tough football division one don't do it too tough so it's just people trying to protect you man so in comedy I at least had the the mentors and in, in talent especially in Rogan being like don't listen to you can do it but dude it's it's a hustle I was yeah. like never scared to work let me know so I had these mentors, two, two of the greats. You yes. know, so it's, it's, it's so valuable, man. And again, never forget that piece of law. Rogan and Brian Callen both told Brendan not to do the Showtime special. They both told him not to do it. And Brendan thought that Rogan and Callen were jealous of his success. And that's why they were telling him not to do it. So he did it anyway. Then end up being one of the biggest mistakes of his career. That's the piece of law that's absolutely crazy. Brendan, two years into comedy, thought that Rogan and Callum were jealous because he got his special so quickly with Showtime. Fucking insane. When they were actually trying to protect him, actually, actually trying to help him, say, hey, we've seen your stand-up. You shouldn't be doing a fucking special anytime soon. Don't take this deal. I know it's favourable. I know the money's good. I know the exposure's going to be great for you. But just be a bit patient and wait. Because my theory is, because of the connection he has with Rogan, even back then, even if he would have skipped on the Showtime deal, then he would have still got on a good deal later down the line. He maybe would have got a comedy special. He probably could have got a Netflix deal, maybe. Even a fucking Showtime deal again, or Comedy Central when that was still around, or HBO. He could have got another special deal, Hulu, back in the day. I don't think it was Showtime or Bust. He could have easily been a bit patient and still got something down the line because Brendan had a good, like, five-year period i think where things were good it wasn't you know he didn't have as many haters online there weren't enough you know there weren't as many comedy channels out there ripping into him it was fairly okay he had all the appearances on rogan he could have definitely got another deal further down the line but that lack of patience that willingness to just get to the bag regardless of what it might do ended up fucking him over and again him thinking rogan and Callum were jealous is fucking brilliant yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm so I'm so fortunate. So fortunate. And you're good at football. I was doing research. <clears throat> you were uh, Arena Football League. Utah Utah Blaze. Utah Blaze had a short stint with the Buffalo Bills. You were in the draft too. Yeah. NFL. Yeah. 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 Um, so I was like, when I saw that, I was like, oh, my boy could my boy could ball. Yeah, play That's some awesome. ball. Yeah. Go, yeah. Dude. Football. Yeah, I love football, man. And okay. then, are you both alumni from uh, Boulder? No, I went to... You went to the State. rival, dude. Yeah, so Where'd you go? Colorado State. Colorado State. Colorado State. Yeah. Did yeah. they beat Colorado this year? Did no, they? see you won this year. Okay. And then when I was there, we, uh, we never lost to them. Did you... Yeah. Have you guys... Uh, <laughs> did you, what do you think? About- <laughs> when I was there, we never lost 
Oh, you gotta love it, man. Honestly, I swear to God, I wish I was like this, man. I wish I had the ability to say these type of things. Like, just confidently, you know? Just lie like that. Like, just, oh, I need a bit of that, man. I swear to God. About Deion Sanders. Love him. Right, he's bringing a lot love of money, him. dude. Um, love I can't imagine how much money he's bringing to, to the local Yeah, they just signed the number one offensive lineman in the nation. For yeah. real? Yeah, yeah. Dude, That's I saw all they need is a line. I saw that it was like three thousand kids or something entered the entered the portal or something. Yeah, those boys are making money. Money, dude. What are your thoughts on NIL? I, I'm, it, it's weird. I'm conflicted. I, I'm glad the kids are making money. Yeah. But then also, it can't be good for the dynamics of the I think team. It spoils, yeah, because it's more now. It goes from like we we'll always hear these great coaches talk about, you know, we play for the team. But now, if you're getting a bag, it, it's even tough. I'm you looking know? for my bag. Yeah, so it's like when I was playing, it's like let's say the quarterback's making like you know like Shador Sanders making I don't know let's say five million a year. Yeah. And this fat offensive lineman who's from like you know Iowa. Yeah. You know, he's good, but they're not paying his fat-ass NIL money. Yeah. And he's, like, broke, you know? So, and Shador's pulling up in a, you know, Lamborghini. And meanwhile, you're playing with, like, an AP on Yeah, him. you're in your mom's Kia, you yeah. know? So, I, I just, it can't be good for the dynamics of the team. Yeah. It can't be good. But it's weird because it, they should be. What? Huh? They're making the school so much money. Yeah. So, it's not fair that they're not paying. But it's also it's gonna mess up the the love of the game. I don't know. I, I agree with that as well. And I, I think also like when I think about the justice system, about like people that are still in jail in relation to marijuana, it makes zero sense to me. Insane. But I also think then because I grew up in Pittsburgh, and then if you if you know, uh, Terrell Pryor came out of Jeanette, and then his coach was Jim Trussell. And so before NIL, if there was even a hint that you were getting some type of compensation oh, know, man. in college, so what about all the guys? that lost out on opportunity coaches that got like just their their record and everything about Reggie shamed. Bush Bro, lost his Heisman dude that's it and he took like a Hummer you know he 300 grand yeah which is nothing now I feel like there should be like reparation <laughs> you know what I mean like, it's tough to go back right yeah because what do you do it's like <laughs> it's tough to go back <laughs> No reparations. Thin blue line Brendan, isn't it? <laughs> he fucking hates black people. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's tough to go back though, isn't it? <laughs> it happened. <laughs> Just get over it. <laughs> Slavery was a choice. Okay, you know, it's tough. Yeah, I don't know. But I think about those. I don't like thinking like maybe someone will, maybe Kim Kardashian will go save everybody. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's getting, uh, it's getting weird. <laughs> Yeah, it's getting weird. I don't he know what He fucking hates us. I love it. So he I was diving us. in the UFC. Uh, you oh. were in, what, did it start 2008, 2009? For me, yeah, probably 2008. I mean, uh, I was on Ultimate Fighter in 2009. <laughs> it's a beast to go back. It's tough. <laughs> oh, he fucking hates black people. I fucking love it so much. Yeah. Yeah. 10 and 5. Oh. The one that really caught my eye was two things. Knocked out an absolute vet. I think I don't know if it was third round, Marco oh, uh, Krokop. Yep, Krokop, yep. Insane. What was what was the feelings and everything in that fight, bro? Uh yeah, he was he was like a hero of mine, so he's a lot tougher than I thought cuz I thought he was like, "Oh, he's a little older, I bet I could starch him, you know." And yeah. That was not the case. He was like the toughest fight of my life. Yeah. yeah. And I knocked him out late, late, late in the third. My nose is all busted up, but yeah, I mean, best knockout of my career for sure. I've heard Rogan talk about having to get his nose fixed and fixing up his airway. Did you do anything like that? You know, did yeah, it? I don't know if Rogan did it because he did uh, like taekwondo or karate, whatever, when he was young. <laughs> this guy has to be a troll. He mentions Rogan got his thing busted up and fixed. As if trying to equate Rogan being a professional fighter when Rogan was never a professional fighter, right? In that sense, right? You might have talked when he was younger, but he never fought MMA in any way, potentially. Like, <laughs> this guy's definitely a troll. I remember he's trying to compare Rogan's fight experience with Brendan fighting out <laughs> Lotsky. <laughs> sorry. Oh my God. Sorry, 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 sorry. Let's go back one moment. One more moment. Honestly, this guy's brilliant. This guy's fucking brilliant. Rogan talk about having to get his nose fixed and fixing up his airway. Did you do anything like that? You know, did yeah, that I don't know if Rogan did it because he did uh, like and, taekwondo. And Brendan cleared it up real quick. Rogan didn't. No, no. Or karate, whatever, when he was younger. Yeah. Uh, mine was like shattered from an elbow from Mirko Krokop. Yeah. So it's like, I think our noses are a little different. But yeah, I think 
I think he he had he may not have had a deviated septum. My my shit was like shattered, just busted yeah. from elbows. A disaster. Yeah. So and, and I always hear Rogan bring it up, and it doesn't make sense to me either. When uh, like you can't you can't knee on the ground in the UFC. But the elbows, the knees, the knees. you know what I mean? Like, you just can't throw myself, uh, uh, 12 to 6 elbows downwards. Yeah. It's, like, it's all old school stuff. Yeah. Like, old and, old but then, then I just look at, uh, who's the, this is horrible, who's the absolute legend, smaller dude, that went over to the different... Uh, Mighty Mouse? Demetrius Johnson? Yeah, Demetrius yeah. Johnson. Yeah, and, but then he gets head kicked, gets knocked out. And then, he went to one championship, so different, different set of rules. Yeah, dude. That's it now. But you, to, to be honest, a, a lot of those rules, like the no knees to down opponent, the 12 6 elbows, all that was is so people could consume it and not think of it as human cockfighting. Yeah. Like that was just so people, had, especially at the time, would get on board and yeah. it did its job. Yeah. It, like they got to package it so that everybody's not terrified. Like yeah. You allow soccer kits and all these crazy yeah, the things. sports boards or whatever they talk. Yeah, I, the commission and all that stuff. Like it's gonna be in, like you're not getting the sponsor. So yeah. I understand what they do. I heard Dana say something like, he doesn't Dana even like Shaw. when guys start scuffling during uh, like the show off or whatever. Because he said the sports commission, they he's said, full you know, of shit. For real? Yeah, it's good for the sport, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's good for pay per view. Now he's doing exactly what he should be doing as the shit, president man. of the company. Okay, yeah. He's like, we don't. I thought you guys are good though. You're telling Dana's full of shit, but I thought you guys are good. I thought you guys are friends. I don't like it. We don't condone this. Good politics. It pleases. Yeah, it's politics. Yeah. But as far as like Connor throwing the dolly. Yeah. Dude, that they. Uh, that yeah, great point, Coiler. The um, the upspeak Bapa does is a classic sign of bullshit artists. Of course, whenever somebody does that kind of upspeak, where they kind of you know, um, over enunciating those things they said at the end in that kind of way, it's usually a sign of they're, they're talking absolute shit. And this is a good example of it. That must be the most viral clip of all time to sell a fight. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, DC John Jones at the press conference in Vegas, you know, at the gym. They're fighting. That went viral. Yeah. Uh, Khabib jumping out of the octagon against Connor. Insane. Viral. So all that, that sells pay per view. So yeah. again, I'm not saying he's a liar. I'm saying he's playing. Oh, you're not saying he's a liar, but he's not telling the truth. <laughs> politically correct yeah. and oh that that's so annoying we hate when that happens wink wink yeah like, of course people love that beef absolutely yeah have you gotten any power slaps i haven't no but here's the thing i mean <laughs> yo this guy's a troll have you done any power slaps? have you got power look if brendan tries to step foot in the arena or the place they do power slaps in he'd get chucked out before he could sit down this guy's incredible. Fun of it, I, cl I especially when it's first popped, I clown it. But when you see what they're doing, like, like Dana and his team is brilliant. Like, the younger audience, they don't. Yuck, man! Yuck! This glazing of Dana White now he's doing is so disgusting. I have the attention span to watch a complete UFC yeah. card. It's just you know, young people are crazy. So he's just breaking up to, into small consumption. What? What? How long is a UFC fight? Like 15 minutes. Right? It's three rounds. What? Five minutes per round, right? Not including the time when you sit down in the corner and shit. What? Huh? Shorter yeah. time span. So online and in Twitter and TikTok and whatever else, it's crushing it. Yeah. So he's... Now don't clips of UFC fights crush it online and Twitter too. What's he talking about here? I'm getting towards that. Everybody I know, like legit people that I trust, their opinion, like, dude, I get online, it looks absolutely stupid. In person, this thing's lit. Yeah. Like in person, this thing's so much fun. I ran into him at the Red Rock Casino, got an invite. It's kind of sold out. I feel like I'm not as the bigger influencer like some of these guys, like Steve will do it, anything like that. But uh, dude in person was humble, awesome, like it was a really cool, really cool experience. Yeah, I heard. I heard it's cool. <laughs> ah, so this guy is friends with Dana now. He's cool with Dana. He probably knows Brendan's beef with Dana, and he's rubbing it in his face that he met Dana. He got invited to the fucking show, right? <laughs> this guy's definitely a troll. He has to be. He has to be. He has to be. Cool. And some of the slap fight guys have reached out to me. Like I have no issue with them. It's just in of course they reached out to you. Of course, see how he had to flex there because he kind of felt a bit inadequate. He felt inadequate because the guy mentioned that he went to a casino, bumped into Dana. Dana liked the cut of his gym and invited him to the fight thing in real life, live event. 
And then Dana had to mention, Brent had to mention there, yeah, Sapphire people reached out to me. As if. As if. Insane, you know, it's yeah. like, it, it's just tough. I wonder what the long-term side effects will be, because... I'll tell you. The CT, <laughs> I'm looking at their faces as well. Yeah, this one isn't like, that hard to figure out. <laughs> man. Yeah, they're thinking, I'm like, at least like it, I feel like... You know, UFC, like, you mean, maybe more skill involved with UFC and you can at least defend yourself and, like, there's <laughs> defense there, involved. Like, this, there's, there's no defense. Dude, I'm looking at, like, this one girl's face and it's just, like, out there and I'm like, how's your face? Yeah, the girl, the more the girls do, it's tough to, tough to watch. Um, I, I, I don't know. It, it, you know, TBS took it off the air because it was just people were like, what the hell is going on here? Yeah. So there's, there's a lane for it. I could see a lawsuit. I don't, I bet those contracts are so ironclad Tight. because, yeah. Because CT, yes, like you, it's happening. Like yeah. you watch it every single time. So just straight brain damage every time. Yeah, yeah it's br- <laughs> stinger goo. The Shorbs are the poor man's Rockefellers. <laughs> to be fair, I've said it before on here. I'm not even American, but I honestly think Brendan is w- way more an example of the American dream than most people. The fact that he's been able to make it this far in life, being as dumb as he is, is really a credit to your wonderful country you have out there, where people like that are legit redax can ascend to this level that he's at in terms of being able to pay his way via talking through a microphone and, you know, sharing his opinions and shit. That's actually the American dream. Like, you make it despite of your intellect, despite of your dumbness, despite of your redactness, despite of your you know, whatever, you make it in, in spite of that. That's actually the American dream. Quintessential, that's the American dream. Brutal. Every time. Yeah, that's insane. Um, the Dars joke, I was talking to you about that last night. Darson, Matt, Mitrone. Mitrione, yeah. Mitrione. He's my buddy. Yeah, that's my yeah. boy, yeah. Dude, that's and you said you were the first heavyweight. Time first one to do it. Yep. To hit the Dars. Yep, the Dars. I don't see many Darses uh just hit in general. I had Bryce Mitchell on um a month or two ago. He's a great and he hit guy. the love him. We're so we're both from Arkansas. And uh he hit the uh twister. You know what I mean? I oh, absolutely yeah. hate the tenth planet type move. At least it happens to me. Um and I was uh talking to him just about subs and different things like that and seeing these twisters. I think there's only been three in the UFC, but I'm thinking about Darces, and then you have the Dars brothers. I call them the Dars brothers, but Rotolos. I know one of them is definitely known for, for yep. Dars chokes. Yep. And uh, just jujitsu in general. So, where did you get your? Where did you start your jujitsu uh, career, and then where'd you get the black belt? Started jujitsu in Aurora, Colorado. <laughs> the black belt question is bait because he got the black belt recently because his son asked him why he don't have a black belt and he called up his old dojo and said hey can I get a black belt he said yeah come down and he picked it up at a high altitude it's Nate Markart's gym okay so Nate uh, you're younger but Nate was like MMA royalty UFC yeah. royalty oh Jack Jack Donaghy Jr Brendan's success was nepotism which makes your statement dead on. The only American dream is hoping someone else makes you rich. (sighs) Never true words has been said. You know what, right? Controversial opinion. I don't have a problem with nepotism. There's nothing wrong with it, really. If you have the opportunity to bring somebody else in on your business and give them opportunity to make a success of themselves, why wouldn't you do it? Especially if they're your kid, someone you care about. Makes sense. The only issue that I have with nepotism is that for whatever reason, it's the same with people that are on, on Zempic, same with people who inherit money. They don't like to admit it. Like they don't like to admit the role it played in their success. It doesn't play all the roles, right? In, in a percentage, if you have to cut up your, you know, how you achieve what you've achieved as a percentage pie, right? Most likely it's not going to be the whole thing. It's going to be nepotism. It's going to account for something. But for some reason, nepotism babies or proponents of nepotism or recipients of nepotism don't like to admit and i don't know why that is why wouldn't you admit that that played some role it doesn't play all the role but it played some role that's the only weird thing i've I've never really understood maybe because they feel like it takes away from their accomplishment but i don't think anyone even people here in the chat can sit here and say brendan only made it because of rogan no one's saying that sure he does a lot of podcasts sure he does put himself out there all the time so that's obviously one part of it but you can't also deny that being friends with one of the most popular people in media, a guy that has the number one podcast for like 10, two plus decades, right? One of the richest guys in the world isn't going to help you. You'd be redacted not to think that way. So when people don't admit it, 
that's why I don't understand it. Like, why wouldn't like if you know, like for instance, like um, in um in fashion, there's the fucking uh, what's his thing called? Alexander Arnold, right? Um, I forgot what his dad's name is, right? But he owns LVMH and they own you know Louis Vuitton and a few other companies underneath the umbrella, and obviously Ramoa, the luggage company. Um, that guy Arnold, he's you know his son's called Alexander, and he gave his son the CEO job to lead, I think Tiffany's or Ramoa or something. Imagine if he come out and said, oh, my success isn't because of my dad. That would be ridiculous, wouldn't it? Because his dad owns LVMH. So why wouldn't your dad give you a job? Like, it makes some sense. But no one's also saying that you got the job only because your dad is, you know, who he is. Obviously, you have to be smart. You have to know what you're doing. All these things play a role in it. But I've never understood the rejection of, like, the favor somebody gives you or the blessing they give you by giving you something and giving you a way in, you know, opening a door or giving you a contact that's still a good thing it doesn't account for all your success but it did play a small part in it you'd assume but hey what do i know royalty was a strike force world champion pancreas world oh, champion so he fought ufc when like you could just punch wherever uh no he, he fought in pancreas where it was like okay. no holds bar and then he went to strike force became world champion there uh beat tyrone woodley wow. and then he went from there to the ufc fought anderson silva he lost he, he actually lost the middleweight championship against anderson silva yeah but he was always like top six guys in the world but he in Colorado he was he was basically our John Elway for MMA yeah so I went to his gym started there and then uh slowly went from there met Amal Easton who's a Henzo Gracie black belt so I started training with Amal Easton and Elliot Marshall and uh Christian Allen there and then uh would go out to Henzo's yeah and then uh really I was about, about three stripe brown belt there and then i when i moved to la i started training <clears throat> with henner and Huron gracie mm -hmm. well, so i started with them with a with a you know high brown belt yeah and then just kept doing it kept doing it and then you know got my black belt is is bravo close to la bravo super close yeah yeah i've never me and eddie we've never rolled together i've never been yeah uh a 10th planet guy i've always been henzo yeah henzo yeah henzo oh. henner but Definitely, you've definitely probably done some some content and stuff with Eddie, right? Uh, I mean, we, we do the fight campaign together. Yeah. So yeah, what's so that we, like? it's like me, Rogan, Brian, and uh, uh, is that weird? That Brendan and Eddie have never rolled together, never done any sort of training at all during his whole entire time fighting, and even post fighting, he's never ever trained with Eddie Bravo. Is that weird? Is that like an indication of like them not really being friends outside of the fight companion? Because I always got the feeling Eddie doesn't really like Brendan much. I don't know why. I just got a feeling, an inkling. That's a bit strange, isn't it? Templar Jiu Jitsu, Brendan never being a part of it. Huh. Eddie. Yeah, yeah me, me love And you started doing your own fight companion too for some of the fights. That was Rogan's idea. Yeah. Because <laughs> when he moved to Austin, literally that fight companion is the, the funnest show me and Rogan do. We've talked about it. Like, yeah. It's our funnest time. It's just the boys hanging out. Yeah. And then when he moved to Austin, he was just like, dude, I'm busy and then as i think at the time spotify didn't have the live capabilities yeah um which they they don't really now but he was just he didn't know if he could still do it on youtube so he's like dude I, i'm just too swamped like i can't do it he's like you do it yeah i was like all right but it's and i enjoy <laughs> brendan gave him the blessing Get, brendan told him hey you be the next rogan brendan publicly uh, you know christened brendan rogan 2.0 enjoy doing it but it's not the same yeah. with when I'm with the boys. Oh, geez. Yeah, the OGs. Oh, geez. It's just not the same. So I do. Okay, people are saying here, um, why would I? Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Bodybuilding news. Why would you think they're friends? True. Um, never been a template jiu-jitsu guy. Isn't your boy, though? Exactly. Bear nips. Eddie can only stand back up for two hours. True. Starting to sound a bit like Bell from Costco. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do them as much, but, but so we we'll, we're doing more with Rogan now. Yeah. How long is like a full UFC like event? Like like when I see Rogan and when he'll pick some of like obviously the major cards he'll do. Is he like there from eight till midnight? From the from the prelims. Yeah. Oh, dude, they're there from basically four to one a.m. That's insane. Like the, the prelims start sometimes, you know. So he's probably there probably at the arena at two. Yeah. He's probably there from two p.m. to midnight or one p.m. You know, one a.m. I know it's a forever away, but what freaks me out is thinking about Buffer not announcing fights, like not being there, or like Rogan not 
you know, retiring from doing that, or Dana White retiring. Like, I don't That's know what UFC. would happen to yeah, the, the UFC. UFC. If those three, even even one piece of the like, it would just I feel like that's a twenty five percent hit to the oh, overall company. More, like man, I'm, when you because when you think of the UFC, like the fighters are in, interchangeable. Yeah, they retire, they cir- circle through them, they cycle through them. But there's the no matter any given night, the most famous people in that arena are not fighters. Yeah, mm, extra doubt on that one. If anything, the quality of the fighters is the reason why the UFC is what it is. The roster they have. If Dana walks away tomorrow, the UFC is still the same thing, same product. It doesn't diminish because of Dana White isn't there barking into his phone. Bruce Buffer, yeah, cool, but they can find somebody else to do that job. Like the fighters are the most important part of the UFC, really and truly, which is funny because they get the least cut of the pie. They're the most important part of the UFC, but they get the least amount of money, which is fucking hilarious, isn't it? Bruce Buffer probably gets paid more than most UFC fighters. Think about that. Bruce Buffer probably gets paid more than most UFC fighters. Yeah. It's Dana White and Joe Rogan. Absolutely. So when those guys leave, that, that, that'd be a major hit. It's yeah. not like other leagues, man. It's not like other not leagues where this Roger Goodell leaves. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Or, that, or Silver was... leaves and then be like, all right, whatever. But the UFC, it's just, it's different, man. You, Rogan and Dana are the lifeline of that. What we do a Bellator fight? No, they're not. That's why they get scammed. They're not. They're not. Rogan and Brent, Rogan and Dana are a huge part of the UFC. But they're not, they're not so huge that if they walked away, people wouldn't watch it anymore. Let's just, let's give our head a wobble too. And if you log on to certain Reddits and certain forums, there's a certain contingent. And again, I'm a, I'm a casual UFC fan, but there's a certain segment of the UFC fan base who hate Rogan as a commentator. They don't think he's good. They don't think he adds anything worthwhile to the coverage. I've heard some people actually watch UFC fight cards on mute. I've legitimately heard people say they watch UFC fight cards on mute because they hate the commentary. Because it's too biased. Sometimes if, if DC's on there, I think they say DC agrees too much with Rogan when he's on there. They end up kind of agreeing with each other all the time. There's no real critical or really analysis. If they like the fighter, they don't really go in too hard anymore. They don't really analyze, analyze it properly. Like, so there's issues around them commentating and being a big part of it anyway. So come on. And sitting up front costs like 200 bucks. And I was like different yeah dude you're not sitting up front at ufc no sir without one it's not even there's not even almost like a price on it i feel like you got to be boys with with people to really get up there especially now it's like if it's at msg or something like that yeah Yeah. because because i think i heard dana on recently on the nelk where he was like he'll look and he'll have to make adjustments if somebody will hit him up and it's like if connor's like i want to slide yeah you know what i mean and he'll, he'll adjust and i'm like dang dude i couldn't imagine spending 10 grand <laughs> and like getting a text from Dana, be like hey we had to adjust your seat <laughs> here's, here's your money back like yeah. that's how like powerful yeah. you know they are and they think they don't need yeah, they're the money sorry. jared leto and his hoes took your seat yeah. you know? like, why <laughs> i think 20 grand like, yeah, give up. donald trump tucker yeah. carlson and yeah uh, who's the frog dude what alex jones yeah, fucks the frog dude. <laughs> <laughs> frog, there's just gay frogs yeah. everywhere um that's awesome ufc 296 i wanted to- okay let's just switch quickly because I've, I've i've saw i think i saw nj ranger talk about it allegedly what whitney cummins wants to name her kid what what did nj let's see what's going on in the kids subreddit this has been like a bit of a barn summer day everything's happening at one time i can't keep up man i can't keep up what's fuck's happening now what the fuck is happening now let's get in the reddit right away what's happened what the fuck is going on today <laughs> oh my god let's see big up nj ranger you're an absolute g let's see what i'm going what, what are these guys saying here oh whitney wants to name her kid billy no way no way this is real no fucking way let's play this clip what the fuck no way fellas fellas whitney cummings Fellas. <laughs> it didn't play the clip. <laughs> A bit. Thank you. And uh, now you're pregnant. No one believes me. I think I also talked very publicly about freezing my eggs, like in a, mm. a special, like a couple of years ago. So everyone thinks I like f- a Tesla or like, no, everyone's like, is this is from a human man. Like it's <laughs> this very odd thing. You didn't. I don't know. I'm very excited. What am I in for? Oh my God. I'm so happy for you. Because uh, you know the... what? My other name was Billy. 
I'm so excited for you. It's mm -hmm. the greatest thing ever. Loved it. Thank you. And Whoa. Is she trolling? Because Whitney's quite good at trolling, to be honest. She's quite good at trolling. Is she trolling? Because if you're not aware, Brendan's um, latest kid, the baby, the little critter, um, that we all thought when I initially heard that he, you know, his wife was pregnant again, I legitimately thought they were going to name the kid like Portia Balenciaga or something, right? I, I was surprised that they gave the girl, a, you know, a quite conventional name. So the the daughter's called Billy, and now Whitney coming to saying that she was thinking of calling her kid, who I'm assuming is going to be a girl too, Billy. Yo, <laughs> imagine if Brendan's the dad and he's got two kids called Billy. That's got to be trolling. That has to be trolling. One more time. And uh, now you're pregnant. No one believes me. I think I also talked very publicly about freezing my eggs, like in a, mm. a special, like a couple of years ago. So everyone thinks I like f a Tesla or like, no, everyone's like, is this from a human man? Like, it's <laughs> this very odd thing. You didn't. I don't know. I'm very excited. What am I in for? Oh, my God. I'm so happy for you. Because uh, you know the... what? My other name was Billy. I'm. Billy. Two Billies. I'm sure it's happened before though, right? I'm sure that's the thing. I'm sure there's guys out there that have baby mothers that have like multiple baby mothers who have the kids with the same name. I'm sure that's not that uncommon, but this is fucking wild, it's true. I guess you maybe have to make sure they both get their names spelt differently or something. Or maybe you call one Billy Senior, one Billy Junior. But I'm sure that's the thing. I'm sure there's some guys out there, some absolute dogs that, you know, by force want their kids to all have the same name or maybe have names that start with the same letters or something, right? But that's fucking wild if true. That is absolutely insane. Again, I am pressing X a doubt. I really don't think that Brendan is the father of her unborn child. I really much doubt it. But I would love it to be true. For the sake of content, for the sake of laughing, for the sake of lols, for the sake of lamaus, for the sake of ha-has, he-he's, ja ja jas, big up my Spanish um, speakers out there, I honestly would love this to be true. I would not love nothing more than to have an entire arc, an entire saga that involves Brendan trying to keep up with the child support payments for four kids plus alimony. <laughs> right? I would love nothing more than to see that content of him having to sell all the cars, sell all the fancy trainers, you know, scale down the thick boy operations, moving back into the old studio, right? Looking all sad on the pod, drinking loads. Like, that would be great content to see. I'm not going to lie. Hope, if it's true. If it's true. But yeah, that's that's the current theory at the moment. Wow, bro. Wow, 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 wow. Honestly, I'd love nothing more than that to be true, but I have a feeling that it's not true. That's the current feeling I have at the moment. But, oh my God. I swear to God. Da, da, da. Okay, cool. What's this one? Okay, cool. Let's say um, one more time. One more thing quickly before we continue, right? One more thing quickly before we continue because I think BJ has been letting these nuts hang really, really aggressively here. Okay, this is the one about the private investigator. So big up whoever mentioned it before as well. What's this post? I'm missing so much stuff happening at the same time. Oh my God, it's so crazy. So much information. So um, Mark Harley, BGL posted recently. What do you say here? He says, um, no clue, but I know for a fact I have proof and we'll put it in a YouTube video when this is all wrapped up. He hired a private investigator to follow me after one of his side pieces sent Joanna flowers from her fave florist with a note out to his multiple LTRs. What's an LTR? Um, I assume he's trying to save face, but I got multiple texts from his side pieces where he's like, Mark broke into my gate and left flowers and is Jade stalking me. Hilarious on its own, but imagine the money he paid minimum 10K is my guess, just to gaslight his wife about his long-term affairs. Um, he outed him because she had, because she said he wasn't having more kids. She saw Tifa K was discussing IVF. He was he still apparently has no idea she's the one behind it. That's a bit scabby from the girl, though, isn't it? Imagine you're the side piece and you send the wife flowers. That's a that's a little bit scabby. But Jesus Christ, if this is true, this is crazy, bro. Private investigators to follow me, yo. 
Again, it's no surprise though. Anybody that always, because Brendan always does this thing where he goes on camera and he acts completely unbothered by everything. I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. Anybody that's like going out of their way to tell you how much they don't care and how unbothered they are, they're probably very bothered behind the scenes. So it's no surprise that he does all this type of shit, right? He pretends like he's over it, that he's too big for this, he's aloof, he doesn't read his comments, all this sort of shit. So it's no surprise that he would go to this length in order to kind of protect his ego or to find out the truth about what's going on with certain things. So that's no surprise in that regard. Um, but yeah, I can't wait for that video when BGL does put it out. It never ends, in it? It's a never-ending saga between these two. It really isn't. It never fucking ends. And again, maybe maybe Brendan could have avoided this whole thing if he didn't treat BGL like shit and he just paid him his money he's owed him. If Brendan didn't treat BGL like shit and paid him the money he owed him, all this would be okay. But he didn't, and then BGL went scorched earth, and now look, all these businesses out on the internet. Absolute dumb dum One absolute fucking dumb dum But hey... What can you do? What can you do? Um, next screenshot here. Before we continue back on the video, what's this one saying? Um, latest process post. This is this is this is the title here. Let's get this up on here because this looks really interesting too. They couldn't let this spicy dish get buried in the comments. What are you saying here? B Joe again. Here's the thing about Papa. You learn real quick if you're socially underneath him. Not only can you not tell him shit because he doesn't listen, he also makes it very clear it's not okay to criticize him. He'll ice you out if he'll ice you out. He'll pick on you. He'll deflect. He'll say you have X Y Z problem. Worry about yourself. He'll deny, <laughs> he'll deny the problem and say you're stupid for even thinking that. Only Rogan was able to talk sense into him about fighting, and even then, he was plotting to go to le light heavyweight for months after. Have you seen a clip where he's like daydreaming about proving everyone Rogan wrong? He's still bitter about this day in private. Oh, interesting little nugget there. I believe that. I believe that. I believe a scenario where part of Brendan is still a little bit bitter that Rogan said what he said about him in public the way he did. Obviously, it worked out to the benefit of him, but a part of me would believe that, you know, as much as he likes Rogan, there's a part of him that's probably jealous, probably hates him secretly. I would imagine. I would imagine. Um, he creates the opposite of an environment where constructive criticism is welcome, only harsh criticism from him towards any underlings in these group chats. His favorite way to be, be, berate and humiliate people as he's a pussy with face to face confrontation. And then for people to above him is to constantly bitches in private about them to others. That's something I've interested that, that I've noticed as well. That's very true, right? That I get from him as well. I do get I do get the sense that Brendan is a bit of a coward in someone, which is really interesting because he's a perform he's a performer. Sorry, he's a former UFC heavyweight. An actual trained, legit killer. Like, he could kill most of us with his bare hands, right? And he's clearly a big dude. Played played football, not NFL, but played football to a, a decent enough standard. So he can look after himself. But I always get the impression that he is a little bit of a pussy for, like, pub, you know, for, like, a, what's the thing called? Face-to-face -face confrontation. So it wouldn't surprise me if he's somebody that does this sort of, like, you know, playing with people's heads behind their behind their backs and shit you know it wouldn't surprise me too much but again it's really odd in it again something that's a legit tough guy but also isn't willing to like you know say things to people's faces really strange it continues anyone doing better he finds a way to dismiss the success as illegitimate even while praising them publicly Theo told me he had a drinking problem and was expressing genuine concern brendan turns around and mocks him privately on multiple occasions like can you believe this guy lol drinking problem just because i drink equivalent of 15 oh yeah true that was the actual real moment in it when Theo tried to like actually you know tell him he might have a problem which he obviously did have a problem um let's see the next post here um da, da, da. what does he know about addiction anyway jesus man he's so difficult to work with and just the way off the mark here like, I bought a professional powerlifting coach to shoot a haters will say training video. Dude knows his shit and program he wrote me added £100 to my dead in three months. He was trying to correct Brendan's atrocious deadlift form over and over, not realising that I knew that he's uncoachable because he thinks he's a weightlifting expert because he grew up in Gold's Venice. And it was so awkward watching this dude patiently correct his form and Papa be completely dismissive and annoyed and not follow anything he said. Oh, I want to see that content so badly. I want to see that content so badly. 
I want to see the content of a legit weightlifting coach trying to, or powerlifting coach, trying to tell Brendan how to deadlift properly. I would love to see that content. I really would. But anyway, go back to the video we're watching. Let's finish this. Let's finish that guy's video quickly. And then we can continue on. Again, if you're enjoying the stream and you're liking what you're seeing, you see what you like, make sure you're liking down below. I'm going to pull up some of the, because uh, I just had a Ultimate Fighter dude. Two, 290. Oh, this next, this yeah, this next one. I wanted That's to, a good one. I wanted to see some of your picks. So let me pull up here. And I know 297, they got Strickland fighting, uh, I say his name wrong. DDP. Just, what do you call him DDP? DDP? Yep. What do you think that's going to be the option that? Uh, that, that, that? Out of all the fights, that's the toughest one to call. Yeah? Toughest one to, yeah. Best fight that they've announced this year. It's insane. Yeah, are coming up. Yeah, that's a tough one. So, uh, Shavkat, Rachmanov, Monster. or Steven Thompson? Oh, man. I love Wonder Boy, but that's a tough fight for him. Yeah? yeah? Is Steven Thompson, is he the one that, uh, was it him that broke, or was that... Where he fought through breaking a wrist. Was that Hooker? Uh, it's probably both of them. They're Hooker. both freaking savages. But one, Wonder Boy, he's, he's the, the karate, you know, kickboxer. Yes. Movie. Yeah, he's a freak. I call him Wonder Boy, but he's 40, right? Yeah. So, um, That's insane. Yeah, he, he's a monster. That's a tough, Shavkat's a tough fight for him. I'm really excited about this one. Pantoja or Roy Vall? I had a... Uh, Dude, Roy Vall's a Denver insane. boy, so I'm going Roy Vall. That's what, that's what I had... Um, Dude's name, his name's Mondo uh, Gutierrez, and he fought on Connor's team. Uh -huh. He didn't make it uh, past the first round, but he's a solid dude. But he said he's training with Roy Vall. Roy Vall, he said. Savage. Savage. Yes. Like all around fighter. Good all around fighter. Now, Pantoja's story is cool, though, because. Sick he, story. Yeah, you know, his story. Yeah, he's like. Yo, big up young old, young old vibes. BJ is so spiteful. Exactly. Brian, BJ would have. Paying BJ would have been cheaper. Imagine the person that honestly do, do think that as much as BJ has been entertaining to watch his you know, him rage out and expose all this information. Am I the only one that thinks BGO is a piece of shit as well? I know he has a genuine grievance with Brendan for withholding payment, being a shit boss, doing him dirty, but isn't BGO a bit of a piece of shit too for exposing all this stuff about Brendan? Like, is this really called for? Again, Brendan's a read that, he can be a bully, but is it really necessary to put this information out there about him, really? The Whitney thing, if true... The having random side people like blowing up his spot this way is this really called for what do you guys think if somebody owes you money and they did you you know at a job and did you do this would you do this would you go and call up their wives and tell them that their husband's been cheating on them a million times is this really appropriate is this really appropriate response to what brendan did to him really or does bgl owe brendan no form of loyalty whatsoever is this an appropriate response really because what did Brendan do to BGO? He didn't pay him. Um, he docked him wages, withhold payment, treat him like shit, made him look like, like an idiot on camera and shit. But is it justifiable to like go out there and say that he's, you know, exposed the fact that he's been cheating on his wife all the time and he might have a secret love child? Like, is that really appropriate? Is that really, you know, I don't know what the term is. Um, a like for like sort of like response to what Brennan did to him. What do you guys think? Um, no honor amongst thieves vibes. True space guy. Always spot on. Jack Donner, he says, he's a piece of shit, but not for exposing Brendan. When your boss is that much of a fuck stick. Yeah, that's a good point though, isn't it? He is a piece of shit, but really, if Brendan is doing all that fuck shit, then, you know, it's your fault for doing the fuck shit, really, isn't it? Young old vibes. He's using it to get attention from Reddit. True. Yeah, yeah, that's right, true. Because there's an element of me thinking maybe it's all made up completely just to like, you know, get the Reddit all spun up in the, in the tizzy. Coiler says, I would be mad about 15K, but I'd be a G about it. Handle it on the low. Exactly. Or just handle it with the money thing. Like, talk to him directly. Like, have a beef with Brendan. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, expose the thing about Brendan that are personal to him. That doesn't affect other people. That might be an appropriate response. But is throwing the kids in it and his wife, is that appropriate? I don't know. Um, Josie said BJ was a piece of shit not just with Brendan but when you see him deadlift his woman's car <laughs> okay that's always a good point people clarify that like what do you expect okay fair enough Josie you got a good point there you got a good point driving for Uber in Brazil yeah. even though he's a UFC fighter yeah 
that that thing's a little dice. Like the news came out and they tried making it like, oh, he's in the UFC professional fighter and he has to drive for Uber. He, but he fought once in three years, dude. Yeah. It's like it'd be like you sell insurance. You're upset. You're not making money. But you're not selling insurance. Yeah. Or I'm doing stand up. I'm like, man, what the hell? They don't pay me enough. They're like, yeah, but you're not on the road working. You yeah. Know, so for that's a little dicey there. That was the headline on that. That's not a good example, bro. Because the UFC control how much the fighters get paid. There's no limit to how much you can get paid being a fucking stand up comedian or selling insurance. Even to sell insurance, you set your own fucking rates. I'm assuming, right? Or whatever it may be. With the UFC again, I like how he's being purposely. Um, ignorant, willfully ignorant about what's going on because he wants to get into Dana's good books. The reason why people have an issue with the UFC is that they artificially control how much fighters get paid and they have a program where they don't allow fighters to earn a base salary. So you have to only get paid based on how much you fight. But if you fight too often, you might also get you might also be liable to get cut because there's more opportunity for you to get to lose. And if you go on a long enough losing streak, the UFC will cut you. So if you fight a lot you might earn a lot. But if you fight a lot, you also might get cut. <laughs> and if you, even if you do get paid, it's not enough to cover all your fucking fees and shit, right? Your team, your nutrition, your travel. So I like how he's purposely being ignorant of that and using it as a way to kind of suck off Brent Dana. Well, again, Dana's never going to be your friend, Brendan. Dana's never going to be your friend. Yeah, but, yeah, he, he, you know, world champion. What about Edwards or Cummington? Oof. I'm a, love Kobe. Kobe's my boy. I'm a little worried that he's had such a long layoff. Yeah. <clears throat> a long layoff. Like a while. Is it for three years? Yeah. Long layoff. So, um, yeah, it's a tough fight for him, man. That one's insane. Um, you know, I'm savage, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point, Sarla, because I didn't think about that. You can't do anything to him physically, so you have to try to get your money. Yeah, that's the thing, because when I've, when I've been involved in these type of situations, where I've had my wages owed or withheld from me, I've always threatened physical violence. I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean, I'll threaten that shit all the time and I will actually follow through with it. I don't I don't mind getting fucking, I don't mind sitting out in jail because somebody owes me money. Do you know what I mean? There's a, there are things I'm willing to die for and that's something I'm going to die for. I don't give a fuck. Like, that's something I really would do. But this is from like, random dweeby startup guys that get scared if you use you know if you shout at them loudly do you know what i mean and me being a big black dude they're always gonna be scared of me anyway so i can use that to my advantage but i guess if you're trying to get o wages owed to you by a former ufc light heavyweight or former ufc heavyweight it's a bit harder isn't it it's a bit harder so maybe i have sympathy with brent with bjl for that way it's hard because what can you do to brendan really you can't beat him up he's gonna fuck you up so you have to do something else now, if this was me, you know, he's got a lot of cars. You might have a bat. You go crazy on the cars. Just put on a belly. You know what I mean? It's not hard. You could do loads of things. You know what I mean? There's loads of things you could do. Even like, you know, internet things you could do. I'm not going to name them, but hey, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. Let's fight on that card is Ian Gary Vicente Luque. Now, Ian That's Gary's got some event. crazy stuff going That's on. That's why right this, this, and also this fight in Ian Gary's career is like, this is it. This is like life changing. Yeah. If he goes out there and head kicks Vicente Luque with everything going on, that he, he ignores all the noise. Yeah. If he loses, the, 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 the trolls get bigger. The pile starts coming. Because right now he's the focal point of MMA for, you know, personal reasons. And so it's like, it, he's, and he's a young fighter. And he's the most talented fighter on that card yeah Ian Gary's a freak dude freak so if he he has all this pressure on him but if he can beat Vicente Luque all that goes away and yeah. then he gets on the mic rips some hot promo like this is like make it or break it for him that's insane now as a as a fighter when you're going through that level of like just insane I've never had to go through what this Chris Rizzo, when is the AZ and Shulbin interview coming? He seems to be more, seems to be more now. Seems to be more now. She's been number on now. No, I've got no interest in that whatsoever, brother. No interest in that whatsoever. I've, no, I've got zero interest in talking to anybody in stand-up comedy, to be fair, personally. With the exception of probably like who? No one, really. I don't give a fuck. Watch the content, laugh at them, point and laugh and keep it moving. There's no, I don't know. What do you want to know that you don't know already? If you want to know something about these guys, they've got a million interviews out there you can find out about what you want to know. Do you know what I mean? And, and the questions I'd want to ask, they wouldn't answer them, you know, honestly anyway. So what's the point? 
And also, why would I, you know what I mean? Like, why, why would anybody want to watch an interview about Brendan on my channel? Or why would I want to interview him? You know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense. Um, I'm not really that interested that much, to be fair. It's fun to point and laugh, but I wouldn't really have, I wouldn't get anything out of it because I don't care. I don't think he'd get anything out of it as well because it will be the wrong place to come. Do you know what I mean? Wrong place to come. Is that a pause? But anyway, you know what I mean. He'd probably be better off going on Joke World, to be fair. That would be a fun interview. Maybe ask him about Joke Maybe if the Joke World guy got him on and actually asked him about, you know, stand-up and shit, that would be interesting to kind of hear his opinion on his career and stuff and how it's gone. Maybe, you know, um, try and get his insight into how he writes jokes and shit. That might be an actual fun interview to actually see him try to pretend to be a stand-up comedian. Like, like I don't know, how far does the grift actually go? But on here, nah, I've got no interest to be fair. No interest. This dude's dealing with, like, he's dealing with, like, an onslaught. Of, You're like, in his corner. The what, entire are you community. Like, what are you telling uh, and I, th I do think he's this special of a, of a fighter. I think he's going to use his fuel and he's going to take it out on the set day Luke. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good, that's a fun, that's an interesting one. And good observation there, Koyla. Maybe that's the issue. That's why, maybe that goes back to the Elliot Wilson thing. Koyla saying, I find interviews boring no matter who they are. Maybe that goes back to the whole hip hop thing and why these hip hop artists are mostly deciding to go to like live streamers and sit down with them. Because who do you actually go to? Because even Zayn Lowe interviews, I, I, don't, I haven't watched a, a legit long-form Zayn Lowe interview in years. Maybe the last one I saw might have been the Kanye one. Do people actually watch those interviews anyway? When they go on like Zayn Lowe, or who else they go on? They'll go on like The Breakfast Club, Hot 97. Do you actually watch those interviews? Like, I don't. Even podcast appearances, when comedians go on there, they're normally like a hang. It's not like an interview. It's just a way to promote your special. Like Stavros has been on a podcast tear, right? You watch him on certain pods and you just watch them because you like the person. But you do, do do people actually watch interview shows anyway? Is that, is that actually a thing anymore? I don't know. Maybe there's, maybe there's a podcast that you like and they have a guest on that you don't really know too much about. Um, yeah, okay, Drink Champs. Yeah, Drink Champs. Yeah, th there we go. That's a good one, Young Old Vibes. Funny Marco, that that actually might be a good one. I'm not gonna lie, that might actually be an undercover good one. Imagine if Brendan went on on oh, what's the other one called? The one with um, the one with DC Young Fly. What's that show called? And there's like five guys on the couch. I can imagine that might be a good one. Brendan might go on that show. Funny Marco, that might actually be pretty decent. He might actually be good on there. The two AM show, yeah, exactly. The cute girl, yeah, yeah. Kate Barker's pretty good as well. She she she's really good as well. But again, that's more like a that's more like a fun, laid back, funny type of interview. Do you know what I mean? She's gonna be busting a couple of jokes, a couple of like random questions, culture stuff. It's not just gonna be about, oh, how long have you done stand up? What's the hardest thing you've had to overcome? It's mostly just like shooting the shit with somebody, do you know what I mean? But hey, what do I know? Do you think you can take it too far? I was asking guys this because I feel like amateur fighters or like somebody like myself, like someone that hasn't been in a bunch of fights, I feel like most men, we have this mindset of like, I'll just black out and I can beat everybody. But when you watch a pro fighter, they're pretty emotionally poised. You're dapping up between rounds, very strategic, very tactical. Yeah, that's has to be a level of respect. So do you think that's vital at the highest level or do you think sometimes, because I watch Strickland, I'm like, he don't really seem always that poised. He seems like a psycho. Like he's like, like just out there. But that's got him in trouble, right? Like when he got knocked out by Alex Piera, it was like emotional it wasn't using his brain, wasn't sticking the game plan, get starched. Yeah. So I think for Ian Gary, he people realize how this kid's special, man. He's a freak. Yeah. So I think he's gonna be able to use this and channel it and turn it into to magic, turn it into gold. Yeah. But if he I like Ian Gary, but he's not that special, to be fair. I think he's potential he's got potential there, but he hasn't really lived up to it. And so far it doesn't really have the power to starch people. Um, decent enough in striking, not really sure what his grappling is saying for the most part. Hasn't really faced high level, high level grappler, I don't think so far. I wouldn't say he's special, special. He's a good prospect, don't get me wrong. Definitely has the potential to be a big star champion, but I don't really think he's shown anything that would show me that he's special, special. Maybe I'm, again, maybe I'm a casual, but I think he's gassing up Ian Gary a little bit. Doesn't, it's a sad story. Absolutely. It's a sad story. But I think he's going to be able to channel this in a, in a good direction. Yeah. It's like Connor with the, you know, the uh, Jose Aldo stuff. He's talking so much trash. Yeah. And Jose came out real emotional and got starched. Just so I, I think uh, this is going to be like a defining moment in Gary's career. Absolutely. One way or the other. If he loses, it, it could get weird. Absolutely. If he wins, I just think he keeps getting bigger and bigger. Yeah.
Yeah. I wanted to go over uh, some of these nicknames. Big Brown, the Hybrid, the Sting, Bapa. What's your favorite? Where'd these come from? Bapa is probably my favorite. Uh, no, um, that one's just, you know, trolls and fans and eventually just took your life of <laughs> Is that how it started? Bapa? Bapa's not a troll thing. Isn't that what Bri Brian Callen calls him? No? Or am I mistaken? Papa's not a troll thing, is it? Isn't Papa like a Brian Callen thing? Brian needs to call him Papa, isn't it? Like, no? Even though Brent, B Brian is significantly older than Brendan, he defers to Brendan as Papa. No? Or am I mistaken? So, Thick, thick Boy came from uh, Mark Norman. He called me Thick Crust. Yeah. He's like, Thick Crust, what's up? Thick, whenever you call me, Thick, thick Crust, what's up? <laughs> thick Crust. And so that Thick Boy came from that. Big Brown came from actually Brian Callen. He just called me, he's like, you're big, you're brown. And then they took on, and I was fighting at the time, so in the UFC, but I was doing the podcast. Yeah. So the fans, like, demand I changed my name to Big Brown because Brian would call it on the show. Yeah. So then uh, the UFC actually was like, hey, do you want to change your nickname? So you'll see Bruce Buffer being like, Brendan, Big Brown, Shaw, which is insane. Yeah. That started from this small studio and changed my nickname. Yeah. Hybrid came from the producers of the Ultimate Fighter because I was a smaller heavyweight. But they said I moved like a, a lightweight. So like, oh, he's like a hybrid of a heavyweight, lightweight. Yeah. It came from them. That's insane. And remember when the nickname hybrid at the time is before all those gay producers came out. Yeah. So it was like, cool. Yeah. But then the hybrid thing. <laughs> yeah. Then the Toyota was like, oh, it's a Prius. I'm like, ah, oh, man. Yeah. So I changed my Lumped name. In. Yeah, I'm out, dude. Um, through my research, I was seeing on December 6, 2014, Rogan and Brian advised you to maybe start to take on comedy yep. retire what was that day like what what was that all like for you um <laughs> i mean it caught me a little off of <laughs> this interviewer bro look he's like a menace he's a fucking menace all like for you uh <laughs> <laughs> rogan told you to give up on your fighting dreams what was that like for you um I mean, it caught me a little off guard, but it's also like that's how close of friends they are, you know? Yeah. Um, and when we did it, it, just, it, I had no idea. We were just going to go do a podcast like we've done a million times. And then, yeah, then Rogan uh, did that. I, I think for, for some people, it was like, I can't believe Rogan did that. And even some people close to me were upset he did that. But in hindsight, like, worked out. Yeah. Like me and Rogan were talking about the other day. I'm like, dude, think if I just, like, came. I love how he, I love how whenever Rogan's name mentioned, again, this is a little thing that you only notice if you're a redact like me and you pay attention to this dummy talking all the time and you, you know, you form your entire content creation output based on what he says and stuff. But if you listen carefully to what Brendan says over the years, you notice whenever Rogan's name gets mentioned, he'll always mention in some way that he's spoken to Rogan recently. Always. Somebody mentioned Rogan in passing. They'll talk about how beast, much of a beast Rogan is with podcasting. And he makes all his money. And then he'll inevitably drop in a little, oh yeah, I spoke to him recently. We were just speaking the other day. I was on the phone to him the other day. Always does this. It's a really interesting thing to note. It's like, it's not enough to name drop Rogan. He was just to mention, we spoke the other day. We were on the phone for hours. I was talking to him. We were texting back and forth. It's like, come on, bro. We know you're friends. Relax, relax. No need to lie worked out yeah like me and Rogan were talking about the other day I'm like dude think if I just like became like a drug addict or something after that intervention yeah. and, like it wasn't what I became now like we're talking about a different story dude, man. I think I was I think about that would have never happened though really though to be fair do you know what I mean like um exactly Joseph we've all seen the podcast he was fighting Rogan and Canada the whole time exactly he's actually like he took it really well he didn't take it well at all he didn't like it the the podcast after when they did you know post that announcement he also didn't seem like he was in good spirit again i don't blame him for not being in good spirits right no one wants to hear somebody tell them to give up on their dreams um obviously it was the right advice at the time but it's not gonna hurt. it's not gonna sit well but it's the fact that he tried to pretend like he was okay with it which is really odd and also we've know we've learned from bgl that privately brendan still maybe resents rogan for that you know privately which which makes sense to be fair knowing how he is as a person it wouldn't surprise me if he does secretly resent rogan for what he said
about that with a lot of athletes in general, like, because the NFL, you got the not for long, but I feel like that's just the broad athletes in general that, that you know, get to that professional level. That's every level, though, brother. Like, insurance, all of, like, yeah, if you're all doing of a high level, yeah. it's stand-up, like, there, there's, some, there's some great comedians who are headliners, and now they're doing, you know, small clubs, or yeah. they can't do the road anymore, or, you know, the NFL. You're talking about yourself. It's not you. Pro, like at a high level, when you function at a high level, it's t- consistency is very tough. How can you keep it? What are you? What are your thoughts on like when you reflect on life of like just staying relevant and staying on a trajectory of up versus you've seen guys that maybe fought or did better or had better opportunity, but now they're maybe not. not I, I I think in any career like there's ups and downs, and you just gotta stay consistent. You gotta yeah. keep the same work ethic. No. Is Brendan the most successful unsuccessful fighter? In the UFC history. Again, success is obviously subjective, but is he maybe the most successful, unsuccessful fighter in the UFC so far? He didn't really do much in the UFC, but post UFC he's done quite a bit. And obviously most of it's doing Rogan, all that connection stuff, but what do you guys think? No matter what. Like I've had ups and downs, like Find the kid, you know, before everyone, their aunt had a podcast, we are one of the few doing it, the biggest in the world. Yeah. And then things happen, it goes down, then it goes back up, it goes down. Or- things happen. What happened exactly? Maybe your co host getting accused of rape. Maybe you, you know, having lots of drama with other fucking stand ups and shit and turning into the most hated guy in the world. Maybe that might have hurt the fucking podcast. But again, what do I know? Audio is king. Ticket sales are in cities. One time you're selling 3,000 tickets. Next time you're selling 1,000. <laughs> so- hey, look. It's Tiger. <laughs> Tiger in the back. Look at Tiger. Look, look at little Tiger. Little Boston, eh? Little Paris. Huh? Cincinnati. Look at him. Huh? It's like, yeah. It's just, you got to roll the punches, man. Just keep going. Absolutely. Um, I think about that that a lot just in general in regard to success you know just looking at other individuals trying to identify like what's the trade <laughs> <laughs> this guy's trolling you interview this guy in the fucking hotel lobby it's fucking hilarious man and the camera's right there like honestly like <laughs> so successful couldn't book a studio right businessman beast of a businessman but couldn't book a fucking studio to record this podcasting quickly no no studios in whatever city they're in there's no podcast studio whatsoever cool great yeah. Yeah, great. Great. Um, yeah, I think um, yeah, it's just part of the business. You, you know, there's no one that you, you can only ride so high. You, yeah. you don't want to go too high because like, you're gonna come down. I'm not gonna lie. One of my one of my major turnoffs and things that really grate me is when people decide to make what I would say public spaces, but like communal spaces, into their own little studio thing, and then they get annoyed when you walk through them. It's like, bro, we're in a fucking hotel. I want to get to the fucking bar and order mimosa. I don't care that you're recording content or you're doing a fucking podcast. Go fucking do it in your room or something. And then they give you dirty looks because you're walking past their camera. It's like, bro, we're in a shopping mall. Do you know what I mean? If you want privacy and you want your own recording space, go rent one. This is a somewhat public space. I'm going to walk through. I don't give a fuck. And you've got a camera in it. You've got a smartphone. Edit me out. It's no big deal. Re-record it again. It's not a big deal. You got limited memory. Fucking get get on with it. Only you see. I hate people who record stuff in public and then get annoyed when you walk through, or you're in their vicinity when you're in public. Also, everybody comes down. Yeah. So I think it's finding a balance and being smart and realizing that's going to happen. Like you can't, you just, you just can't ride that high for too long. Nobody yeah. does it. Nobody does it. So I just think uh, you know you just gotta adapt and you know do different things and do, but as long as you're consistent man. yeah absolutely reminds me of one of my, my favorite I wrestled for two years and uh, one year was in Arkansas and I was a dog with the head toss and then when I came up to western Pennsylvania I was absolute like it was completely different wrestling Arkansas I don't know what it was like I must have been like wrestling like Pennsylvania that those Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania bro I mean like you try to head toss somebody they step in front and hip toss you and you know, yeah, you know yeah. they roll through the head toss they're basically and, like the Dagestanis of America insane yeah. dude insane and uh, it just put things into perspective <laughs> uh, this guy's amazing I love how he's like in a way he's basically little signaling that he's a far more well-rounded fighter than Brendan jiu-jitsu wrestled in college like he's i don't know (laughs) 
I get the feeling like he's like <laughs> he's slowly like he's I don't know what he's doing, but he's doing something. He's very crafty, this guy. He's very crafty. He's very, very crafty. Of just, of just life, of like, there's just different areas of, of life and different places that you go. But it, it, for me, I think of, I think of, and I'll tie it into the UFC. Uh, I heard a stat that said, "What? I was talking to the UFC. Did you see, I was talking to the UFC. So he met Dana. He was talking to the UFC. He got invited to the slap thing live. He wrestled. He's quite good at jujitsu." Honestly, this guy is like, oh, listen, did you say I, I, I was talking to the UFC? For me, I think of, I think of, and I'll tie it into the UFC. Uh, I heard. Oh, I'll tie it in. Okay, so I'll tie it in. Okay. I thought said I was talking to the UFC. <laughs> a stat that said 90% of UFC champions have a wrestling background. Correct. Yeah. So how vital do you think that is? I mean, you, you gotta realize if you have a wrestling background, you can dictate where the fight goes. Yeah. Like you have no, like if you're just a, a striking specialist, yeah. if you're just a striking specialist, you have. <laughs> that kid is a fucking troll. That kid's a troll also. I fucking love it. Big up that kid, whoever you are. Bang your fucking chest. You're a G. That kid's a fucking troll. He does not give a fuck about them, about his own parents. He doesn't give a fuck. He's just running around that hotel lobby doing what he wants. But honestly, growing up and growing up as a toddler, growing up being a white kid must be so fun. Imagine being like a white toddler. How fun it must be. You don't get slapped. You don't get shouted at. You don't get reprimanded. You just your parents talk to you like you're a human. Like, oh, don't do that. Hey, come here. Hey, relax. Stop. Stop doing that. They talk to you like an adult, like 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 a colleague at work or something. You grew up a kid, you know, of my complexion. You don't get spoken like an adult. You get spoken like a fucking dog. You get, come here, shouted at. You get fucking shoes thrown at you. You get slapped with sticks and shit, wires, cables, coat hangers. You get told to fucking be in that motorcycle position and hold that. <laughs> Honestly, growing up being a white kid must be so fun. Must be so fucking fun. You try, you try and run around a shopping center, a shopping mall with your with your parents, and they're black. Oof. You you only have one way to win. Yeah, wrestlers they can they can dictate where the fight's going to take place. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, if I was a coach or if my son wanted to get involved in fighting, wrestling would be the first thing I put him in. Absolutely. It's also the toughest. I think it's the toughest it's aspect. Not. Of mixed martial arts to learn yeah. to actually come up with a wrestling background it's tough man. yeah to roll for a live hour is way different than wrestling different for a live hour. it's way different yeah re re wrestling's mentally and physically the toughest thing to do way different there's a really good wrestling program that uh i'll go out once a month and just roll around with some of the guys but it's izzy style wrestling i don't know i know izzy yeah, i used to work say. with him is it um another another little signal i love this guy man little the little fucking name drop he's doing Am I am I incorrect for thinking that that's also another common held thought that isn't true? This idea that wrestling is that much harder than any other form of martial arts to learn. All martial arts are hard to learn. It's just whether or not you're willing to stick it out. Maybe wrestling is takes longer time to kind of get right, but striking is the same thing, right? If you haven't got a good base of striking and you want to learn it in your mid-20s, it's going to take longer to have it done, no? It just takes too long. And maybe the time it takes maybe isn't worth the investment, maybe. Because by the time you're finished, are you even good enough to compete at a certain level? Maybe that's the case. But I don't think it's any harder than the other. What do you guys think in the chat who are more clued up in fighting? Surely any form of martial arts to learn in your adult age is difficult, regardless. Because it's just hard to learn coordination have the you know the cardio necessary get over the mental blocks whatever it may be right um but it just takes long to do it and uh, maybe wrestling takes longer than you know ju longer than fucking taekwondo longer than fucking uh whatever else but i wouldn't say it's any harder yeah any sport is tough b <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <sighs> 
Yeah, I was going to yeah, say. He's so, at Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like 15 minutes from my office. Yeah, I wrestled with uh, Izzy. I was with Izzy when I would go to Jackson's, and he would come to Denver. Yeah. You tell Izzy I said, what's up? I love that guy. Yeah, I will for sure. Yeah, he's the man. Brilliant. Dude, I thought, Mastermind. Like, he doesn't get enough credit. Bro. He flies under the radar, but yeah. look who he's worked with. He's, he's John John's Jones. Jones. But yeah. he's been his guy from the jump. Dude. So that's how I met him. I, I got my first like match in with him like a like a month ago and I'm like I'm looking at him I got the young ego I'm like I've been rolling for three or four years at 10th plan and I'm like oh, no, Izzy's I'm sufficient not. at like leg locks uh -huh. bro smashed me bro. Izzy's a freak he man yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sitting there like getting beat up by this you know he's probably like mid 30s maybe early 40s and I'm sitting there like about to throw up and I'm like this yeah, he's a guy who's always like behind the scenes. Yeah, and, and God bless him. We need more people like that. Like, he doesn't want the shine humble. or any of that stuff. Yeah, he's, he's the man. Dude, a really humble dude because he just lets me come in. You know what I mean? And he's got like D one, like top of the top tier dudes. He's like, yeah, just slide by. Yeah, he's the man. Doesn't charge me. No, he's the man. Come on in, bro. He's the man. Every time I come in, he's just giving me a bunch of gear. Yeah, I just walk around with AZ style, and it's kind of dangerous because like somebody will walk up with cauliflower ear. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? They start to. I'm like, nah, dog. I'm not like. Yeah, I'm I wonder, not like that. Uh, because Bilal Muhammad's out of Chicago. I wonder yeah. does he work with Izzy. It'd be smart if he did. I, I don't know if he does. I ran into him at Bellator. Um, Bilal's a <laughs> I ran into him at Bellator. Dana invited me to the slap fight. Honestly, this guy's little subtle humble brags are really good. I love this. Great guy. You know Bilal? I, d I just ran into him, Great. dapped him up, and I was like, oh, hey, brother, I'd best. love to do some work one with you. One of the best. Yeah. Yeah. Really, it's a really nice dude, man. Like the best. some guys will just walk past. But no, like, yeah, he was best. nice. Yeah, yeah he was real nice. And uh, he was uh, with. There's a big brand popping up around here, and they're working with all fighters. Young LA. Are they based out of here? It's Chicago? Young LA, but based oh, out of Chicago. Is it based out of Chicago? Oh, no, they're based out of LA. They're based out of LA. Yeah, that sounds so stupid. I'm yeah, I would, say that. I would hope they're. Yeah, yeah. one of the corners lives here. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Tiger Thick Whiskey. How's that? It's great. It's great. Once well, you found out that. <laughs> Here we go. This is what I want to hear. This is what I want to hear. What's the deal with Tiger Fick Whiskey? Because we haven't heard about Tiger Fick Whiskey in a long fucking time. So let's hear. Oh, big up my guy, Rebel Henry Poet. What are you saying here? Wrestling cardio is a bitch, though. It makes it takes so much energy to do it, but all of them are hard to really get good at. Okay, cool. That makes sense. Then. That makes sense. Yeah, I would, I, I would imagine wrestling for an hour is way harder than striking for an hour, right? Because you're using way much of your, you're using a lot more energy to wrestle. Way more muscles are being worked wrestling with another man for one hour than striking in it. I get it. I understand. Definitely, definitely, definitely understand. Definitely, definitely, definitely get it. Definitely, definitely get it. So big up, um, big up Robert Henry Poe for the insight there. Um, but yeah, I want to hear what's going on with Tiger Fick because last time Brendan said that, what was that guy called again? Brendan said Aaron Rodgers was going to invest in Tiger Fick, right? He said Aaron Rodgers is going to invest in Tiger Fick and it never happened. Um, we haven't heard anything about that so far. So I want to hear what is actually going on with Tiger Fick. Let's actually go back a little bit. Let's hear this. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Tiger Thick Whiskey. How's that? It's great. It's great. When you found out that? that? I did that. We probably started working on it about five years ago. By the time it came to market, just dealing with like liquor licenses and that's gonna be insane. Oh, oh, dude, it was like if you watch the show Yellowstone, it's like that. How it's yeah. all territorial. It's like, yeah, it's, 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 it's liquor's old school, man. So it was a beast. It was a beast. But I like I, I like how he uses this as as, as, a, as like a brag thing when really all it took was just a bit of research to find out that. Yes, liquor is a beast of a business to get involved in. That's why you, you partner up with other people who maybe can do the back end for you and you can maybe just brand it a certain way. But he went to do it his, all his own way. And if I'm not mistaken, one of the funny bits of the lore about Tiger Fig is that he thought he could sell his bottles of whiskey on Shopify, just put up just put up on his on his store, on tfk.com, and sell them like that. And then he also thought he could force comedy clubs to sell Tiger Fig every time he performed there. When obviously that's not the case also because every state has different liquor law licenses whatever it may be called um, but a regular person would have thought about it anyway or just would have researched it did a bit of googling and find this out anyway but he did it regardless burnt balls in and then realized he couldn't do all the things he wanted to do with the liquor then you know the, the product isn't good either so he probably i probably would assume there's probably a there's probably a cargo container somewhere on a dockyard somewhere in the states that has pallet after pallet of unsold tiger thick whiskey batch one or something i'm pretty sure there's a there's a storage unit somewhere that just has you know floor to ceiling amount of fucking tiger thick 
I bet you. And it's pretty big because I've seen Tiger Thick Whiskey. I'm not a drinker, but I've yeah. seen Tiger Thick Whiskey. Yeah, it's I've all about it distribution around. and getting it out there and then not, not putting yourself out there too much and not being able to supply the demand. So yeah. we had some big news when it comes to Tiger Thick soon. Yeah. Let's go. I'll let you That's know. awesome. Yeah. The TRX I'm obsessed with. I have a Black Widow. I, was, I, was, I went in to get my truck two years ago. And Black Widow's right there. It's 10,000, 15,000 less MSRP than the TRX beside it. I basically stay at my office like 24 seven. There's not, like I'm not garaging the vehicle. The dude says, if you're not garaging this, it's the number one most stolen engine in Chicago. Correct. Big up, um, big up high stakes games. What's good? I've been 20 minutes behind, but let me say this. You can say dicey things without being trolled or canceled. Only if you're likable slash doesn't come from a place of hate. That's the thing people tend to overlook. Exactly, exactly, exactamento. And for some reason, Brendan doesn't seem to get that. Andrew Taint says, had a coworker once take me, take me in the eyes and tell me that Brandon, sorry, that Andrew Tate is his role model and he looks up to everything he does. Hilarious. <laughs> Koyla, I never wrestled too scared of getting bricked up on accident. Have you actually seen that clip of that kid? There's a kid wrestling a girl and he's kind of, you know, wrestling within himself, like being a bit tame, rolling with this girl, jujitsu, sorry, with no gi. But then I think the caption says that he had a boner and he was trying to hold it in. <laughs> well, it, all, no, you're, if you have a Hellcat engine, especially in a TRX, it's 300% more likely to get stolen over any other car. Yes, yeah, so I was like, and they, they had the head of Mopar, they're asking about, it, they're like, what's your suggestion? He's like, don't park it outside. I'm like, hey man, that doesn't work for me, dude. <laughs> I was like, you, I don't, you know, know why it is? It's the key fob. Yeah. Mopar Dodge went cheap on the key fob. I heard they do like, like if some you if you if you can replace thing. like a BMW or Porsche key or Mercedes, they're expensive. Yeah. That Mopar is like forty bucks replaced. <laughs> so it's a cheap technology. Yeah. So these you know these thieves have a, the ability to just download your data that goes back and forth. Yeah. The communication. So yeah. Dude, so but the T Rex, dude, I love watching what you yours is completely like modded out. Yeah. We turned into the, the, one of the first, I think there's some other guy who did it, but we're, we're right up there when the first to convert it to the Demon TRX. Insane. So the Demon one. Oh, come on, bro. Even I'm going to press X of doubt on that one. You're the first person to convert your truck into, come on. Aren't TRX is super popular in the States. Aren't they one of the most popular trucks out there? You're telling me he's the only person that's got it converted the way he's got it converted. Come on. Come on. Isn't there a whole community of senior people that are into pickup trucks who have been into it way longer than he has? And he's the only one to do it. Okay. 170 is the Challenger that Mopar did. So this is the truck version. So of how it. many, how much horsepower do the wheels? We'll be by next, by the end of January, we will be around 1300. Now are you just tracking it or are you like to daily it? No, I daily it. That's, That's my sweet. daily driver. That's it's so, so violent. It's so loud. Dude, that is so sweet. I put uh, Chris Lee and Eric Griffin and Callan the other day and took him to, to lunch. Yeah. And I floored it and they were just like, this isn't for me. They were, they were such bitches about it. Yeah. Like, this is not for me. I'm like, I don't know if it's for anybody. Dude, it's, this, it's the best. Hey, this is such I'm a obsessed kid, with it. This is such a kid question because I just, this my like immaturity. Do you, is there a train horn? In it, would you ever do something like that? No, I'm, it, dude, I'm, it, it's so loud. It you doesn't can't do it, anything it, else. It, it, the exhaust is so uh, illegal. It's so loud. That's insane. Um, I'm surprised yeah. Cali don't crack down on you. Like your emissions is like going crazy or something. I think where I'm at, and I'm also smart around like cops, and also my yeah. father-in-law was a cop for 30 years. Oh, so yeah. you got that secret badge yeah. that you. Yeah. <laughs> Thin blue line, Brendan Schaub. Figure it out. I got pulled over with, I get my pulled over with my buddy. He's got a 720S. I swear to God, I look at him I'm like, every time we get pulled over, he's like, ah, oh, my dad was a cop. Like, oh, your dad was a cop. You know yeah, they're cool. Also, you get to realize cops are, they're dudes, man. They oh, love they're, cars and shit. I've so never had an there's issue. There's also bigger problems. Oh, look, a room full of white guys saying, they're no, is this guy white or is he mixed raced? Let me say white. A room full of white guys saying they've never been pulled over. Surprised. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 you're, it's, not, and it's not like it's some young kid racing around the city yeah. at 100 miles an hour on this TRX. Like, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm smart about it. They know this and they're, they're, they like, they, they love it. Even, even when I have been racing around and being stupid, I've never had an issue because my parents, growing up in the South, it was always yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. And so I feel like if you're just respectful, I've never ran into I, I agree there's like, oh, fuck off. 
if you're disrespectful and you just say, <laughs> I love this rhetoric. I love this rhetoric. If you just give, if you just give police officers respect, they're gonna respect you back, mate. Have you not met security guards who are like, who think they're fucking Rambo? There's security guards in shopping centers who think they're Rambo just because of the sake of the badge that they wear or because they've got a fucking stab proof vest on. Police are probably worse than that. This guy is fucking hilarious. Just be respectful and you everything will be fine. Okay, cool, man. Cool. Nutty people out there, bad apples out there. But I feel like just genuine general advice being mixed. People are like, oh, this is happening, that's happening. Be mixed. <laughs> What's happening? Say the details. Don't say this is that. Say the details. Police brutality, brother. Disproportionately as well. Genuine general advice being mixed. People are like, oh, this is happening, that's happening. But it's I'm the energy you're from... putting out, man. Yeah, man. Like, I'm always 100%. like, after the... <laughs> it's the energy you're putting out. <laughs> if you think good thoughts, police won't choke slam you on the ground, right? Won't have their knee in your fucking neck. Just think good thoughts, right? Think it's, it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> oh I love what it can I do? you know yeah. it's like and that's how it should be yeah you know so i think also again they're even though they're cops it's their job like they're yeah. dudes so like i got pulled over one time in one of my cars and he's like this thing is sick man yeah he's like dude you're going five over and i was like oh five over and he's like i, I want to see the engine man you pop the head i'm like yeah, yeah. hell yeah I can. that's sick and he was like you know they're cool yeah especially when they're car guys like it's dope. oh it's awesome yeah i had a straight pipe deaf type uh like two years sick. ago and they're already like really loud i got yeah. pulled over and it was matte purple and uh cop pulls me like, what do you do for like, just insurance i was i think i was going like 40 over or something like i had to call over or something but he was really cool he was really cool and i was just respectful i ate the ticket i was it's like 300 400 bucks yeah the, the more i get into uh cars like now i have this you know the great one to town yeah so i got the the generation 2 2004 lightning Car, and the getting more into cars like that's a i think if i was younger i'd struggle a lot more with it but it's like a patience thing because yeah car stuff takes a it, it takes a while it's not like like what i do i'm like i'm impatient and i want instant yeah. gratification and it has to get done yeah the car business doesn't work like that so it's like we have an issue with the car and the, my my guy eddie at addiction who deals with it he's like all right well we need this part it comes in wednesday and I, i'll get around to it on thursday i'm just like yeah, could, could, could you do it wednesday though know, when yeah. it comes in he's like no man we got others so it's like or there, you think that, you know, we map out the content for the show, things happen. Yeah. Like right now we have a fuel pump issue we can't figure out. And we have this these parts coming this week. So the plan was to shoot all this stuff at the track. And now that gets delayed. So it's like yeah. figuring that out. It's a, it's a new fun challenge. I love it, man. Absolutely love it. Love whips. That's, that's the biggest thing that's helped grow our insurance companies. People want a sweet life. So I just like advocate to guys like, hey, listen, pay your taxes, save money for a rainy day. But go get a sick whip because then people are going to want to come sell insurance with you. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. yeah, I, so that's yeah smart the way Am I the only person that, again, I don't know much about cars outside of, you know, some automobile design stuff I used to do in college and shit. But that's nothing crazy. But know nothing about fixing them or anything. But isn't that a little bit weird the way they talk about cars when really and truly they do nothing in terms of getting under the hood? Taking a car to a garage and telling them to do this mod, do that mod, and just give them your card, right? Chip and pin machine it or swipe it. Is that really equivalent of being a car guy? Or is that just like being into buying fancy things? It's not really the same thing, is it? There's guys online who will do engine swaps themselves, right? That will order different bits and pieces from a car and get it shipped over from Japan and get it done themselves, right? Like it's, it's their weekend projects they do. It's their little dad thing that they do on the weekend. Isn't that completely different than what Brendan's doing? going to the best garages in the world and getting them to do anything. You know what I mean? Like, no? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Or am I over or am I overreacting here? I look at cars and my dad said this, like I remember the first like major purchase I made uh, when I was doing comedy and podcasts. It was like the first real money I was making. And I wanted, I've always wanted a Porsche 911. So I bought a, yeah. just your basic Carrera. Yeah. And I remember I called my dad. I was like, I don't know, dad, like it's this much. And he's like, you've earned it, man. Yeah. He's like, you, 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 you work so damn hard. He's yeah. like, you're going to drive that every day. And when you get in there, it's going to remind you how far you've made it yeah. and how far you want to go. Yeah. He's like, you're right. <laughs> using uh, material possessions as a way to motivate you. It's really interesting, isn't it? To be honest. 
it's not just the inner it's not just the inner motivation the inner drive the need to be successful wanting to leave a lasting legacy wanting to create really meaningful entertainment and product for fans that can be live on past soon after you you know long after you passed leaving a real dent in the industry leaving a legacy leaving a mark no none of that stuff the real motivation is buying something fancy so that you know oh shit look i bought this fancy thing that means i'm a success okay so whenever i get a car it's it, it like it bumps things up to the next level yeah i'm never content it's always like it reminds you of like all right man let's get to work yeah i think i think that's rogan's rogan's thing isn't it rogan's um thing i think he says that he buys he when he first got started he'd buy things that he couldn't he could just barely afford so that it'd keep him driven to keep working so that he could afford it and afford more which is probably not the best financial advice is it and it only really works for a certain segment of the population you know like <laughs> i don't know maybe you shouldn't take your whole paycheck and buy something crazy maybe you should be quite financially responsible and build up to buy something crazy there's nothing wrong with that right building up to buy something crazy no one says that if you want to buy a fucking a bucati fucking veyron go ahead and do it just get up to the point where you can buy it you wouldn't just go and lease it and then kill yourself to try to keep up the payments just so you can just so you can keep yourself driven and motivated it's a bit of a dumb way to look at things huh or maybe i'm mistaken oops dude so what's kind of like the dream whip for you so do you, what do you have right now you got the trx you got the what's the great the lightning called? the lightning what else you got i have a uh, porsche gt2 rs with the white shock <laughs> package yep uh the goal for 2024 would be a dodge demon 170 yeah that's the next goal a generation one lightning tricking that thing that'd be fun uh, there, there's so much i want to do man yeah so much and I saw you post on your IG the uh, supercar or something that Drake ordered the two point two million dollars or something. Yeah, I, but I don't know if that thing's real. I yeah. Don't, I don't, do, There's you, a, do you know if that thing's real, Jay? It's real. They haven't like actually made them yet. So but he's like the first one to get there's it. There's a guy by like two, what three? What do you say? Three thousand horsepower? Or something something like that? stupid, dude. But there's a guy that's like fifteen minutes from my office, and his car. He has a car collection. Like a who's the guy? Like Jay Leno. Yeah. And uh, he's not as old as him, but it's called the Hamilton Collection. He's like forties, fifties. Adriano, that's fucking hilarious. It works when you're getting Hollywood welfare and signed to a guaranteed development contract. Hollywood welfare. I never heard of that phrase. That's fucking brilliant. Hollywood welfare. I love that. He's got Konus eggs, Bugattis. And he was going over some of his car payments, like 40000 a month. And I'm like, for a car payment? No, so, yeah, oh some God. of that car stuff, yeah, it's, it's nuts. Insane, it, dude. Nuts. Insane. It's an expensive hobby. But a piece of me, I got an old soul where I just like the... Fast and Furious took it way too far with creating 100 movies, but some of those original movies, Fast and Furious yep. movies, where you got the old Challenger, old Charger. I li like That's also Joe, what made the Lightning big. I like Paul Walker like driving that, that yes. red Lightning, yeah. Yes, I like stuff like that. I know Rogan's got some old whips. I like yep. Rogan's some dope cars. What sucks is I just can't, like, I'm, I would need to take, like, a manual driving class. Can you drive a... You I can drive some, manual. Not like he, he's manual. really good at it. I was like, going to say, I you guys can definitely drive yeah. manual. Yeah, Me, Those I'm kids ripping can. someone's clutch. I'm clutching, ripping someone's clutch. Apart, yeah, yeah, you have sure. to learn on, like, a Civic or something before yeah. you jump in something. Oof. Those shoes... Are those McQueen's? Why do they look like that on him? Because he just got really wide feet. His McQueen's look a little bit, look a bit weighed out, isn't it? Or are they just really beat up? Or are they even McQueen's? Maybe there's maybe something else. But they look really, with Nike socks as well. Tough, tough look, bro. A, a dark blue suit with white socks and white trainers is a dark, some dark shit. I just clocked it now. I was like, what the fuck is that? They look kind of... They look kind of Kunta Kente, innit? They look kind of give me free. <laughs> you know, like a 911. But, uh, yeah, the, the car business is, is great, man. I love cars. Absolutely love it. It's stupid. And, and uh, I feel like it's, it's great to experience it, but also with the market right now, I think also 
you know, some of these guys, we, we got, we recruited a guy in our business selling Kias. He said he's put people in car payments at like 800, 900 a month with Kias due to the interest rates right now. People aren't getting into cars for like less than like 10%. Yeah, it's tough. Mortgage rates are like 8%. The Fed is floating at five, five and a half percent. Yeah, it's not so, good. Yeah, it's not good. And then next year's election year. So I'm sitting here thinking, because I, I want to buy more stuff. And I'm like, I'm not buying a property in Illinois because I, I don't like, you know, all the, all the stuff in Illinois. But yep. Just, I'm like, dude, election year, what's gonna happen? I know, you know? I'm I like, know, it's scary, man. And that's a big <laughs> Brendan's bored. Brendan's bored. <laughs> Brendan's bored already. Thing on why, like, I try to tell guys to train because, like, there's not been a war on American soil in 100 plus something years, 150 plus years. But I feel, I always think to myself, like, could someone march into your house and, like, just have their way with you? You know what I mean? Like, I'm just taking everything, like, I don't know, like, oh, one of the UFC fighters, somebody mar uh, broke into his house. Was it Anthony, Anthony Smith? Yeah, yeah. He, he's a Nebraska boy. Yeah, Nebraska yeah. dude. I'm thinking like, dude, we gotta, you gotta be trained up, ready to go, just in you case. You be trained up, yeah. As far as war goes, yeah, I don't know if we'll ever be like invaded here. I mean, with what they're doing with the border, who knows? With all the terrorist things yeah. that goes on. Well, I think we're the. As far as war, I think the like a civil war would be closer. Than civil war is yeah. what I think is as well, which probably. Not <laughs> How are you gonna fight the civil war? Oh, anyway, I'm not gonna. Not be a good civil war for the, for the left. That'd be yeah, for the people yeah. that are like, enjoy get rid that. of guns and let's just have forks. Yeah, enjoy <laughs> that. Yeah. yeah. The whole military is on the right, <laughs> and the cops. So yeah, <laughs> it would right. not be a good war. Yeah. And I think if you look at the stats, I think we're like the most armed, like per capita. Oh, yeah. Like country in the, in oh, yeah. the world. Everyone it's, has it's, guns. Like it's like insane. Yeah, like it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like more guns. It's like a, it's like 125% going. It's going to get ugly. Yeah, it's going to be like the purge. It'd be so stupid. Um, Hopefully that doesn't happen. Though. Absolutely, yeah. Election year, Dana White, USADA. This is one of the things I want to wrap up with. Is USADA is it just completely like gone now? The, the, the UFC hasn't done a very good job of like telling the fan base like what exactly is going to happen. Part of me, as a as a as a fan and as a former fighter, two different opinions. As a fan, I'm like, let them choose. Yeah. It's like the baseball, you know, when Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa hitting those home runs, yeah. Barry Bonds, that was the best time ever in MLB. Yeah. In the UFC, when you look back, the best time ever, like those pride days and you know, yeah. no testing. As a fighter, and I fought people that tested positive and I was yeah. on stuff, it sucks, man. Yeah. So it, it, it's a dicey road. As a, as a fan, I'm like, yeah, let them go. But as a fighter and it's someone who cares about the sport, it, it's not good. Yeah. And I've, I've watched, I know Rogan just had Derek uh, more play. Okay, I'm done. Um, big up this kid, Adversity Kings. Um, amazing. Really did enjoy that. I thought this was an absolute troll sesh, to be fair. But I'm absolutely done listening to this interview. I know we only a little bit left at the end, but it's enough. Enough's enough. But yeah, he feels like a troll. It feels like a troll. If not a troll, he's um, brilliant, to be fair. Well, let's see what the comments are saying here. Um, Brendan Shaw really changed the meaning of stand-up special. <coughs> 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 Fucking Fucking hell. Waiting for the next episode of Toontown. Brendan is not a high level comic. Uh, Brendan's comedy is to comedy like Dave, Ch Dave, Dave, sorry, Dave Chappelle. DJ Khaled is to music. The lady walking in the back is a better comedic timing than Shorb. Shorb opens up with a lie. You have fans that love you, that, lo that love me. You have fans that hate you. Shorb has no fans. Maybe Brendan would get, wouldn't get hate if he was funny, interesting, and not a piece of shit human being. <laughs> I thought his favorite nickname was Fat Patrick. LOL. Um, oh, loved his loved your first question about Bobby Lee. Notice that Brendan wouldn't actually admit any of the BS he caused. Perfect time for him to be real, maybe even show some humility or accountable. But instead, he just says nothing and wants us to believe that Bobby likes and talks to him. Come on, man. The Fear question as well was great. Fear ran away like the Flash and is living on top of the world right now. I'm sure it's not beef, but no way are they best friends or brothers. Love Our Bapper only gives you time to podcasts that have such tiny views. No hate on this podcast. Great catch, you guys, but what's the point when his own platform is bigger? Where is Tank? Justice for Tank. 35. <laughs> I love this troll. <laughs> um, Jay Schwab is more has more personality and he didn't even say a word. This dude just goes B. But yeah, really good interview, really good reaction. Love all the comments. Impressive collection of lies from old brain. Them. But yeah, let's move on for that one. Let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, what else we got on the list to talk about here? Brendan Bray, Scott Coker. 
Um, what else we got here? Oh, let's walk. Yeah, let's. Um, Adam walking out on a podcast. Let's walk. Let's talk about that one. Adam walked out on a podcast, right? Let's see why he walked out on it. I think it's called the Whatever Podcast. Adam twenty two. Let's go over that one quickly. Um, where is it here? So my tabs. Of course, if you're listening to the show and you're enjoying what you're seeing, you like what you see, make sure you're liking the content as well. That'd be much appreciated. Let's see what Brendan. Bre- I mean, sorry, Adam twenty two walking out on this show called Whatever Podcast. Am I the only person that doesn't understand why these things are successful and why people like watching this sort of stuff? Like, you get a bunch of girls on the platform, on the pod, who are what you would term to be bimbos, maybe chicken heads, maybe airheads, but it's not their fault, you know? Not everybody's blessed with intellect. And then you get some guys in who are a bit more competent than them and you essentially embarrass them on these shows. You pick apart how dumb they are, how illiterate they are, uneducated or whatever it may be i don't really see why that's a win or that's something to like be proud of that you're dunking on girls who aren't you know smart anyway it's odd anyway makes some good clips online but you know whatever let's see let's see what happened here welcome to the whatever dating talk podcast where we try to make sense of the modern dating hellscape thanks for tuning in tonight You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. I appreciate that. We're coming to you live from Santa Barbara, California, every Sunday and Tuesday at 5 5 p.m. Pacific. I am your host, Brian Atlas. I'm joined by my co-host, Kiki. She's kind of back there somewhere. She's a bit shy. A few quick announcements before the show begins. This podcast is viewer-supported heavy YouTube demonetization. Just pulled up Streamlabs there. So please consider donating through Streamlabs instead of... Why isn't... Can you actually say that dating is a hellscape? I don't think dating is a hellscape. Probably not, right? Maybe dating in their scene is a hellscape. That kind of like LA, Hollywood, Miami adjacent, clout world. Maybe it is a hellscape in that scene. Cool. But generally, is dating a hellscape? It's probably easier than ever to hook up with somebody. To find somebody, right? That's you're interested in, that you want to spend your life with. Like, it's more, it's more easier than ever more opportunities more access it's probably the best it's ever been i would say it's a hellscape the soup chatting as youtube takes a brutal 30 percent cut so some quick maps for y'all raw there they beg they beg for donations right on this right at the start of these pods i guess you have to pay all these guests in it probably that's why but that's kind of wild isn't it they start off the pod straight away saying hey give me money <laughs> If you want me, if you want to see me rip into these young girls, give me money. You want to see make you want to see me make these young girls look like fools. Give me money. If you super chat a hundred, YouTube takes thirty. If you donate a hundred, Streamlabs only takes three. Streamlabs.com slash whatever link is in the description. We have a big panel tonight, uh, so for the sake of a smooth stream, we have boosted the read and TTS triggers. Donations and super chats ten dollars and up will be displayed in stream overlay. Donations and Super Chats, $100 and up, will be read slash answered if you want. In- Jesus Christ, bro. The grift is strong, isn't it? $10, $10 TTS. $100 to read it out. Wow. They must be making a killing, isn't it? <laughs> Interact nearly instantly with us and weigh in on the conversation. Consider sending a TTS text-to-speech message. It- Excuse me. Text to speech speech message tongue tied tonight, guys. Two hundred dollars and up triggers TTS. TTS is via Streamlabs only. Please see the description for all triggers and full details. We have channel memberships. You can't so, you can't even do TTS via fucking YouTube chats. Wow, bro, they're really pushing the fucking donations and tips in it. Fucking hell, bro. Heavy, heavy handed with the bag. Five dollars a month. You can also gift memberships. We're live on Twitch right now. Pull up another tab, guys. Go to twitch.tv slash whatever. Drop us a follow on the Prime sub if you have one. We got merch shop at whatever.com. Stuff you can wear to not More be naked. Grift. Don't be a criminal. Get some merch. Follow us on Instagram at whatever. Any girls who want to be on the show, DM at whatever on IG if you can make it to Santa Barbara. Follow me on Instagram, BD underscore Atlas. Check out my nonprofit, Big Labia Matter, or BLM for short. Big Labia Matter dot org is in the works we're, we're working on it so uh yeah what's that i support that. oh you're support we we're actually uh marquette here we're, we're gonna get him on the uh the board of directors here soon so <laughs> if you can't catch the full shows we have a clips channel link is in the description go subscribe without further ado 
We're gonna have the guests introduce themselves, so please tell us your name, age, occupation. By the way, this guy hates Adam 22. I know this guy. This, this is Satan and Sinner. He hates Adam 22. Location and location. Where are you from? I don't, I don't know why, though. Hello, I'm not everyone. Sure why. My name is Corey Yi. I'm 31 years old, and I'm a model influencer, and I own an OnlyFans agency. And Did I'm you nervous. say Lee? <laughs> OnlyFans agency. You said Corey. Corey Yi. Yi. Okay, I'm Adam Twenty Two. Oh, just just oh, one sorry, question sorry. here, Corey. Uh, did you sorry? Did you say age? Thirty one. Thirty one. Got it. And you own an OnlyFans agency. Yes. So and you, I have an OnlyFans. You as well. you represent a couple women, couple yes dudes. Women. Maybe? We're just women. Okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> no, not dudes. Women. <laughs> right. Sorry, Adam. Um, no, for sure. Uh, Adam <laughs> I'm 22. I'm 40 years old. I am a podcaster and adult star, I suppose. My wife and I do a podcast called uh, Plug Talk, available at onlyplugtalk.com, where we basically interview a woman every week and then sleep with her on camera. And uh, yeah, happy to be here. <laughs> Welcome back. What about you? Hello, I'm Karina Pedro. I'm from Eastern Europe, so English is my second language. So I'm sorry if it's I okay. say something wrong. <laughs> Tidy. Fucking tidy. Tidy. Give me some of your Google Ash. Huh? Tidy, mate. Oh, fucking And I am an <laughs> adult content creator, also content creator. Oh. I do box. I'm a boxer. I wanna fight. Now she's a in my country and also I uh, sell in the cars and work with cars in here. Age? What? She does porn and sells cars. Yo, America's a land of the free, in it? What kind of fucking slash is that? She does she's a she's a porn actress and sells cars. Does she what? <laughs> she's the cars, what? To box. I'm a boxer. I wanna fight. Damn. So she boxes. Vox, is that, what's a Voxer? Is Voxer... In my country, and also I uh, sell in the cars and work with cars. You here. sell, she sells cars, does porn and boxes. <laughs> I love America, man. Land of the free. Age? 23. 23? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, I'm Maddie Rouvet. Sure. I'm 21. Just like Grimes and a bit, I'm a it? professional underwater photographer and I do OnlyFans. All right. A professional underwater photographer and does OnlyFans. So what I'm guessing here with a lot of these girls, which makes sense, if you're good looking, but you have a passion project or something you really want to do, but you can't make money doing it, you use your OnlyFans to fund that. So she might actually be into underwater photography but it doesn't probably pay well. So you then do OnlyFans to get money to buy cameras and shit and buy GoPros and buy fucking snorkeling gear, gear or trips to wherever you want to go. That's probably what people are doing nowadays, right? But it must be an interesting place to be in because I bet you there's some girls out there who have real passion, things that they want to do, but then the OnlyFans kicks off. Then what do you do? You know what I mean? OnlyFans is making way more money than let's say, I don't know, than being a surfer so you just lean in more to the fucking only fans but then you get discredit in the service community because you're not really surfing must be a weird thing to place place to be all right welcome hi i'm anisa godina i'm 28 i am a cocktail server and i do only fans we do social media you see how girls lie about their age a lot because allegedly this girl's 23 and she's 28 And she's what, 21? Like, come on, bro. Come on. Welcome. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Tyus. Um, I'm 27, about to be 28 soon, birthday soon. Um, I do bottle service in Vegas and do social media, not only fans, just social media. Yeah. Okay, That's cool. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paul. LOL are being, how can you be judgmental if you do bottle service but you don't do OnlyFans? Honestly, some th that logic is so bizarre, isn't it? I do bottle service but I don't do OnlyFans. Why would you, isn't that, that anyway, whatever. There should be some sort of, 
understanding of both scenes because you're kind of both in the same and i don't know whatever again no, Paulina is... Warren, I'm 18 from San Diego. I do OnlyFans and adult content creation. I'm also a gymnastics coach, and yeah. All right, welcome. What about you? Hi. That's a, that's actually a pivot I can believe, right? Gymnastics, girls that did gymnastics in high school also get into OnlyFans. Hi, my name is Olivia. I'm a researcher and project manager with a platform that promotes dietary intervention in place of conventional medicine. I manage several different social media accounts. I also post my own content and I'm a ballet dancer and I'm 20. 20? Yeah. How long have you been doing ballet? Uh, professionally for only five years, but recreationally since I was three. Are you going to bust out any pirouettes or plies Possibly, tonight? Or? Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll be on the lookout for that. What about you? Hi, my name is Isabella Riley Moody. I am a wife, a mother, a Christian, and I make right wing political content. Age? You knew it. You knew it from those fucking, whatever that haircut is, right wing women love that. What's that haircut? Right wing ladies love that fucking, that twirl at the front. Whatever that fucking twirl is at the front, they fucking love that shit. 25, sorry. 25. All good. Welcome, welcome. It's the big homie, the one and only. Fax Kellerman, Stephen A. Pimp, Adam's. Malcolm Flex, Look at Adam Flex face. Luther, Kent Drippy Jr., the Crown Prince of Iran, the idol of James Bond, Marquette Devon Burton, the saint and the sinner on YouTube. <laughs> that was one of the most... Um, Thorough okay, I want to. Okay, on the show. I appreciate this is you, this. You have more titles than Daenerys of House Targaryen, first of her name. This is boring now. Let's let's let's, the, let's, queen, let's like, fast me, forward to queen. the bit where he does it. What happens here? Uh, Adam 22's reality show and his wife back to relationship status. His longest relationship. Which where should we start from? Let's start here. Yeah, let's 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 there. Let's go there. Thirty eight twenty. I need to get on that. Yes. I need to get on that. I can help you with that. Okay. Oh, um, at, why don't I call you instead of, because I'm going to probably butcher it again. Uh, do you, Saint? 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 Cool. Saint, is that Fantastic. Good? Okay. Uh, so uh, your relationship status? I usually don't discuss it. Um, oh. oh. Can I skip it? No. Give us a hint. Yeah. Give us a hint. Um, I'm doing what Adam would do if he was a boss. <laughs> which oh, is to say Adam is a boss wow. <laughs> <laughs> which is to say that my lady's a hundred percent monogamous and only wants to be monogamous and then I do what I want to do I see so do you have a, would you say you have a main piece a main chick and side hoes side no, chicks no because every woman I deal with is conservative so everyone that was so uncalled for that was so uncalled for, but I'm here for it. Woman I would deal with, it would be for the potential of having in a long-term relationship. So I try not okay. to deal with uh, dirt bags. So you uh, like multiple, do you want multiple <laughs> wives? I wouldn't ever get married legally. And obviously polygyny okay. is illegal in the United States. Right. But, you know, we, we keeping things open, see if we can, you know, make a contribution out here. So you have multiple concurrent, long-term, one directional monogamous relationships with conservative women correct i see okay all right how, what's the pitch because i feel like, like how do you pitch it to the chicks because i'm sure a lot of guys would love that right. where their girls are monogamous to them they don't sleep with other guys but they have they you know they can have are you sure women? a lot of guys wouldn't want to be like adam and you know have their woman in them streets I mean, she's not really in the street. She just shoots porn I'm with other guys from time to time. Yeah. I, just, I, I feel like a lot of people like to extrapolate from our actual monogamous relationship and take the porn element and act as if that's what we're doing on a consistent basis when in reality, her and I are faithful to each other. Number one. Huh? I don't know how your feelings. I am just teasing you. So that's I, not a I, possibility. I just, just want to throw that out there. But I think it's strange if you put terminology on something and you're using what's called uh, euphemistic circumlocution. You're trying Smaller to make something. <laughs> <laughs> this saint guy's a piece of shit, man. I love it. Adams, Adams finally came up to somebody who's a fucking piece of shit just as much as he is. Oh, this is going to be good.
backwards. No, no, no. We, we, I, don't know how effective that's be. I got you. I got you. I got you. What, 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 what's a euphemism? What's a euphemism? Smaller words. Oh, damn. Damn. Okay. Goddamn. No, okay. I mean, right. Smaller words. I got you. You're you're I got you. Women, right. Euphemism is a nice way of saying, saying something. something. Right. right. And that circumlocution. Anyway, look. I said that there's a lot of women on this panel, so I we got need smaller you. Yeah, words. Let me break this down. We got a pearl on our hands over here. So here's the thing. You know damn well you're not monogamous. Why is there such a, just as observation, why is there such a high prevalence of like pick me energy girls in conservative spaces, by the way? Why is that a thing? It's the same thing in the UK. I wonder why that, what, what's that all about? Is that just a conservative caricature, caricature trait? What, why, there seems to be way more pick me type energy girls in conservative circles than liberal circles. I wonder why that is. Is this to do with feminism? Why I don't know. I've always wondered that. I miss. To we call are it on off camera. Right. So it's like going into the metaverse is not necessary. There, there there's no life on camera and Oh, okay. It's an easy comment for the chicks, true coiler. Other types of women do not do well in this conservative circles. Very true, seven dirty. They're catering to a target audience. So do you think it's just a grift? They're not even pick me's anyway. That would be so brilliant. Imagine if there's a pick me grift. They don't even believe in what they're saying. I would love that to be true. Maybe that's the whole thing. That, that's what I'm missing. Maybe that's what I'm missing. I need a grift. Maybe the key to content creation success isn't just being, you know, funny and creating good content. No, fuck all that shit. Pick a grift and just die on that grift. But don't ever live it. I'm going to have to try that out, you know. I'm going to have to try that out. I'm going to have to find a fucking grift that I absolutely don't believe in but I'm going to die on the hill of when I'm recording content. I just got to find out which one to pick. What grift can I be on? Woman hating grift. Women are not equal to men grift. Um, maybe I'll do the whole black conservative grift thing. Uh, what else do I do? Second Amendment grift. Um, what you call it? Anti-racism grift. I don't know which one. I've got to pick. I've got to pick a grift. Watch, I'm gonna come back in an episode with a grift. I'm gonna I don't know which one to pick though. I need to pick a grift to fucking just go with. Life off camera. It's either you're, either you're monogamous or you're not monogamous. If you got a movie role and second. you yeah, kissed a girl a in the movie role, would you still be monogamous in your relationship? I mean, I realize that the sex thing is more of a Whoa! real physical Whoa! fact, right? Did you compare a movie no. kit? You compared a movie kiss to your girl getting smacked well, down? It literally by is. It's still they're making a piece act. of content. They're making a film. I actually agree with him. I would oh, say that's, that's not no. being monogamous. I feel like you're crazy. intentionally misunderstanding what I'm saying. No, not at all. Not I mean, it's all. pretty obvious that there is a difference between doing things off camera. Let me ask you a question. Right? If you think I'm intentionally misunderstanding, you think if we took a poll right now, we said, would you consider Adam's relationship monogamous? Would people vote yes, it's monogamous, or no, it's not monogamous? Obviously, it We're comes with, the with a very be. big caveat that says, why must off, there be a caveat? On camera, the rules are slightly. But different. that's the whole point. There's no caveat. You're creating a no, there false is a caveat. Frame. I just named the caveat. You're creating I think a, everybody a false here frame. actually understands it, right? Yeah. No, yeah, no, I mean, that's every, not true. You see all no, the girls no. on their head? No. <laughs> that's because you have three conservative individuals here and then you have everyone else here is in it, sex work. She, seems, she just says she understands Dude, what I'm saying. She's not in sex work. She's <laughs> I yeah, would but why say did you put her between yeah. <laughs> this is confusing, right? Oh yeah. Because she's pretty and I need her next to me. No, I'm just saying, you know, like, like, yeah, if it were to be like conservative and then only oh fans girls, oh, oh, yeah, hold, hold on, on. Hold on. Hold on. just a, one sec, guys. Mr. Adam 666, <laughs> do not insult our intelligence. Your wife is a sex worker. There is no monogamy. Mm. You are the one pretending. Oh, settled. I'm isn't that. <sighs> Maybe I'm too open minded. But isn't how you t isn't the way you classify or term a relationship based on the people that are in the relationship? Are we the ones to prescribe? Like if like if you say you're monogamous and that's the way your monogamy works, isn't that just how it is? Because it's your relationship. Should others be the one to define how what your relationship is, definition wise? They might view it differently, but shouldn't you define it? Define it the way it is. No, what do you think? I'm a sex worker as well. Settled. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And you Adam both have her. Also, 
I prefer, if I was involved in the in the adult industry, I'd pre- I'd be preferred to be called a porn actor than a sex worker, innit? The term sex work is fucking disgusting. It's so it's so uh it's so fucking horrible sounding. I'd much be I'd much rather be called a porn star or a porn actor than be called a sex worker, innit? It sounds so fucking sleazy. Sex worker, like what? <laughs> just say you work in porn it's no big deal like who gives a fuck everyone watches porn i, I work in sex work okay sex, sex. What the hell? i yeah. thought it's 22 uh you know it, it's adam 16 let's try to keep things a little donated 200 dollars my sprinkler goes like this. Oh my God, okay. They pay money to. Yo, people pay money to troll. I fucking love trolls, man. People will pay two hundred pounds to troll like this. <laughs> uh, Can people play bad words in there? Like comes back like this. Bro, why you gotta fucking? Oh my God. She's feeding it. She's feeding it. Don't, yeah, don't love feed it. that shit. Don't listen oh my to God. women. Don't. I like how that was her favorite go-to. Like, like the N-word, for example. Well, I'm just wondering. Um, you guys were having a little okay. back and forth, I guess. On well, the, we we both know we're not going to agree on that, but I think it's very disingenuous to call it monogamy when it's not monogamy. Well, and the only monogamy reason monogamy off camera. That's like me saying that, you know, inside of this room... You don't really need to say it's like anything. It just the, is blank. a statement of fact, right? No, no, it's not. Because you're creating a false condition, as though life is different when you turn on a camera and turn off a camera. I think when I say monogamy, so if you're is, is, monogamy is on it or is. off camera, no, 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 I think no. everyone understands, This is right? really... This is the type of people that believe that if, like, I don't know. Again, I don't give a fuck important no i like i like where we're at right now what we're experiencing is that you know what you're doing is wrong so you have this duality in your mind and in your psyche to make you feel like because you turn on a camera because you're getting paid now it's okay when in actual fact i'll tell you how we know it's wrong would you feel comfortable if your father was watching your only fans and subscribing to it probably not no. you would not feel comfortable and i'll tell you why that's because in your heart of hearts in your soul if you still got one you know it's wrong and i'll give you an example that's your <laughs> He's calling OnlyFans girls soulless. He's calling them soulless. Yo. <laughs> Yo, this guy needs to chill. He needs to chill. He needs to relax. Oh my God. <laughs> if you have a soul. <sighs> Your work. In my work, if my mother consumed my work, I'd be thankful and pleased that she took an interest in my work and supported my work. If she bought my products, I'd be thankful. If your mother or father bought your products, you'd be disgusted and ashamed because you know what you're doing is wrong and the product of what you're doing is bad. First of all, I don't do porn on OnlyFans, so like, don't throw me in that. Okay. But I feel like it's like, what, what I want, would I want my dad to watch me having sex with someone else, recorded or not? Like, you do things like, you don't want your parents to see everything that you're doing. Did and you understand my point? How do you know point? to him, like, it's a bad thing? Like, how do you know that they're ashamed Real of quick, it? Real quick, did you understand my point? What? Did you comprehend my point? I understand your point, okay, but good, I mean, I do agree with him. I think... How do women let themselves get spoken to like this, man? Whether you're a slag or you're not, whether you're in sex work or you're in porn, like, letting someone talk to you this way is fucking crazy. Honestly, letting somebody talk to you this way because you choose to willingly work in whatever industry you're in as an adult who gives a fuck do what the fuck you want letting somebody talk to you this way is radical bro honestly letting somebody talk to you like this because you record yourself having sex with people on a fucking platform that's behind a paywall is legitimately insane <laughs> think off camera, they are monogamous. Like it's acting. It's like kissing someone in a movie. Like okay, let me let me give you. Movies. Let me ask you a question. I, I don't do acting. I don't do porn on. OnlyFans, <laughs> let me ask you a question. But I still agree. I do think they are in a monogamous relationship. Off you don't camera. do porn on OnlyFans. Exactly, Z. Imagine moral. Imagine moral grandstanding. Girls who do OnlyFans content, while being a guy that says, 
you have many side pieces, but they can't have other side pieces. It's like, what? Aren't you a slag yourself? If that's what you're judge like... Yeah, this Saint Sinner guy is a bit full of shit, but I like how much he's getting... Saint Sinner sounds like a bit of a donut, but I do like how much he's getting under Adam Adam 22's skin. You know? I do like that. He's a worthy adversary to Adam 22. He's a worthy foe because he's, you know, in his own little grift, but by himself, the guy's a bit of a donut. Let's not, let's not lie. Fair I don't. So what do you do? Uh, I do like sexy photos, yeah. Just sexy photos, just mm-hmm. nude photos. Maybe, yeah. Okay, here we, we got a jokester. Here we got a jokester. Okay, you gotta subscribe. Here, I mean, I don't know. You gotta see for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I would never. So, going back though, what? How do you pitch it to a girl? Like, oh, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. find other women. Ism. You try oh, wait, to get this ism. donated two hundred dollars. <laughs> hey, Mr. Herps a lot. Herps a lot. You did a standard herpes test, which shows nothing. You do a Western blot test, mm. it will likely come back positive and you will have to disclose to all future partners. Hashtag filthy. Oh my Jay Butler got paid nice. today. You spent a lot more time yeah. thinking about this than I was. Oh man. Is that a thing? That he's got herpes? Holy shit. Mr. Herpes a lot. <laughs> Oh, holy shit the super chats on this pl- I might have to watch this podcast bro the super chats go crazy Mr. Herpes a lot <laughs> one right. of these days Adam I'll have you on the podcast where the not everyone's trying to Dogpile you. No, no, he, he, he's got you. Know, no, he's man. bulletproof. He's There's, bulletproof. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, he's side. bulletproof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, all right. Well, uh, so what is the pitch? What's the pitch? Because I'm sure there's men out okay. there that you know would like uh, to have the kind of arrangement right. you have. Oh, I'm good. I can fight back. I'm okay. Right. <laughs> okay. So how do you? Con- Saint trying to suck up to Adam to make sure he doesn't leave, so he can keep dunking on him. I love it. Now he bulletproof. He bulletproof. Saint thinks he's clever. <laughs> he's trying to glaze Adam so he doesn't leave <laughs> like what's the pitch to the woman okay how do you make because most women are going to be like no I don't want you right with other or chicks. they're going to try to force some level of you know gender feminists we're equal we're the same so mm. if you do it I do it okay all right so Adam you ready for this get your pen and paper let's go you ready for this all right cool so the number one foundational piece is selecting the correct woman I'll give you an example. And we're just going to go. Just give me a little bit of time yeah. here. Um, have you ever cheated before? No, never. Never. Have you ever cheated before? No. Would never. they admit it, though? Have you? Why? Have you okay. ever cheated before? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever cheated before? No. You're lying. Have you ever cheated before? <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked up. No, I'll tell you why. No, I will tell you why. I'm not picking on her. I'm going to tell you why. Straighten your mic, please. I, am, I will tell you why. why. I can read characters very well. Gotcha. There was a gentleman here named Nick. He was explaining to everyone how the show is going to proceed and giving us the basics on, you know, how to pay attention, how to track the speaker, how to be respectful, in other words. There was one person who was not paying attention while he was talking. Who was that? Mm-hmm. That was me. That was you. Yeah. So out of everyone sitting here, why are you the one that's sitting here being disrespectful when he's taking out his? This time to show you how to best present yourself in front of millions of people. Because I was turning off my alarm, yeah, and I didn't want to forget to do it later. Sure, I hear you. Because you're a disrespectful person, and you were okay. rude and catty with him. Sorry, this guy is a piece of shit. Who does he think he is? Does he think he's their dad or something? If that's my sister, I'm blacking out. I don't care how dumb my sister is. You don't speak to her that way. If that's my fucking sister, I'm blacking out, bro. 
Who do you think you are? Nah, nah, nah. This guy's a real villain. He's a real fucking villain. After he told you, as a boss, I always look at these things because I, I was rude and catty with him because I put my phone away. No. I don't think I said anything disrespectful. I mean, I, 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 I agree with you. I, I agree that you think you didn't say anything disrespectful. I agree that you think you weren't being disrespectful because that's your actual nature. So a person like you who is by nature one who is narcissistic and disregards others, you're the because one that's going to cheat. Phone, because I was on my phone when I didn't. When Why I was were you the only on one? Phone? Out of every, I got two phones right here. I got two phones. Why were you the only Do one? Do you follow every single fucking rule? Have why you were, ever had a speeding you the only ticket? One? Like, why are you, you so angry? Trouble, why are you so angry? Like, in I'm just... class? Nah, nah. This guy is such a piece of shit. But you know what's funny? I get the feeling he's he's turning some of these girls on at this table. He's a piece of shit and he's talking to that woman with complete lack of respect. But I feel like some of these girls on this panel are kind of getting turned on by it. That's the really sad thing about it. <laughs> I feel like some of the girls are thinking, I want to be one of his girls. That's the crazy thing about it. I feel like some of the girls on this table are thinking, oh, oh. But this saint guy is a walking fucking red flag. He's a person. He's a personification of a red flag. If you're a woman looking for a, an ideal partner, you should be running as far away as possible from this saint guy. Especially seeing how he's talking to this woman in public. Imagine how he speaks of women behind the scenes in private. If he's being this rude to somebody he doesn't know, imagine how rude he's going to be to somebody in public in private. But some of these women are actually turned on by this. You're just angry right now. I think right you're now. just as expressive as I am. You're and I angry. think when a woman like kind of like barks back at you, it's, it's an issue. Well, it there's no like, need to bark with humans. Been, like, you can you just know, talk. Kind of I'm just calling a spade a spade. I'm just saying, it's okay. why were I'm, you, I'm like, asking you a question. Why were you the only one out of everyone here? Why was it you that all of a sudden needed to do that right when he's giving us the directions? Just because I had to do it. Because right, because you didn't and care. Didn't, now, so settle. I don't know so, how being on my phone correlates to cheating. That's fucking ridiculous. Like, be fucking for real good point good point woman thank you good fucking point please good fucking point how does this relate to cheating please please make this make sense let's let's see him rile it in right now a lot of things will be hard for you to comprehend that's why you're in sex work because you can't offer value in the marketplace oh my god <laughs> that's me that's me <laughs> oh my god oh my god this guy is a piece of shit but he is dunking on these girls so hard wow wow what the fuck <laughs> Yeah, no, if you have legit. I think I have no, a lot more to no, offer if than you just have being significant, an OnlyFans. If you have like, significant. That I started one second, two months love. ago. Like, there's a one lot second, love. Offer if that. you had love. significant IQ yeah. and skill set, you'd be able to go into the marketplace and earn a good income such that oh, you didn't gotcha. have to do that. Significant so, IQ, like the women that you're with that let you cheat on them and, so, do, and bring whatever diseases back to them, right? Like, those are like I high value you. women, right? Hear... Go on, get her, get him, get him, get him. Good girl, good girl. Okay, she got good. she got a good comeback there. She's doing well. To be fair, she's getting punched in the face. She's getting elbowed, but she's cantering pretty well. She's doing okay. She's doing okay. She's doing okay. She's doing okay. She's getting, she's on the ropes. She's covering up, but she's landing some blows. Give the girl credit. Give the girl credit. She's landing some blows. Good girl. <laughs> Like, right yeah so being that you don't have significant income or the ability to offer skills i don't have to a the significant income okay gotcha are you why do you go keep ahead. cutting me off all right go ahead you talk and then no. I'll, I'll respond go no, ahead go. you talk I'm, I'll go I'm just can you at least scoot saying. your mic yeah. that way there you go, go she ahead. wasn't listening to the direction that's why she didn't know i'm a bad listener, <laughs> just I'm, a bad listener and I'm a cheater <laughs> okay all right do you Good want to go. talk now i just want to make sure you don't interrupt go me so go no i'm offering you the floor because you were talking while i was talking go ahead I'm good. You can say what you need to say. Wow. See, your brain did. That's a problem. Oh. <laughs> He's just too good. 
He's just too good at being a piece of shit. He's just too good at being a piece of shit. Oh my god. <laughs> You're brain dead. <laughs> He's just too good at being an asshole. I said to God, he's just too good. That's why you have to interrupt me while I'm talking. I gave you the floor. You didn't want to take it because you don't have any thoughts or anything to say. I do have Here's thoughts my point. things to say. And don't worry, I'm not really talking to you. I'm speaking against you as a symbol. Mm -hmm. So don't take personal offense to it. As a symbol, which is what? It. A symbol of what? A symbol of a declining society where people gotcha. lack values. Oh, fuck, you know, you walked into that one, kid. Why did you ask him that? You walked into that one. You shouldn't have asked him that. You walked into that one, man. Come on, girl. You walked into it. Fuck. Mm -hmm. So the point is this. If you had IQ and skills mm -hmm. to offer to the marketplace, gotcha. you can earn a good income. Andrew Tate. No, 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 no. No, I'm not getting sucked into anything. Make no mistake. I'm only watching this because Adam walked out on this interview. I'm never watching these shows in my free time on stream anyway. Never in a million years. It's not for me. Other people might enjoy them, but not for me. This is actually painful to watch, to be fair less about the cringe it's just painful i don't like to i don't i don't enjoy seeing people getting dunked on it's not fair like this show would be way more balanced i feel like if they had guys women on that actually had strong opinions and could actually counter some of the stuff but when you have guys on that are clearly smarter than the women what's like what's that to show like you just want to show that they're fucking like they're bimbos so what it's not a crime to be a bimbo it's not a crime to be an airhead but you get them on these panels to make them look dumb by getting other... Like, it's just unnecessary. So I'm not watching this in my spare time. Don't get this confused. We only watch this because Adam22 walked off of this show. Do not get it confused. I'm not going to turn into one of these... I don't I don't care. This Other people can do it. This is not for me. But I just don't like everything, you know? Like, anyway... Um, being that the most valuable thing about you is mm -hmm. something that you never earned you didn't earn knowledge you didn't earn skills it's your breast that you're paid for and your butthole so you market that girl pull out the strap put even the conservative girl is getting shocked even the conservative girl's like yo you wilding look at the the gymnast is smiling she loves the chaos the gymnast is loving the chaos <laughs> <laughs> To earn money. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm the one with like the least IQ here, even though I no, do the no, least. No, 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 no. Even though I'm, I do you like might the not least. Be. Come on, girl. You can't start denigrating other women to bring yourself up. Just attack him. He's easy to attack. He has no hair. Talk about him having no hair. Please. Talk about him having no hair. Please. It's so easy. He has no hair. Please. Look at what he's wearing. He looks like he's filming an episode of Star Trek. Like, come on, man. Come on. It's easy to get him. Come on, girl, man. Come on. I'm out on OnlyFans. I but surmise. Because, but because I'm the only woman who's barking back at you like I'm this brain dead fucking bimbo who has no, nothing to offer to that's society. That's why. I mean, then what? Then well, why? let's test it. Let's test it real quick. Okay, what's your age? I'm 28, but I'm not testing. Ooh, I'm not doing a test. Uh, you get, okay, you're 28. I'm getting up there. Fans. You're That's right. Amazing. My eggs are drying up. Okay. I'm not going to be fertile. No one's going to want me. I'm not a high okay. value mm -hmm. woman. Like, That's what fine. Else? We're not going there. What? Here's where we're going. If you weren't doing OnlyFans, how would you earn a six figure plus income? I do inter. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> like, speak English. Go ahead. Go ahead. I work, I work at one of the highest club, highest, like, you I work at one of the best clubs in Los Angeles. How are you going to just... Anyway, big up, Andrew Avenger. Appreciate it, brother. I already lost one Rogan. <laughs> I can't lose another. B. <laughs> big up, Andrew <NJ> Avenger. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Las Vegas. You seem like you're having trouble with English for a second. Tell us. I'm perfectly fine with okay. my English. Go on. I'm a little riled up. Yes. I'm I a little, said that like five minutes I'm ago and you little, denied it. I'm a little thrown off okay. by you attacking me because I think a lot of these other That's girls... That's because and nothing, people and never nothing, address and I, you. And I respect People like, never address you directly. Um, I think you're just attacking me because I'm responding to you and you don't like that and you don't like women who go against what you have to say that's fine. and that's why you choose but the women that do you, you do. mind do you mind answering the question i asked you what is the question okay i'll say it one more time what's <laughs> he's so good at being a cunt honestly you have to give this guy credit he's such a piece of shit but he's so good at being a piece of shit isn't it he's so condescending he's such an obnoxious insufferable cunt
skills do you have that would help you earn a six figure plus income at age 28? You're right, nothing. There's nothing that I, there's no skills that I have at all. You're trying to escape. There's nothing. But, but I'm there's, saying no, no, there's no skills. No, right. you're right. Because you're, you're, right? A, you're a cocktail server right. in Las Vegas. Yeah. Right? And there's nothing else yes. that I have to offer. She, she should tell him, and you're a fucking YouTube reactionary channel one. You know what I mean? Like, get him back. It's not hard to say. Like, come on, bro. Like, you sit in front of a microphone and talk for six hours a day. Like, like it's not hard. Like, get him back. Come on, girl. Come on. And you, she's trying to play it off right now. And that's a that's a strategy. Very nice. What's the strategy? Tell us. Uh, um, Please. But the fact is, Doctor. I live in Las Vegas. I, I've seen your type many times. Generally, they're younger. Gotcha. But the point I'm is, getting old. This. I know, man. You're, you're, I'm no, really. Over here Honestly, they should they should be firing I hope you. Someone marries all. me. Yeah, like, no, they should be. I don't know about that, but they should certainly be firing you and get someone of the appropriate age to do such a low level job. Oh yeah. But the point is this. You, why are you opening your mouth wide like that? It's not time. She, I, Bring I the camera out. She's ready. I think she can be shocked. She can do whatever she wants. She's fine. But, but here's the point. Fine. Here's the point. You're currently a cock. <sighs> Tail server, mm -hmm. which consists of, hey, I'll have a Jack and Coke. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you walk away, tell someone else Jack and Coke. Mm -hmm. They hand you a Jack. Hold on. I'm so why did Adam walk out on this show? This guy has been attacking this woman for like 20 minutes. Why did Adam walk out then? I don't understand this. Why? Where does the Adam beef come into it? He's absolutely brutalizing this woman. And Adam rage quits 10 minutes later. So what does he do? Does he give her 10, 20 minutes and then he gives Adam 10? This woman has more reason to leave than Adam does, to be completely honest. So let's see what happens here. Why does Adam leave? Jack and Coke, you come back and bring it back to me mm -hmm. and hope that I would give you a good tip mm -hmm. that's your skill set mm -hmm. and what about it it's a hard work and what about it it's a hard <laughs> right. work. and what about yeah. it yeah there is no skill set is the point which is to say if i took and your brain it? if i took your brain and placed your brain into a man's body you would be in poverty mm. you caught me because you're brainless oh, carrying on you're right yeah I'm just good for nothing. Yep, you can't. No, me. you are good for something. That's why you have OnlyFans, and that's my point. Is that oh, that's what you're good for? <laughs> and I, I, I'm not trying to be rude, but it come on, man. Like honestly, there's six people on this table that work in this industry. No one can come up with a good rebuttal for this guy. Why is he dunking on all these people so easily? Come on, man. There's six of you here that work in this industry. You don't have a good retort, a good clapback. He's absolutely destroying them. It's just that I think we're, you are trying to be rude. No, I think, I'm just being yeah. honest. No, I mean, being I honest. Do, think I mean, do, you even, be do you even know? <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude. It's hilarious. That's like when someone says, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. They're always going to hurt your feelings. Who I am as a person. I mean, before yeah. like throwing these insults that I'm just this brain dead fucking woman hominin. who has nothing no, to offer. I think offer. we should avoid ad hominem. But is it That's ad right. hominem when you actually, there were some, there were some, but brainless my might be a little. Ah, do you, I think that, do you even know me? Like ah, you don't even, and you're only you, calling me brainless because I'm the only one responding to you. Do you exactly. think you know what I think? So, so you think, so him so a little bit upset. Wow. Just you, so you know, mm -hmm. every girl sitting on this side of the table earns more money than him. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> he's an imposter. He uh, he's been outed in the past. And he's for, mad about it. He basically and LARPs Honestly, as a rich guy on the internet. If I was and absolutely I just, poor, it would mean nothing. All the girls, it would mean nothing. I think we all are in kind of an agreement that we don't really want to sit here and listen to someone who's basically a scam artist tell us what's wrong exactly. with our lives. Yeah, this, this is amazing. Finally, this is amazing. Finally, on the edge of walking out, Brian. I'm gonna be totally real. I'm not walking out on like a I made other pop. I just don't really want to listen to a scam artist tell me what's going on with our lifestyles. You can Google my name. Right. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. This is much better. So Adam Twenty Two walked out because he felt like. But then you 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 were sitting for silent for too long. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Adam Twenty Two made it up. He made up an excuse to walk out and try to make it seem like he was walking out to, in solidarity with the OnlyFans girls. But really and truly, he didn't want to get dunked on. He saw how Saint was ripping that girl on you asshole. He knew how he was going to be next. And he made up an excuse to leave. But he's... I don't buy it. I don't buy this excuse. He's not leaving because he's in solidarity with the other OnlyFans girls. He's just leaving because he doesn't want to get ripped to pieces. Because he has no good retort back, to be fair.
You are. Yeah. You Let's, can Google my name. If you right Google now. his Does name, know you'll, this guy's you'll, name you'll, you'll and be exhilarated. I hurt your feelings earlier. and You, you didn't hurt my feelings at all. It's feelings just you're trying earlier. to and do this whole, whole moral superiority thing, and it's not working the whole because chat you're broke. Your feelings. The whole you're chat actually is, broke. Here's the fu That's funny, though, isn't it? Response. Like, so no one can be morally superior to you when they have less money than you. That just says everything about Adam, isn't it? Like, you can't have any form of moral superiority. You can't tell him anything if you don't have more money than him. It's kind of like the Brendan Shaw method, isn't it? I love that. You got guys, a guys, milk guys. bird on Here, top of your head. Here's the funny <laughs> guys, thing. Guys, I'm guys, just guys. being real with wait, you. Wait, wait, if wait, I was on. actually broke, it literally would mean nothing to me. Then if, must have why did you if do an NFT scam on your fans Look, for like $400? Silly, checkmate. He, silly. This guy's a scammer. Wait, wait, so. guys, 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 I think nice I'm gonna leave, Adam, and if any Adam, girls want to leave wait, wait, with me, I'd be happy to take you. With I, me. Hold on, hold on. He's rage quitting. Wait, 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 He's wait, rage quitting. It's not stop, a rage stop, quit. Stop, it's just quitting. you're not on the blood level He's of me Adam, or the any of these girls. Rage quitting. Guys, guys, guys. Hold on. Let's just let's just take a little pause I didn't mean to make him rage quit. I'm done, bro. I just I don't want to listen to this guy anymore, and I feel like I might do something extreme if I were to stick around. When I first walked in, I said might have to. Was what it was a fight? The fade. Polish that milk does. I, when I first walked, <laughs> guys, guys, when I saw you downstairs, you go, I said, "Do you want the fade?" And wow. you said, "No." <sighs> okay. Nah, Adam twenty two walked out like a pussy. Nah, you can't, you can't walk out like a, you can't throw a threat and then walk out. Come on, you can't threaten somebody and then walk out. You when I first did? walked in, I said, "Do you Thanks want the fade?" You said, "No." We could have took care of that before the show started. Did you do you guys have like some pre existing beef or something? Listen, can we, okay, can well, we switch Adam? When I came in, when I came instead? in downstairs, the first thing I said when I saw him, I said, Do you need that fade? And he said, No, <sighs> it's just content. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, okay. So you guys had like. Yeah, as a, soon as I walked up, I said, Do you need that fade? And he said, No, it's can just you grab content. This guy? Oh, but I mean, like, did you guys have like a previous. Uh, yeah, wait, because what, I that? went on No Jumper, he waited until I left the state of California and then he started talking crazy and I said if you had an issue with Marquette Devon Burton you could have said that to fucking hell bro god damn To me when I was right there in your studio. Like you don't have to no, wait until I leave. Did you do an episode with him? I don't, listen. I was like, you don't have to wait until I, I leave. I don't know. And then he DM'd me on Instagram, like, hey bro, you we gotta like do a show when you come back. It's like wait, your phone. She, are you leaving? Yeah. Can you grab him? Like, the you super grab villain. Him? Like, Damn, like, the the whole super like, villain. Premise of the show. What? Wow. I'm a super villain? What? Nobody wants no, to No, I'm the uh, super villain. Wow. Yeah, because you're a fucking dick and you're an idiot. She is angry. She wants her clout. <laughs> She has like a tear go, go in her talk eye. To go talk to Adam. She has a tear go. in her eye. That's wild. I don't have a fucking tear. Here. I believe in you to get him back. Let's like, let's yeah, spring Adam. Everybody. Yeah. Anyway, so Adam left. Fair play. Um, <sighs> Number one, this guy is chatting shit. How can you book Adam and Satan Sinner and not know they had previous beef? They've always had beef. Even I know this, right? They've always just Google their fucking names. I'm sure if you type in no, no Adam22, his videos comes up too, where he's dunking on Adam. They've, they've had beef for a long time. He, he also has beef with academics as well. So the, the, the host acting like he didn't know is, is a piece of shit. The girls on the table should be ashamed. Letting that one girl get ripped to pieces for like... 20 minutes was horrible and then them only starting to say something when adam said something was crazy like none of them defended her none of them defended her that's kind of crazy you know what i mean they all sat around and let the fucking guy dunk on her for 20 minutes all of them just sat there like just hoping it wasn't their turn next that was really cowardly from everybody and got involved there um adam 22 like using the fact that she got dunked on as an excuse to leave was also very cowardly do you know what I mean? If you want to leave because you think this guy's a piece of shit, just leave. Do you know what I mean? You don't need to like wait for the girl to get dunked on and then you left. So he didn't even sign up for her in the right way either. So everybody in this table is full of shit, to be fair. To be fair. Everybody. With the exception of the gymnast. She was like enjoying the chaos. I liked her face. So everybody else, uh, piece of shit. What could you do? 
Fucking hell, bro. Fucking hell. That was brutal. But those super chats, to be fair, you know what? I have a feeling the super chats made Adam want to leave more so than what Saint Sinner said. I'm not going to lie. I think the TTSs had more to do with Adam leaving than even what Satan Sinner said. Those super chats were brutal. Like, <laughs> they were, they, they, they were crazy. <laughs> Yo, those super chats were crazy. So big up those guys and girls, $200 super chats, like props, props. They absolutely went into town for them. So, but yeah, fuck, you know, that was brutal. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Um, what else do we want to check out here? What are you guys saying? It shows how bitch made Adam is because I said, as I said, that could have been an easy KO a black guy for him. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Oh, imagine how much, imagine how much brownie points Adam 22 would have met, would have earned if he just would have jumped over the table and punched him. <sighs> he would look like a G, isn't it? Exactly. Probably said, probably paid to get dunked on. Who knows what's a real anymore? Oh, yeah, true. That's a good point, Cloud K20, isn't it? It could all just be a game, isn't it? It could all just be like fucking, yeah. True. Milk done is blasting off again. True, bro. Someone got to get killed at one of these things one day. Exactly, K20, exactly. Oh, my God. Exactly, Koyla. The, the host playing dumb. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Saint Sinner's brutal though, bro. He had some like wow, 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 wow. wow. Anyway, uh, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. We done that. Let's let's go to the Burt Kreischer thing. There's a new Burt Kreischer video that's dropped. Why Burt Kreischer won't accept reality? Let's watch this a bit. Burt Kreischer won't accept reality. Another video by a big YouTuber. Who's this one? His name is called Patrick CC. It's got he's got one point six million subscribers. Fucking hell, bro! Burt Crash is crossing over. Okay, let's see what I go on with this documentary. Bish bish bash. Let's do this. Boom! The second as it loads. Come on, come on. Are we gonna load for me quickly? Come on, you gonna go full screen properly or not? There you go. Boom! Let's play this. Let's see what he's saying. Burt Kreischer won't accept reality. Why won't he accept reality? Let's hear it. Burt Kreischer is one of the biggest comedians alive today, but all the reasons why he is successful is what will likely drive him to an early grave. Burt's comedic persona is the overweight drunken jester with way too much confidence. Well, it's not much of a persona. That's who he really is. Burt's success has been highly scrutinized over the years. Many people say he lacks comedic talent, is a full-blown narcissist, and would be nothing if he wasn't friends with Joe Rogan. Others point out that he is a genuine, sweet family man who uplifts everyone around him. But both his haters and fans agree that Burt's current lifestyle is unsustainable, and he is in total denial of the obvious warning signs. I say it to my friends. I mean it to my friends. I say it to my wife. I mean it to my wife. I think it's kind of cool because Burt complains a lot about his daughters not liking fame and stuff and how they get embarrassed every time he like acts super famous. I think it's kind of cool how well adjusted his kids have turned out. Right? How like opposed they are to fame. How like they want to try, they want to, they, they, like I think he complains that they want to live they want to grow up quite normally, right? They want to have normal things. They're kind of ashamed by the trappings of his success, right? And the privilege it brings them. That's kind of comforting, isn't it? It's kind of cool. Isn't it? Like, yeah, they got a dad that's a super fame whore. And then the kids turned out to be like, look, we just want to have like a, we just want to be like our friends. <laughs> and Bert wants to like lord his fucking fame, you know, everywhere. It's kind of cool. Yeah, but maybe it is Leanne. But maybe Leanne's the reason why these kids are growing up that way. But it's quite cool that he can the things he complains about his kids. When I hear it, I'm like, that's kind of a cool thing. Like, why isn't that? A and I also love the fact that one daughter looks like Leanne and one looks like Bert. It's kind of that's kind of wild, isn't it? Like sisters, like it's kind of shit. I don't know. Yeah, that's kind of wild family man who uplifts everyone around him, but both his haters and fans agree that Burt's current lifestyle is unsustainable, and he is in total denial of the obvious warning signs. I say it to my friends, I mean it to my friends, I say it to my wife, I mean it to my wife, and I mean it to alcohol. Like, I love alcohol, I love marijuana. 
I love cigars. Right. You don't like whiskey. You don't you don't love it. You know who loves it? Me. Right. Who drinks it at fucking 8 a.m. on a plane. Yes. To go disappear. I love whiskey. Burt Kreischer's career started by accident due to a Rolling Stone article written about him in 1997. He was in his sixth year of college where he regularly skipped classes, drank until the sun came up, slept through the days, and never planned for the future. How many years have you been to go to college? Is that three or... How many years is it in the US? Is it three or two? He was in college for six years. Please tell me it's not the same thing. In the UK, college is usually two to three years. It's four years in the US. So he did two more years than he meant to do. Wow. 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 You do four years of college in the US. Is that true, Koyla? You do four years. Why did you double? Fuck it out. Oh, sorry, I keep forgetting. When you say college, you guys mean university, innit? Fuck, my bad. When we say, because like, in school, we have like primary school, secondary school, college, university. So I guess you guys, college is uni. So uni is three to four. So, but most degrees are three years, right? Most degrees, most degrees are free. So he did, he did, he did a degree for six years. <laughs> Don't you get chucked out after a certain time? How's that even possible? I guess if you have the tuition fee, you can just pay it, right? If you have the money, you can pay. But it's fair to say, if he didn't make it as a stand-up comedian, Bert will be fucked, isn't it? That's clear indication of just, like, he's a bit dumb. Six years. Fucking hell. He was known at his college as a party animal. Journalist Eric Hedgegaard from Rolling Stone wanted to do an article on Florida State, which recently got ranked as the top party school in the USA. As Eric was trying to find sources for animal, journalist Eric Hedgegaard from Rolling Stone wanted to do an article on Florida State, which recently got ranked as the top party school. What's the other party schools there in the US? 2015 Syracuse, Iowa, West Virginia, Ohio, Georgia, Penn State. Florida. Oh, imagine what Florida raves are like, mate. High school parties. College party. Imagine what a college fucking rave is like in fucking Florida. Oh, ho, ho, ho. West Virginia, Texas, Wisconsin, Alabama. Oh, shit, shit, bro school in the USA. As Eric was trying to find sources for his story, five different people told him to link up with Bert. Eric spent one week shadowing Bert's life as a college student and realized the article was not going to be about the school. It was about Bert. Bert Kreischer, the undergraduate, released on April 17th, 1997 and told his story of bar hopping, playing frisbee, failing classes, and not thinking about tomorrow. Just reading a- To be fair, I- This is a bit of a big deal, isn't it? It's, un it's understandable why Bert doesn't want to let go of this um, adult frat boy mentality thing he has. Imagine what this must have done to his clout back in the day. He got written up in a Rolling Stone magazine when it used to be a magazine, print only. He got an entire story written about how he was partying and shit back in the day. That must have, he must have been a star in his fucking college. So it's no surprise that he doesn't want to let go of that persona because that must have been such a defining moment of his life legit because you're a loser for a long time and then the rolling stones legitimizes you and kind of rehabilitates your image and makes you look like a star right i kind of get it i kind of get why he's so delusional and doesn't want to grow up and stuff makes a lot of sense a few sentences from this thing made Bert into some kind of urban legend. Sometimes when he walked in, people stopped and stared like he was Pablo Picasso or some other famous 
pole. Occasionally, he whipped out his sunglasses and slapped them over his eyes. The shades made him look sort of raffish, like a Skid Row Tom Cruise, but he wore them only so he could avoid having to say hello to the people whose names he couldn't remember. Bert was essentially being celebrated as an unproductive, passionless degenerate, a persona he would maintain for his entire career. This article was a perfect excuse to try to get into the entertainment entertainment industry. Bert decides that stand-up comedy is the route he wanted to take, and a talent agent scouted him during one of his routines at Potbelly's on his college campus. They relocated him to New York City, where he would perform at the Boston Comedy Club regularly. From there, an agent for Overbrook Entertainment, Will Smith's production company, scouted Bert and wanted to sign him to a six-figure development deal. Will loved Bert and took him under his wing. And then he was the greatest thing that ever happened in my life. He took me out to Hollywood, he introduced me to all the networks, he taught me how to sell a show, he was the greatest I saw. Fuck you know, bro. Look at how he looks. Isn't it? He's digi like, that's what a lifetime of partying does to you, isn't it? He's fucking exploding. He looks like a fucking Savaloy. He looks like one of those fucking, you know those tomatoes they serve in Spanish restaurants, those really big ones. I think they call like beef tomatoes, right? Or something, right? The, those ones that you can cut into a, a literal slice of steak and shit. Fuck you know. Again, there's probably trappings to his lifestyle. Probably does, you know, there's probably some good in it probably some fun times right you get paid to be like a degenerate a party boy a raver or whatever but god damn it health wise looks wise he looks like pure shit pure and utter shit Unfortunately, Bert's Hollywood career would be lackluster. He was able to land small acting and hosting roles, and Hurt Bert was the name of a four-episode series on FX featuring him performing dangerous stunts. The one thing he did stay consistent with is stand-up, five or six days per week, working on his craft in front of small crowds for years. He wasn't alone doing this. Almost all So he always, so he never was good at acting. He failed to be an actor from minute zero, from the jump. That's interesting, isn't it? He got given a complete layup, a silver, you know, hey, Will Smith introduced him. Look how much Chris D'Elia's aged, isn't it? This is ages ago, I know, but Chris D'Elia's face, that's what happens when you diddle kids, isn't it? He looks like an absolute scarecrow now. Look how different Chris looks. He looks yassified here, isn't it? Chris looks actually, Chris looks yassified. He looks like he's got that yassy feel to here. Fuck, bro. All of the popular comedians today were right there alongside Bert in those clubs, hoping for a chance to impress an agent that would make them a movie star. After Bert released his 2009 comedy special, Comfortably Dumb, he secured his own reality show on the Travel Channel called Bert the Conqueror, which was again a show about him doing dangerous stunts. But despite this show being the biggest thing going for him, his comedy buddies Joe Rogan and Bill Burr sat down with Bert to tell him some harsh truths. They sat me down and told me, your Travel Channel show sucks. You're funnier than that. You need to do special specials, you need to do podcasts. Burr remembers the conversation vividly. He was down in the dumps, trying to figure out what the next move was, and Joe Rogan and I were just starting podcasting. Joe Rogan had a hunch that podcasting would be the next big thing for comedians to gain a fan base. They could break away from the old method of hoping for a corporate network to put you on a sitcom so you can sell tickets to your stand-up performances. And he was right. A phenomenon now dubbed the Joe Rogan Effect, or the Brogan Effect, is essentially that any comedian who is friends with, or regularly featured on the Joe Rogan experience would become wildly successful comedian slash which is true but the fact is they don't want to admit it or not they Brendan's the only person that doesn't want to perp doesn't want to admit the Rogan effect and he's the largest proponent of it right imagine one of the highest individual this is the thing you have to imagine all the friends that he has Rogan Brendan's the only one that has the most individual appearances on the Rogan on the JRE experience sorry imagine that of all the comedy, of all the friends in comedy, Rogan has all the actual long relationships he's had with people in the trenches, going to clubs, getting past all this sort of stuff. All the people he's met along his career, Brennan, the newest member, the newest friend, is the one that has the highest amount of individual appearances. But he's also the one person that doesn't want to admit that Rogan's influence paid a had an outs had had an oversized over oversized impact in his life in his career. Because without Rogan, really, yes, he probably would have a successful podcast. Would he be as big as he is now? Probably not. Podcasters. Brennan Schaub, Brian Callen, Joey Diaz, Tom Segura, Ari Shafir, Mark Norman are just a few of the many beneficiaries of the Brogan effect. Bert was a regular on Joe's podcast from the very beginning, and the JRE community treated him like their funny fat friend who has some of the most ridiculous stories. I had a dream one time that me and Elvis walked into his hotel room, <laughs> and there were four dudes butt 
drinking, right? And I, what? No, but your dad, no, he used to shit his pants in all the time in 30s, his 30s. All the time. He used well, to, how long would you said the story began with you saying that he, he shit his pants recently. in a Banana Republic in Beverly Hills? Bert took Joe's advice and started his own podcast called Bert Cat. Honestly, man. Sometimes I wish I started my shit early back then because you could get away with so much shit in it. I used to shit myself. My friend did this, my friend did that. Millionaire! in 2013 and regularly had his comedian friends on as guests. The first 99 episodes were audio only, with the first video podcast he ever posted being episode 100 alongside Tom Segura. From here, he started taking his YouTube channel more seriously. Hey guys, it's... Yeah, exactly, Coyle. That's a really good point. The Will Smith thing made me feel for Bert. It's a bummer getting someone in that industry. Then months later, they won't answer the phone call. And that's the thing as well that I hate. I think about Hollywood. That's, that's why I probably I understand why these guys are so enamored with podcasting and suck each other's dick offs. Because most likely the reason why Will Smith stopped answering Bert's calls was because the book, the, the jobs he was getting him, he wasn't securing them. He kept giving opportunities to do shows. They kept getting dropped or cancelled, or they didn't go through the they didn't go past the pilot. So it just turned into a thing where like Will decided or his team thought, okay, we bet on the wrong horse. Bert isn't that guy, and they dropped him. But they don't tell you. They're not honest. You know what I mean? That's the thing that I, that sounds the worst thing about the Hollywood industry, entertainment industry. You never know why you don't get jobs really, or why you get fired. The true point. You never really find out. You just move on. You know, um, they're not really honest and upfront with you. That's the one thing that kind of is a bit weird about that whole industry. But if you're clouded up and you got a lot of steam behind you, they will fucking give you shit on a silver platter, despite your lack, your your lacking of talent or your appropriateness for the job. You know, that's a weird thing. So you get things just because you're f you get things given to you just because of your fame that you probably don't deserve or that you're probably not good at. But then when you do things that you don't do them well, they don't tell you why you didn't do them well and they don't tell, give you a reason or explanation so you can improve yourself. It's just, nah, move on to the next one. It's Bert Kreischer. This is my YouTube page. Bert turned into a full-blown YouTuber, vlogging his family, his weight loss journey, and any random life adventures. He uploaded podcasts along some of the most promising upcoming talent in comedy and, of course, clips of his own stand-up. Bert admits that his stand-up act was very hacky for many years. He liked to riff with the audience and live in the moment. However, he wanted to challenge himself to write something, practice it, and put out a cohesive special that would act as a legacy piece. That special, titled The Machine, would go on to change his life. At the very end of 2016, Burt posted The Machine story that went extremely viral on Facebook, earning over 12 million views in one weekend. To this day, it has 40 million views. The same video quickly gained 4 million views on YouTube and brought him over 100,000 subscribers. Something about an overweight dude with no shirt talking about being kidnapped by the Russian Mafia was too good to not share with everyone you know. Bert's fame leveled up from the machine. He began booking larger venues due to higher ticket sales, doing as many as three shows per night for months straight. At this point, he received nothing but praise from the internet and comedy world, but he made a critical mistake early on. It's really hard to do a solo podcast just coming up with a couple subjects and ranting for an hour. Yeah. When I started my podcast, I was like, maybe I'll do it solo. He goes, do it solo. You don't need guests. Yeah. I was like, and Bert I did said this. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I did a couple solo. I go, Bill, they're not good. And he goes, they're not going to be. He was huh. like, let them be bad for like a year huh. and then they'll get better and then they'll get really good. And huh. then you won't even think about it. And then your writing on stage will be so strong. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm just going to have guests. Oh, this is a good insight into Bert's mentality. <laughs> Exactly. That is a perfect summation of Bert as a person. Oh, God. Almighty, instead of using his podcast as a tool to practice jokes and material to make his actual job as a comedian better, he decided he would rather just waste a couple hours chit chatting with his buddies while the money flows in. Exactly. But often, those conversations led to Bert being the butt of the joke, especially when he linked up with his best friend Tom Segura. Tom was exploding in fame due to his wildly successful Netflix special, Mostly Stories, which helped fans discover the Your Mom's House podcast. That special was really good, by the way. Mostly Stories was really fucking good. I know people don't like Bert now, I mean Tom now, I know he's a bit of a piece of shit now, I know, I get it, but let's not lie, Mostly Stories was really good. Podcast. On one episode, Tom pulled up a picture of French actor Gerard Depardieu and jokingly said it looks like Bert. Then Tom's fan base started photoshopping Bert's face onto pictures of Gerard and spreading the hashtag, Bert is fat. Because it was all their best fans making hilarious f***ing jokes. One guy took the name Bert Chrysler and made a uh, his own f***ing profile for it. By the way, 
I saw him yeah. in Hartford. He's Huge. obese. Yeah. He's obese. Enormous. And and he just sat in the front row the whole time going, Bert's fat, Bert's fat. <laughs> Next day, his mom shows up. Hey, buddy, your mom's morbidly obese. And the first word she says to me is, why are you so fat, Bert? And I'm like, oh, my God, this is getting out of fucking control. Someone even made a song dedicated to the meme. But the interesting part about this is that Bert did not think he was overweight, and it was Tom and his fans that tricked him into thinking he was fat. Pull up a picture of me when you think I was fat, and I wasn't even that f***ing fat. No. Now I look at it and I go, I was legit skinny. And now, when I look at it... Burst illusion is fucking brilliant. I love, fucking love it. Now I look at it and I go, I can't believe I got mind tricked into being fat. There's you some did, of these you didn't ones. get mind tricked into being fat. But these seem like harmless jokes compared to when Ari Shafir genuinely disrespected Bert and put his life in danger. But before we talk about that, allow me to introduce you to Maggie. She's a mini schnauzer and she's a part of the CC family. Would you feed your family low quality f Come on, bro. Her old daughter's hands walked in his house to do a pod. Thank or use code PatrickCC at checkout. I know your dog is a part of your family, so treat him like family. Thanks, Sundays. One night, Bert invited his friend and fellow comedian Ari Shafir over to his house. <laughs> the podcast that changed everything. The podcast that changed everything. House to do a podcast. Ari shook Bert's 13 and 15 year old daughter's hands, walked into the podcast room where they were going to share some drinks. Then Ari decided to secretly slip a capsule of MDMA, aka Molly, into Bert's drink without him knowing. Molly gang. You don't think it's but the Molly's get the M's in the chat for the Molly gang. Get the M's in the chat for the Molly gang. Fucking crazy that you would do that. I bet. Did you, you even like... get the Molly tested? Like, where are you buying no. this Molly? No. I've done it for my favorite Molly dealer. <laughs> it's and great you just Molly. spiked it's his great. drink? Yeah. Yeah. High blood pressure, high cholesterol. I'd sit out three... Guys, you're all talking I would want to kill you. Yeah, I yeah. would fucking want to kill you. He wanted to for about 10 minutes. Okay. To, to be fair, I know it's, it was fucking crazy, but that's some real comedian shit. That's some real comedian shit. If you're actually a comedian and you're an actual psychopath, you actually live a bit of a delinquent, degenerate life. That should be standard, really. That should be quite funny. But these guys aren't really comedians, are they? They're just really... What someone said in a stream chat one time? Someone said something like, these stand-up guys are like... What is it? Someone said they're like, what are they? They're failed actors who got into podcasting or something like that. I was like, That's a really good way to describe them or something, right? They're not really stand-ups. Like, Joe's a good, a good example of it. He doesn't really like too much silliness on his pod he doesn't really like to like get dumb and naughty right it's a bit proper but if you're a real degenerate if you're a real degenerate comedian scumbaggy type of dude spiking drinks should be like part of again it sounds weird to say spiking drinks should be a little bit funny to you it really should practical jokes should always be funny and you just keep pushing the line i know it's wild to say but you know the way they re the way Bert reacted to it like a normie. A bit weird. Like you're a comedian, aren't you? It's fun, isn't it? It's fun and games. We are planning on having a couple drinks with you, and then having leave, getting you out of my house, having dinner with my children, relaxing, getting on a plane, and going on tour. Instead, <laughs> that's scrap. Joe laughs off the situation. Tom thinks Ari is a psychopath, and Bert was genuinely distraught about all of this. Any normal person understands. But you know what? You know what I think. You know what I think. Um, I think Josie made a good point here. Bert also said he told his girls how much he loved them, and realized um, he still loved his wife. Horrible thing to do but it wasn't all bad exactly but you know what i think also josie more so than that i think to bert it was a reminder no it was a realization of how low in the pecking order he was to his friends and how little they regarded him you know because ari would have done that to tom he would have done that to joe he did it to bert because he knew he could get away with it and he knew bert's a bit of a pussy do you know what i mean i think that was what probably hurt bert more so than ever realizing that he was that guy in his group of friends because I think sometimes, maybe women are better. I think women are better. Yeah, I think women might be a little bit better. Women are probably better within their friendship circle of knowing their place or knowing where they stand or knowing how they're viewed by other women in their group. Maybe guys are a little bit delusional. Maybe we don't really know where we stand within our social group and we think we're maybe higher than others. Maybe that's a problem. Maybe, maybe what Ari did was dangerous but the comedy community had mixed feelings I don't trust him because I because he spiked Burke he gave his friend Molly that Nikki Glazer where's she been by the way what's happened to her 
Why do I feel like she kind of did the Nikki? Did they all kind of dis disown her when she made that really cringy song about that comedian that died? I feel like Nikki Glazer hasn't really been around lately, or is she like doing her own thing? I feel like Nikki. I haven't seen Nikki Glazer in ages on podcasts and shit. What's happened? It's not okay. It's not okay. But, but wait, that's hilarious, though. <laughs> Ari dosing Bert. You want to dive into this first? I think that Bert likes any hype that he can get. I think he's okay with it. In exactly. The end. My mistake was not getting his wife. That way, she got upset at me because she felt left out. I think. By the way, um, Bert's wife still doesn't like Ari to this day, right? And Bert's Ari's not allowed back at the house anymore. And I don't think his kids like him either, isn't it? Right? That's that's the kind of law in it. Bert's Bert's wife is still fuck Ari, and his kids hate him. And Bert's kids hate him. <laughs> I think that was the biggest issue. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm not going to toast him again. <laughs> Unless the opportunity arises. Say something. No, no, I'm not. If him again, it would be fucking hilarious. Most people in Bert's situation would never talk to Ari again, especially after the blatant, unapologetic disrespect to his wife and family. But Bert made excuses for Ari's behavior. I'm going to give him Molly. We're going to get high. We're going to laugh. We're going to hang out all night. He didn't really calculate it. Like, he was like... Uh, I should have checked to see if his kids were in the other room. I should have checked to see if, if he had he to a, make dinner or something. Uh, yeah. he, uh, my wife was making dinner for all, both of us with, to have dinner with the girls because my girls loved Ari. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and he's like, and and he didn't check that I was flying that night. I was starting my tour that night. So there's a lot of things Ari didn't like check the, the boxes for. This is even crazier. Bro, it's a prank, man. No one's checking all those details, man. Get over yourself. It's a fucking prank considering Ari has disrespected Bert's daughter, Georgia, before this whole situation. Ari had commented on Georgia's teeth. Georgia... <laughs> <laughs> Ari's a piece of shit as well. Ari... <laughs> teeth are great now, but when she was younger, she didn't have any enamel on her teeth, and they didn't look great. I posted a picture of me and her in Hawaii, and Ari was like, way to have... Ugly, no stupid fucking teeth. Oh. Bert's actions, or lack of action, prove that he will allow others to take advantage of him and disrespect him. Or you could just say Bert is a sweet guy who is trying to give his friend the benefit of the doubt. Either way, Bert just kept seeing more success. He released his third comedy special, Secret Time, on Netflix when the Netflix comedy boom was at its peak. He started another podcast alongside Tom Segura called Two Bears, One Cave that became an instant hit, especially for moments like this. You're drinking Kool-Aid to start your day? Really? It's so good. You're drinking a 64F! <laughs> this is one of the best and worst moments happens to this podcast because they kept chasing this moment ever since they've been chasing this one moment ever since it happened so annoying so much sugar good for that guy <laughs> he drinks a lot of water it's cool <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> His laugh is almost identical to nails on a chalkboard. Bert's high-pitched hyena laugh is divisive amongst fans. Many have pointed out that his laugh is not just annoying, but borderline torturous. <laughs> Others suspect that Bert's laugh is fake, and this theory would almost be proven true based on what Bert said to Joe Rogan. My viral clips are me laughing at and people falling down. Mine are legit just me laughing. Just if if I can get if I can laugh. It goes, it goes viral. If Bert understands that the only way he goes viral is because of him obnoxiously mm. laughing, then it's safe to assume that he might do it up a little bit. I mean, it was definitely working in his favor. In 2019, he was selling out one to 2,000 capacity theaters twice per week. As 2020 rolled around, he started selling 3,000 to 5,000 tickets per show. But then the pandemic hit, which was one of the best and worst things to happen to Bert's career. No comedy clubs were open, all tours were canceled, but more people were spending time inside, which meant they had more time to consume long form content. Bert and the entire. Co I wonder, I wonder if this is what boosted and killed the comedy podcast or the podcast bubble. Maybe this exhaust, maybe this quick, maybe this um, hastened the implosion of the comedy bubble or the podcast bubble. People were in more, they s listened to more pods, but then as soon as they were outside again, they all dropped them. Huh. 
comedy podcast community saw massive spikes in their viewership, and they were all working together to try and entertain this new audience. They set up these terrible Zoom comedy shows that were destined for failure, but one ended in disaster for Bert. Ladies and gentlemen, this next comedian is one of my comedic heroes. He is the reason I do stand-up. Amazing. He is the reason I've been writing movies that have never been made, but I love his movies. I love everything about this guy. Okay. Without further ado, the guy that defined all our personalities, Adam Sandler. Considering Adam is Bert's idol, you would think he would try to have his best first impression possible. Sandler was initially thrown off by Bert's fanboy energy, but kept it smooth. Then it got worse. Uh, we're gonna watch uh, your movie, Precious Gems, soon. Oh, yeah, 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 That'll be, I don't know if they're gonna like it. I showed them, I showed them Happy Madison. And then- oh, The movie's really good. You have Netflix? Yes, yes. Check out Hey Big Boy streaming right now. It's my new. That was painful at the time, and it's more painful now. Oh my God, Bert, man. You have Netflix, Adam Sandler. Our special. Oh, yeah. All right, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. I'll, I'll check it out late tonight, buddy. While claiming to be a huge fan, Burt drunkenly mispronounced two of Adam's movies, Uncut Gems, as Precious Gems, and combined Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison to Happy Madison. Then he shamelessly promoted his comedy special. It was pretty clear Sandler started getting fed up with him. If you, I had a question I, was, I wanted to ask. If you could go back to one movie that was the funnest to shoot, doesn't matter what movie, just go back and have that be your set every day for the rest of your life, your Groundhog's Day, like we're all living. What movie was... I didn't realize at that point of a question, Groundhog's Day like we're all living. Maybe that's Bert's problem. Maybe Bert sees his life as Groundhog Day. Maybe he actually thinks he's reliving his glory years in college again and again and again in adult years. That's probably his whole problem. Wow. Groundhog Day like we're all living. That is so sad, bro. He's literally holding on to that college identity till now. Was the funnest to shoot that you would shoot every single day for the rest of your life? I have no, no, no answer for that. I got no idea. I never thought about that. And I never will. And I, and I hated that question. What else? The crazy part is... He actually look on, he actually looks annoyed. I forgot how annoyed he actually looked. I've never seen Adam Sandler look that way. He actually looked annoyed, like actually pissed off. Like what? <sighs> Fucking hell, bro. Bert thought he impressed Adam. And Theo, I thought it went well. Oh. I was like, nailed it. That's left, alcoholism. Left then. Whitney's going, Ka-ching, you need the closer, bring in the closer. <laughs> yeah. You, Adam Sandler's probably going, who the f is this Burt Kreischer guy? Sign him to a deal. <laughs> Covert, get Kreischer on the line. This guy's hot. We need him. Since Burt claims to love Sandler so much, he probably just assumed Adam would respect and love him back since they were on the same Zoom comedy show. But while trying to get Sandler's approval, he just embarrassed himself badly. Bert's inability to read the room or understand that he can't always be the main character would be a reoccurring issue in the future. He became the laughing stock of the comedy community, but it did not slow him down for one second. He put together the Hot Summer Nights comedy tour, which allowed fans to see him live just like they would a drive-in movie, with the show projected on a massive film screen and the audio playing through their car stereos. understand that he can't always be the main character would be a reoccurring issue oh why did that for sure the he became the laughing stock of the comedy community that. but it did not slow him down for one second he put together the hot summer nights comedy tour which allowed fans to see him live just like they would a drive-in movie with the show projected on a massive film screen and the audio playing through their car stereo one thing i'll never understand is how not understand oh no not understand like when COVID was on, at the peak of COVID, these comedians were doing everything in their power to do these shows. And I was thinking to myself, like, is your comedy that good that people need to go to this length to go and see it? What are you really saying of any value that should require this amount of, like, 
work to make happen like like as as a as a as a hustle as a way to get your content out there and to keep performing and to keep the lights on to pay your bills fair enough but it's a part of me that also felt like i don't know maybe taking a break from your stand-up for a couple of years is a good thing you know do we really need to go and sit in our cars and watch you on a projector and shit like you don't really you know what i mean we're not really missing out on much I don't know. These performances are awkward since the comedian can't really hear the laughter, but a lot of comedians used Bert's- Exactly, Koyla. Just stay home and eat, take out the rest of it. I, I don't know. I don't know. Format to save themselves from going bankrupt during the pandemic. He also secured another Netflix original, this time a reality TV show called The Cabin with Bert Kreischer. Wow, bro. Bert's done a lot in it. He's actually achieved a lot. Unironically, he's achieved quite a bunch. I forgot all about this stuff. That cabin show, I forgot all about that. He must have made a lot of money in the last five years, isn't it? Like, he must have made more money in the last five years than he probably made in his whole career. Maybe. Fucking hell. Sure. The show's premise is that Bert's life is moving 1,000 miles per hour and he needs isolation for healing and detoxing. He invites celebrity guests to a cabin in the woods to partake in various self-improvement activities that none of them really take seriously. There were plenty of hilarious moments, but every episode features a serious segment where Bert talks about his problems to his guests. This show could be perceived as Bert giving more visibility to various comedians. Others just look at it as a way for Bert to be the center of attention, projecting his problems onto other important people. The 2021 slash 2022 Birdie Boy tour was ranked number four in the top 10 highest grossing tours of the year, wow. achieving a gross revenue of 23,581,000. Yo. Fucking hell. That's incredible, bro. That's incredible, to be fair. Considering Bert's stand-up content and what it's like and hearing his jokes... He made 23 million and did 148 shows. Wow. Again, that's proof that he actually has real fans, though, to be fair. Burst one person you can never say is bought in views and shit. You can tell he has a fan base. It might not be for you. It might not be for me. But he definitely has legit fans, like way more fans than haters. Burst definitely a good example of it. And the proof is in the fucking pudding, right? Look at those numbers. He definitely has a lot of fans. Even during the pandemic, all those tours you're doing, those car show tours, they were selling really well. Do you know what I mean? People would come out to go see him, you know, at a drive through and shit. So clearly people love what he does. But I just can't get it because, you know, I think the comedy is pretty subpar. But fair play to him. Fair play to him thousand dollars selling 369,000 tickets over the course of 148. Exactly, Space Kai. You don't sell out arenas without fans. Exactly exactly that's one thing you can't fake arena sellouts goes on top of this he was vlogging doing the two bears one cave podcast weekly uploading his own burt cast weekly as well as featuring on any other comedians pod who would have him he turned his iconic machine story into a full-blown feature film it was a critical failure but his fans loved it the film secured 10 million dollars at the box office but the 20 million dollar budget made this film kind of a flop mm. regardless burt was one of the most successful comics in the world but this lifestyle was destroying him he always had been a heavier guy. Around 220 pounds was a comfortable weight for him. During his tour, he reached over 260 pounds, which he clearly- Big up Crash, appreciate it, brother. Triumphs and traumas, you relive them both the same. 100%, man, 100%. I guess, I usually have this way of like, I guess the only way you can re- How do you, how do you avoid that? New goals? Maybe? Or maybe there is, this is, this is a weird thing to say. Let's say this, let me say this. Maybe, here's what you do. Maybe the way to like, make sure you're not caught in that infinite loop is that you spend, is that you have periods in your life where you're trying to relive your triumphs, right? Or you're trying to relive your best years, whatever it may be. But then there's a specific time in your life where you turn that switch off. And you dedicate yourself to your family, to your relationship, to service of others. But there's a time where you switch it off. Maybe that's the key. And maybe that's the sad part of it when you see people that don't have that ability to switch it off. It's like a, 
Brendan Schub's wife in a way, in a weird way, right? Weird example, but maybe her. Like you see yourself as a hot girl, so you can never turn off that part of your brain, or you can never just be the mum now and be happy to be a mum. You always have to kind of have that hot girl image out there also. So you can never let go of that image, which kind of makes you look a bit sad because it's sort of like you can never kind of grow up and you're mentally stuck at a certain point. Does that make sense? Maybe. I don't know. But also, to be fair to Bert, to be a successful stand-up comedian, I think part of it, you kind of have to be, especially these type of dudes, these podcast type of guys, you kind of have to be caught in a constant state of retardation if that makes sense you kind of have to be peter pan a little bit you kind of can't grow up you know it's like you have to be in a state of arrested development i think to be a those because those type of sign up communities have podcasts you're talking about dicks all the time you're talking about all this like stupid humor that usually you kind of grow up you grow out of but i think you have to keep that bit of you if you want to be a successful podcast comedian kind of type of that guy because maybe people are listening to Bert for that release. They wish they could be Bert. They wish they could get away with being the lad that drinks beers and hangs out and all that shit, right? They kind of want that lifestyle, but they can't have it. So I don't know. Maybe I'm psychoanalyzing it too much. Maybe it's not that deep. Who knows? But big up Crash. Appreciate you. really was not happy with. His face was puffy, his skin was bright red, and he just looked uncomfortable. But Bert has always struggled understanding his health. So when that, when I did Secret Time, I didn't realize that it already happened until they did the billboard of it. And they did the billboard and I go, that's not my stomach, my stomach's tight. And it was a, it was complete. Bert then goes on to say that he thought producers photoshopped a different man's stomach onto his body. They didn't. He is also steadfast in convincing everyone he is actually in great shape. And the that's body dysmorphia for real, isn't it? That's real body dysmorphia. Again, he could be playing into it, but that is really body dysmorphia. I get I get not realizing how fat you are, but thinking your belly has been photoshopped is fucking insane. This is like when you go like, I have legit the best shoulders. I do. <laughs> Hold on, I do. I, I have legit it. great shoulders. Like great fucking shoulders. I am fucking jacked. You're, I am low-key jacked. You're low-key. Feel my fucking arm. Just feel my arm. Just feel my arm. Why is it now everyone should feel comfortable in their own skin. But it seems like Bert says these things hoping for confirmation bias. He wants yes men around him. His friends are not trying to shame him. It's more likely they want him to hold himself accountable so that things don't get out of control. Because his weight and high blood pressure could be a direct result of his excessive alcohol consumption. Early morning beer buzz is no, like no. one of my favorite things in the world. No, don't understand that. And they're like, hey, come on in and get a drink. And I was like, no. I was like, God damn it, man. If this was any other day, I'd be like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I just double Tito's on a big glass, no lime. Can I get a second one? I'm just going to murder this one real quick. This guy, I mean, it's wild that he's alive. <laughs> Bert claims that he has this Mickey Mantle gene, which allows him to drink. I'm going to say this. I don't think it's wild that he's still alive. I think it makes perfect sense. If you actually drink like the rest of us, regular civilians out there, you drink it to kind of soothe your pain. You drink it to black out so you don't remember days so that, you know, you can get over whatever trauma you're going through to comfort yourself from the, you know, the hopelessness of your life and the inability for you to kind of reach your goals and your dreams and shit. That's when drinking destroys you. But I think... If you have everything given to you and you have a pretty comfortable life and you drink the way Bert does, you can live quite long because you're not drinking the same way that regular people drink, you know? You're just drinking for quote-unquote fun and pleasure, really. It's a bit different. I think when you're drinking and you're just a, a regular working-class guy trying to earn a wage, trying to keep a roof over your head, trying to keep your kids fed, trying to support your partner, the drinking takes a bit of a sinister and a darker turn because it's literally your only one comfort but if you're drinking like him as a part of your personality to have fun like you know it's different that's probably why he's still alive because i bet you a big part of people's you know death and whatever when it comes to addiction and drugs is usually because the other side of their lives like outside of the drinking is also fucked up 
and I'm sure this again, this is all woo woo shit, but I'm sure there's some sort of emotional imbalance plus the that can really fuck you over and then you tap out. I'm sure that is part of it. Again, I'm I'm, I'm speaking about us here. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm sure that's an element to it. If you're somebody that has a dad that works a good job, a mum that's working well, you have grown up in a sort of middle class family, and you're drinking the way that he does, and you you can afford to be in college for six years for goodness sake. Oh yeah, big up Uche. Well, go on. Big up Uche. What's good? What's good? What's good? I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm in the wrong here. Who knows? Drink all night and work all day with no sleep. Uh, party all night. <laughs> get up the next morning and put in work <laughs> and perform like a. Ch I saw no nah, fuck Jake Paul. I'm not doing that again. After Jake Paul and Dylan Dennis, I refuse to watch any Paul brothers fights. I refuse. No more Paul brother fights. No more Paul brother fights. After Jake Paul and fucking Dylan Dennis, I'm oh, sorry, Logan Paul and Dylan Dennis, that absolute shit show. I'm never watching a Paul fight again. I don't give a fuck. Especially Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury. Fuck off. Never again. They're not getting me again. They're not scamming me. They got me last time. They got me good. I'm gonna hold my hands up. They got me good. They got me well and good. They sold me a fucking they sold me a fight. They sold me a blockbuster event. I got sold the whole dream. I watched it never again because I think it made me angry. It's not their fault either. It's not their fault. They've got a business. They're hustlers. They're fucking good businessmen. They know what they're doing. It's not the Paul brothers' fault. But I refuse to put myself through that again. I refuse. I refuse. More power to you if you want to watch it. Apologies that I'm not covering it. But I refuse because I remember how angry I was. Some of you were on stream when I watched it. I remember how angry I was watching that fucking Dylan that is. Yeah. Never again. Never again. Even Dylan. No more fights for Dylan either. You know, you don't get my time. Never. Champion on fumes. But then, I'm telling you, man, it's John Daly's got it. Yeah. Babe Ruth had it. Right. It's just those people. I mean, to, to be fair, I didn't even know he was fighting today. I swear to God. Until you guys mentioned in the chat, I had no idea Jake Paul was even fighting. So I don't think I'm the only one who doesn't you know who, who stopped tuning in i think even general the coverage has kind of slowed down on those kind of guys because you can there's only so many times you can scan people with those type of fights you know you have to deliver at one point so whatever hopefully he wins or whatever but yeah that's it he compares his lifestyle to mickey mantle and babe ruth two successful athletes that were also functioning alcoholics who died 30 years too soon if there's a single clip on the internet that represents bert it's this one. Ooh, what do we think about that? What do we think about that? What do you think about that? It says here, Mickey Mantle, age of death, 63 years. Babe Ruth died, 53 years old. Do we think Bert outlives both of these guys? He's in his 50s now, isn't it, right? Bert's about 51 now, right? Do you think he outlives Babe Ruth and Mickey Mantle? Babe Ruth died when he was 53. Mickey Mantle died when he was 63. My theory is this. I think Burt outlives most of his comedic peers. So it wouldn't, again, this is bad to say aloud, but it wouldn't be surprised me if Tom died before Burt. I just know so many people like Burt in my family even, or people that I've known actually, I mean, who just don't do anything to look after themselves, but they somehow get away with it. So I've got a feeling Bert outlives everybody. Weirdly enough, even even a Rogan, right? He'll outlive all these guys that are doing fucking IVs and doing T TRT and all this sort of stuff. He outlives all of these guys. I bet you. It's too soon. If there is a single clip on the internet that represents Bert, it's this one. I will never quit drinking. Who is that guy? He's I cool. will never quit drinking. I will always make sure that I can keep my body healthy enough so that I can always drink. At a brunch, someone goes, should we do mimosas? And then the waiter goes, actually, we have bottomless mimosas. And you're like, this is going to be the best day ever. Sitting. Isn't this like, if you replace booze with anything else and you said that, that'd be crazy, isn't it? Imagine if you said to somebody, I'm never going to stop doing coke. I'm never going to stop doing MDMA. I'm never going to stop doing Xanax. I'm never going to stop doing heroin. I'm never going to stop doing MDMA. Imagine you replace booze with those drugs. And I'm going to keep my body in a place where I could do all those drugs for as long as possible. Can you imagine? And booze is the most destructive, really, isn't it? Because it's the most easily accessible, too. Fuck.
Sitting on the Joe Rogan podcast, drinking while his friends watch a video of him talking about how much he loves alcohol, while reciting the video under his breath. His overwhelming success combined with him lacking awareness was reaching a tipping point, and things were starting to get dark. Best alone drinking you can ever do, in my opinion, and now we're getting into the weeds on it, mm -hmm. is alone behind someone's back, like Christmas shopping. And your <laughs> wife says, all right, let's all split up. And you go, yeah. cool. And it's like, it's like 11 o'clock on a Sunday and they just opened that bar by the elevator in the Beverly Center and you just sneak over and you go, hey man, can I get a double jack on the Ross, Ox for Ross? And they're like, sure. And you just have it and you just go, let's just, and then you're yeah. off. And then you're like, yeah. yeah. And then you just, a little sneak one, sneak yeah. it. I mean, I look at like men, I am so far from a man. I am so far. Far from a man, you know, like there's a, some self actualization. What is that's happening, been happening today? Like I'm so far from like a man who goes, yeah, everyone else first, then me. It's not how I think. I go me, and then oh, there are other people here. Talk to your therapist about any of this. Like, will you bring this up? You know, uh, no. This is the stuff to talk about. No, this isn't. This isn't therapy stuff. Yes, it is. When you talk about men versus me. It's clear as day that Bert is suffering. His friends would try to help him, but you cannot help someone who doesn't think they have a problem. You think that you're an alcoholic? No, I've been, I've, I've run it through the ringer a few times. Dr. Drew's not that miss. Oh yeah. And I've, I've talked to him about it. He's like, you're not an alcoholic. You just drink too much. He's like, Al alcoholism's <laughs> Dr. Drew is a fucking grift as well, isn't it, right? You're not an alcoholic, you just drink too much. different being powerless to alcohol is different than drinking a lot yeah and I, th I think same with like i mean a guy like ron white i think he was a big drinker i don't think he was an alcoholic because he just quit one doctor told bert he's not an alcoholic and he uses that as his justification he says he can quit drinking whenever he wants he says he's not powerless to alcohol he wants to be just healthy enough so that he can keep drinking and to all of our surprises he actually did quit i'm going sober for for 23 days oh yeah, that's not right. five days Thank I don't believe that in the slightest, to be fair. Anytime Bert says he's going sober, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And the proof is in the pudding. He still looks like shit, so I don't believe it. And after three weeks, he said this. On keto, day 21, no booze, no sugar, no carbs. And I feel fantastic. Or the fact that I have no booze to cloud it but I feel phenomenal if you're thinking. More energy, thinking clearly, not feeling hungry, sleeping better. He says his blood pressure dropped to the point where he didn't have to take his medication anymore. Bert was shocked at how good his life could be. I'm down 40 pounds. I haven't had alcohol or sugar in 83 days. I've been primarily carnivore. That all ends today. Bird's celebration for his sobriety was by getting absolutely hammered on the Fully Loaded Cruise, which was a multi-day long private cruise slash comedy show that he spent one year planning. Bird's goal for getting sober was to prove to himself that he wasn't dependent on it. Now today he is going on podcast after podcast talking about how transformed he is. You don't realize how deep you are in like obesity and drinking and keeping how deep you are in the hole right until you get uh, your head a little bit out of it and then yeah. you start feeling better and like little things are feeling a lot better for me but i'm How not I'm... an alcoholic <laughs> <laughs> this guy people have asked me that so guy. often and i go no and they're like really i think that you've told me directly that you think you have a problem no i have a problem with everything with food with sex like yeah. I, I i everything i have a problem with everything that's just my personality there's two types of people you have an you have an addictive personality with everything else except for booze. There's addicts and there's partiers. Partiers stop when the when the party's over. Yeah. And then addicts just never stop. That's true. And I was like, oh yeah, I, I stop when the party's over. I love that every few months, Bert gets healthier and it's a big thing and then it's right back off the rails. This is a sad reality for many people watching. You likely have a friend or loved one who is struggling with some sort of addiction. You can see it, but they can't, or they ignore it. You just want the best for them, but if they don't want it for themselves, then there really isn't anything you can do. You can't force them or shame them. None of it will work. And if they continue to spiral, you'll still feel guilty. You'll think that you could have done more to help. Bert brags about his Mickey Mantle gene, but Mickey Mantle died at age 63. That would mean Bert has roughly 10 years left to live. Wow. Sobering. Sobering, sobering, sobering. Now, will he listen to any of that? Probably not. 
Um, and does it matter? Probably not either. I don't know. I'm just somebody that doesn't, I don't know, I guess I save my empathy and my sympathy for people who somewhat deserve it. If he willingly chooses to live this sort of life, whatever happens, happens in it, to be honest. If you willingly decide to live this sort of lifestyle when you've been given every advantage under the sun, right, then it kind of is on you, isn't it? Why should we be sad about how you live your life if you willingly decide to do what you're doing? That's my opinion. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But yeah, big up Patrick CC. Brilliant fucking video. Loved it. Absolutely enjoyed it. Check out his channel. I'm sure most of you are aware of him anyway. He's got 1.6 million subscribers anyway, mate. I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I'm just I'm just late finding out about him. But I'm sure most of you know who he is already. But yeah, big up Patrick CC. Big up Patrick CC. Um, okay, moving on. What's, Jesus Christ, it's been nearly six hours. I don't even know. <gasps> oh, shit. Okay, cool. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yo, um, okay. Wow. I honestly didn't think it was that long. Um, let me check what else have I got here. Uh, um, we did Brendan Adversity Kings. What else we got to do here? Is it Box New? Never... What's that? New rock bottom. Okay, cool. Let's do something else. Let's switch over. Let's do some but let's do some Brendan content. Let's switch over. Because we did enough Bert. Let's move on. Let's fucking move on from that, right? Let's move on from that. Too much. Not too much on the fucking Brendan. Not too much on Bert, sorry. Let's move on to something else. What's else you gotta talk about here? We did that. We did this. Um we spoke about that. What else you got to speak about here? Uh, Mark Carly, we did already. We did the Whitney Cummings thing already. Oh, let's talk about it. Yeah, let's just let's, let's talk. Let's, let's, this is quite good. LeBron James exposed by Shaw for having a baddie wrangler. This is it. So, um, LeBron James talks negatively about celebrities all while exposing himself. Yeah, very true. Let's play this clip. This is pretty funny as well. This is pretty funny. Very, very. Usually, again, I, I don't know if it's me. If you're involved in some fuck shit you probably don't talk about the fuck shit topic. You just avoid it because you don't want any eyes to be on you, you know? You know, you, you sort of don't want anyone to kind of hear about the shit that you get up to. So you just avoid talking about it in general. But of course, Bapa just goes, right? Bapa just goes. So he will talk willingly, openly about loads of things just because, you know, it's content. So let's see what he has to say. If LeBron James has side pieces... Mm. He does. He's so Brendan. <laughs> stop sorry, vibing. I'm so sorry. Well, can I let me make my yeah, point? Yeah, go, yeah, go, go. Let me make yeah. my point. Right, yeah, yeah. Someone like that, mm -hmm. he's super smart about it. Yeah, but what does the that best. mean? The best. No, no. You what never engage with like, him. You only fuck mutes. No, you no, never engage dude. with him. He has a team that yeah. approaches the girls. They sign a contract. That guy's the, thirty-eight. You go care to, of his, to body. his room, and then it's just. <laughs> <laughs> Flashback. So not only was Mark Brendan's handler, but he was also his baddie wrangler. Mark was talking to all these girls for Brendan. He would text Mark and tell him what to say. And it looked like this was a full-time job for Mark. It was like every day there's a new baddie to respond to. And even on Mark's birthday, Brendan texted him. He's like, dude, I know it's your birthday, but when you get a moment, do you mind checking on the baddies for me? <laughs> if LeBron James has some... You know what I find really interesting? I find really interesting that Brent Chris doesn't understand the idea of hooking up with women willingly, you know, being uh what's your thing called? Willingly playing outside of home, whatever that fucking term is. There's definitely women out there that are gonna be wi a willing participants in your adultery, for sure, who would play their position right. But Chris doesn't understand that logic or doesn't understand that that could be a possibility and thinks that they have to be mutes. Like effectively, basically saying that all women like to chit chat. They all like to fucking expose and whatever. It's like no, they only like to expose you because you're a piece of shit. That's why they exposed you. But there's plenty of willing participants in debauchery out there that are willing to do that. You know, if you treat them with some level of respect, doesn't understand that. I love that how Brendan also thinks if you don't engage, it doesn't exist. Don't engage. Don't engage them. It's like bro, like come on, bro. 
come on if anything there's probably more you probably would waste this you probably put in too much energy doing all that shit than rather just being being committed to the one person you're with you're probably better just doing that than doing what the stuff they're doing advocating for this sort of stuff and then on the other side of things these guys are married men with wives why are you even talking about this anyway you know like what is this content what is this conversation are you all considering like and if you're eric griffin why are you talking about it you should be like i wouldn't say you should feel lucky that you actually have someone that loves you and would willingly let you come inside of them but maybe right the fact that you've got one person who's willing to let you fucking dump loads inside of them you should be happy and grateful that that's a possibility just you know humbly honor that as opposed to thinking about baddies you can hook up with on the road i don't know maybe i've been the wrong here but but just to just imagine how it must make you feel as a woman to see these clips online. You're the partner of these guys. You're seeing them talking about this sort of shit. Like, what? <laughs> I don't know. Like, and it's not like I'm being a prude or I'm being a fucking normie or whatever. But surely there's other bits of content. That you, it's like, think, think about this. There's a clip going around of Andre 3000 talking about why he did the he did the flute album right Andre 3000 Freestacks put out an album where he's just playing the flute people want to hear him rap and he basically says I have nothing to rap about because I'm a 40 plus year old man like he doesn't even know what to say in his raps and he's one of the best rappers of his you know in the history of fucking rap and he's saying I have nothing to say because I'm a 40 year old man I don't feel like I could say anything worthwhile but these guys are 40 plus year olds with kids and they're still talking like they're teenagers like do they ever grow up no is there no other conversations you could you could talk about nothing it's just all this shit how to get away with cheating who's hot who's not who do you fuck who you wouldn't fuck it's like is that all you have to talk about really wow okay again maybe i'm a prude maybe i'm a fucking normie maybe i'm a basic bitch who knows that probably is true but i just think to myself if i was these guys ages and i had kids and family the last thing i'm doing is talking about this shit on the podcast openly like this as well like you just sound like a like a redact but hey maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Um, let's see here. Brendan Brian brings up Joe Rogan. Let's see what this is about. Brian brings up Joe Rogan. What are you saying here? We we're just talking about trucks and the subculture that is trucks. I want to get you over onto the truck side, dude. dude I got to get on the truck side, dude. I spent all morning at King Shocks in Orange Grove, California. <sighs> it's crazy they're here. So it's only about an hour. Yeah. Only about an hour drive. Yeah. It it's the it's like the it's the the bee's knees when it comes to uh, off road suspension. They, they're the guys. Man, that's like me talking about wide receivers in the NFL. Yeah. Like me fake that i'm into trucks would be like can you imagine if i was like all right this is my angle i want to make a lot of money guys <laughs> i'm into trucks now oh boy yeah it'd be tough it, it would be like well, that thing it'd where be a good debut video of uh, me just taking my trx and driving over your your tesla <laughs> and you being like yeah yes and i'm not gay anymore well joe, joe i don't rogan, like men's anymore rogan, <laughs> rogan had the best isn't he kind of isn't he kind of dissing brendan by saying what he's saying brian He's almost saying, like, this truck thing is Brenda's new grift. No? Uh, description of what it's like when you're faking something. He said, that he was talking about this one guy, and he goes, he says he's straight, but whenever he talks about women, it sounds like a guy who is pretending to speak French, but he doesn't know French. <laughs> it was such a great lot of money. Guys, I'm into trucks now. Oh, boy. 
Yeah, it'd be tough. It, it would be like well, that thing it'd where... It'd be a good debut video of uh, me just taking my TRX and driving. Big up, Sarlux. Appreciate you, brother. Great stream tonight. Keep going. Uh -huh. Big up, Sarlux. Appreciate you. Thank you for the super chat, brother. Thank you. Uh, let me like your comment. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, bro. Of your your Tesla, <laughs> and you being like, yeah, yes, and I'm not gay anymore. Well, Joe, Joe I don't Rogan, like men's anymore. Rogan, Rogan had the best uh, description. Why does Brendan love these outdated memes? He can't let go of these outdated memes, in it. He loves a good outdated meme, and he runs them into the ground, bro. He runs them into the ground. He can fucking run a meme, a joke into his fucking. On its last fucking legs. Jesus. Description of what it's like when you're faking something. He said that he was talking about this one guy and he goes, he says he's straight, but whenever he talks about women, it sounds like a guy who is pretending to speak French. Big up space guy. Appreciate you, brother. Have a well-deserved cuppa with honey after such <laughs> yeah. a epic stream. You know what, Gwan? Yeah, I'm actually going to pull myself up on another one, actually. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate you. <laughs> you know the vibes. Maybe I won't go for the coffee now. Maybe I'll go for the tea. I'll go for the night because I've got a nice, I've got a nice heavy PG tips bag in the fucking cupboard. Heavy one. You know what I mean? Heavy, heavy one. But yeah, this is interesting. This clip. Thank you. I appreciate you, brother. Space guy, I appreciate you. Brian sounds like he's slightly trolling Brendan here. What he's saying about maybe I should get into trucks now. As if it's like a grift, which it is obviously, isn't it? But I love that Brendan isn't noticing what he's actually saying. He's actually trolling, poking fun. I don't know. 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 Maybe he is, maybe he is. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> yes, watching this was quite good as well. Brian finds his demons at home and Papa not realising he's in the same boat. Let's play this one. This is pretty good as well. So I'm sitting in, I'm sitting there at my the, the kitchen table. My kid is walking around. My wife is just kind of doing her thing. And the nanny, we have a nanny now because my wife had to run some errands and I had to go Slight to work. Slight flex, okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, <laughs> we have a nanny now. As if they never had a nanny before. All of these guys have nannies. I love it, right? They're like, talk about how much they work hard, how hard it is to balance a household, but they all hire Guatemalan, Mexican, Honduran ladies to basically bring up their kids while they go and play make-believe outside. Love it. Uh, so I'm sitting there and I'm trying to think of like ideas of how to stay relevant in this TikTok world at 56. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine how soulless your life must be? Instead of looking after your kids. Instead of looking after your kids. You're thinking about ideas of how to make yourself the main attraction. How can I be number one? It's I, tough. And I go like this. I go, I'm just sitting there. And I, I've come up with a thousand ideas. Hey, sure. I haven't really, you know. Come to fruition, and, uh, yeah. yeah, and so uh, I go, <laughs> I go, ah, I go, I'm looking at the my view and I go, <laughs> I go, do you think I should have a live, a live news show every day for like 20 minutes? And I just heard her, she goes like this, she goes, definitely not. <laughs> He's Absolutely not. I'm like, there, there comes a point where you just have to give up, isn't it? There's some honor. I think there's some grace and there's some respect in deciding, hey, my time as a star, my time as the main attraction, as the main character in all scenarios, my time as playing adult make believe is over. This is the time now to give my attention and my time to my family. Maybe. I'm like, what? No. no, she goes, no. No, that's you have not to plan for that. That's it's not, not going to work. That's not. And I got mad for a second. I was like, but she's then, right. Then she goes, hey, do you want, um, do you want to get, do you want to pick up some packs and then maybe some paper towels? To me? And I go, no, I don't want to do any of that. I, I don't want to do any of that. I want to figure out how to stay relevant. I got, I snapped back at her. I got all pissy. Yeah. And I was like, sorry. Yeah, you're going through it, man. You figure it out. The guy with no help, you'll figure it out, man. <laughs>
That's the best, right? That's <laughs> nothing best. better. That's the best. Hey, I, I got to make some money. I also, I got this. Hey, man, this. I'm having a tough time paying the rent. Dude. I have figure out. Uh, you'll no. Yeah, big up Assad. Appreciate it, brother. The outdated meme thing he does is that the same as someone who brags about high school as a grown man, stuck in a time where he was doing well. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. That's a very good point. Maybe that meme represents a time period in his life when he was doing well so he reverts back to it all the time because it resonated more back then but it's so horrible when you hear it again and again it's like bro like we're over that now can we move past it no we can't it's like somebody constantly posting re throwback thursdays i'm sure we all have them in our social circle or on people we follow online i have so many people that i follow that love to post a throwback thursday all the time they're posting. Every single day is a throwback Thursday day. It's like raw, man. Like you know, it's a bit that's a bit sad. It's like eek. It's like doing two two days. You'll figure it out. Yeah, you get it. Oh, you get it. Uh, I'll be homeless or anything. I love how they're like publicly talking about how hard it is to raise a family when they're the sole providers when their profession depends on them being somewhat relevant, right? It's like they're both kind of talking about it um, in a jokingly way because I guess they've both realised now that the residual impact of Rogan has kind of waned ever since they're not in Rogan's inner circle as they once were. It's not as comforting anymore. It's not as easy as it once was before just to kind of rein in the money. They're having to work on their own a little bit, which is probably the hardest they probably have to work. It wouldn't surprise me if Brendan says... If Brendan would say the last couple of years have been the hardest he's actually worked because it's all been kind of him without the Rogan bump just like, you know, easing him along. Wild, wild times, man. wild times. Um, but yeah, again, I just think with Brian, you know, big up Crash, I appreciate you. This chat is super. Yeah, yeah, I've got, I've got, I've got one of the best chats out there, to be fair. I watch a lot of content out there. I watch a lot of fucking live streams. I watch a lot of them. I'm in a lot of live stream chats and this is definitely one of the best ones. Everyone here is having a good laugh, having a good time, chilling, hanging out, busting joke. You know, be not taking yourselves too seriously and just having a good old fucking laugh. That's what you need to be doing. Having a laugh, pointing and laughing at people who are far more successful <laughs> and monetarily rich maybe than some of us are at this moment brings us a lot of comfort. Yeah? Because what else is there to do in life, right? What else is there to do? This is actually quite fun. <laughs> so I'm happy we're all doing this together. <laughs> oh, I fucking love it. I fucking love it. Big up the chat. Big up Crash. Appreciate you also. Um, let's continue here. What's we got? We did that. We did this. Oh, this is... No, we did that already. I think I watched that already um yeah this is a good one too this is a good one <laughs> look at the title diddler unironically wondering if he has to keep up not cheating on his wife brilliant clip brilliant fucking clip because if i think about me in my 30s i was a fucking dumb dumb you know one more time one more time one more time i was fun because if i think about me in my 30s I was a fucking dumb dumb, you know. I was funny and being silly and shit, but I was living like a dumb dumb, and now I'm living right. But then it's also like X without. Do I have to just keep living right for forty more years? <laughs> imagine, imagine wondering aloud if you have to live a monogamous, almost monogamous, probably not monogamous life where you're looking after your family and where they come first, where you are a grown-up, you'd like to spend time with your family and raising your kids. Imagine wondering aloud if that is the life that you should be living. If that's worth it. Maybe he what? So what, you want to relive your fucking 30s again when you're fucking 50? But yeah, look at his face, bro. Like... Look at that. Look at the bags. Look at that, how droopy that one eye is. 
that's all the stress from diddling 16 year olds knocking against his forehead here the veins popping out leaking into his eye and making his eye get you know get a little bit of a stroke that's what happens when you touch kids you might not get thrown in prison you might not get punished for it but the face never lies have you ever met have you ever met an attractive peter exactly have you ever met a peter that doesn't look like a gargoyle exactly have you ever met a pedo that has, doesn't look like they say that for 100 nights? Exactly. That's that's part of the punishment the universe gives you. You might not get caught for it. You might not end up in prison, but the face never lies. There is such a thing as pedo face. It does exist. There is such a thing as pedo face. And when you see it, you see it. What Have you ever seen a time when you see the pedo, you're like, oh, I couldn't believe that guy's a pedo. You see somebody that gets, that gets the kids with pedo, you see their mugshot, you're like, I knew it. There's something about his face. I knew it. Never, There's never been an occasion in the human history where you've seen a pedo and you've not been like, I fucking knew this guy touched kids. I fucking knew it. <laughs> so that's the punishment, you know? That's the punishment. That is the fucking punishment. So, yeah. Big up him, I guess. Big up him. Uh, moving on from that one. Um, what's your talk about here? Da, da, da. Oh yeah, Brendan on Oz Ozempic. This is another one. So, what's going on with Brendan? To me, it's pretty clear that he's on Ozempic, right? He's on Ozempic, but I don't understand why he's not being honest and saying so. That's the one thing that's confusing me. So I'd like to know, you guys in the chat, why do you think he's being so coy about not being honest about being Ozempic? Because he talks about everything else, right? He talks about the fucking, what's that thing he takes? The happy hippo shit, the other Kratom shit. But for some reason, when it comes to Ozempic, he doesn't want to admit it. When This is the skinniest I've ever seen Brendan, ever. He's never, ever been this skinny, even when he was fighting. Don't get me wrong. The Ozempic build is very distinctive because he looks very frail. He doesn't look like he's got any muscle mass. But he definitely is a lot skinnier than he's ever been, especially in recent years. And he's not snacking on camera as much, you know? He's not on camera eating donuts and all that sort of shit, you know? He's always nibbling. He's not nibbling as much, but he's definitely lost a bunch of weight. So he's clearly been on Ozempic. So I wonder why he's not willing to admit it. Maybe it's part of the rain energy drink thing. Maybe he thinks if he admits it, it's like a, cause it's a cheat kind of way. I don't really know. What do you mean? What do you mean you think it's okay? What do you mean, Adam, Andrew Tate? You said, I think it's okay. that It's a, It's actually hilarious. You think he's... So you don't think he's on Ozempic, Andrew Tate? What do you think? You think he, he lost weight from dieting? The guy that's been on every diet and never ever sticks to it? He's definitely on Ozempic. So anyway, again, I don't know. We could, we could, You could be right, I could be wrong who knows we don't know his history he could be but from what i from what i remember of brendan he always lies about his diets he never sticks to them even when he was in the ufc he was never really in like trim 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 shape right um wh who knows why maybe because his body just doesn't you know whatever who knows but it seems odd that now is the one time that he's you know he suddenly, it coincides with the time when that drug becomes really popular. Suddenly now he's also the skinniest he's ever been. It just seems to be, to make sense that he's probably on it. What do you think? Okay, because Ozempic is stabbing yourself in the stomach three times a day. I think he'd do it. If if that's the bare minimum to do it, to, to, to get skinny, I reckon he can, he can muster that. Being on, be, for instance, being on a very strict carnivore diet is way harder than doing Ozempic. Even if you're lazy, let's be fair. Actually sticking to a carnivore diet, actually sticking to it, actually doing it for real, actually doing keto for real is much harder than being on Ozempic. Come on, let's be real. Whether the injection is five times a day or three times a day, it doesn't matter. You put on a, you put on a fucking reminder on your phone when to do the fucking injections. You just stab yourself. You see the results instantly. Your brain immediately puts together a uh, action and reward, whatever, cycle. 
You see every time you take the fucking stab, you you lose a bunch of weight, you look better in your clothes, whatever all that shit is, you you keep it up easily. Way more than a fucking actual diet that takes longer to kind of see the effects of, especially working out and shit. No. I believe he's I I believe you could do it. I believe you could do it. Um, people are saying here debating if it's one injection per week or three injection per day. I'm not really too sure actually. How's how's it work out? Let's find out. Let's go, let's let's do a little Google and see. Um, let's see what we can say here. How many injections? Or Zempic? I don't know. Let's see. How many injections of Zempic for weight loss? Let's see what it says here. Courtesy of Google. Google saying the following. What is the dosage of Ozempic weight loss? Ozempic is a once weekly injection that comes in 0 0.5 milligram, 0 0.5 milligram, 0 0.1 milligram, and 2 milligram doses. Individuals are typically directed to begin with 0 0.25 milligrams for four weeks, gradually increasing their dosage over four week intervals. That's minor, man. Come on. He could do that easily. I believe Brendan could do that. He could definitely commit to doing one week um, stabbing himself in the stomach to get the results that he wants because I don't believe he did it the traditional way or the normal way, which is just, you know, changing your diet and working out a bunch because he hasn't, again, notice, when's the last time you heard Brendan talking about going to the gym? For those of you that check Brendan's fucking social media, when's the last time you've seen Brendan post a picture of himself on a bike, on the trails, lifting weights? And Brennan documents everything. When's the time you heard him talk about that? I think it's fairly obvious he's on it. If he's not on it, fair play, but I think he's on it. I think he's on it personally. I think he's personally on it. But again, it's just interesting that he's not he's not mentioning it and not speaking about it when he speaks about every other drug that he does. But yeah, he's looking the skinniest he's ever looked, to be fair. Again, who knows? It could be stress because of Whitney Cummings' baby as well. Maybe that's why. Maybe it's stress from Whitney Cummings' baby. Maybe that baby coming up, right? That baby he's got to look after, Whitney Cummings' baby. Maybe this is why. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Who fucking knows? The debate will come, will can wrangle on. We'll soon have a realization. Soon. I'm sure he'll talk about it at one point and we'll figure out what's happening. Let's see. Let's fucking see. Who knows? Let's see who's true, right or wrong when the evidence presents itself. Maybe one day he'll break his silence and he'll tell us exactly what's going on. But I have a theory, I have a feeling that most likely that motherfucker is on fucking Ozempic. That's my feeling. But again, I could be wrong. Who knows? Um, what else we got to talk about here? We spoke about that, we spoke about this. Um, what else we talk about? We did that, we did this. We did a uh, Burt Kreischer rock bottom. No, we didn't do rock bottom, did we? Burt Kreischer's new rock bottom. What's that one? Is that a uh, well, joke world? Let's see that one. Yeah, jo joke world. Ro joke world's got a Burt Kreischer clip as well. Everyone's cashing in on the Burt Kreischer fucking chips, isn't it? Fuck it. Oh, let me, let me end the poll too. I got this poll up for ages, so let me end the poll. Um, what are you guys saying here? Um, do you think Papa is Whitney's baby daddy? Most of you are saying yes, forty percent. 27% no and 32% Axe J. Okay, fair play. Thank you for those of you who voted in the fucking poll. Appreciate you. I'm going to end it now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Duh, duh, duh. Cool. Done. Let's roll. Bert is fat is more than just one of the longest running gags in comedy. It's also been a viral... Bert's is fat is more than just one of the longest running gags in comedy. It's also been a viral meme, a mantra, and part of YMH lore. <laughs> but a few months ago, Bert Kreischer hit what he described as his new rock bottom after a shirtless picture of him throwing out the first pitch at a Cleveland Guardians game went viral because of the insane look of his 275 pound stomach, serving as an immediate wake up call for Bert and his new source of inspiration. Your stomach does look crazy right there. It, it looks doesn't crazy. look real. It doesn't.
And you look so happy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't know what's. I don't know there's sharks underneath me. I'm 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 the one guy going yeah. in the ocean. Great. Yeah. I just saw it. She goes, "Oh, buddy." I go, "What?" She goes, "You're not gonna like the way you look." Baby Walrus is happy, but Baby Walrus is all over the place, and it's fucking the most embarrassing. How long ago was this? Fucking, I don't know. Who knows? I, I mean, a year? No, no, no. Oh, fucking recent. Oh, okay. We've all seen Bert ride the weight loss roller coaster before. Starting in 2017, with the time he got down to 220 pounds during the Who is Fat competition, which took place on the Joe Rogan experience, a battle that Bert ended up losing to Tom Segura. Is that because of a weight? Is that just like a fat? It's an interesting build, isn't it? Is that because he lost, again, for those of you in the in the chat who know more about body fitness shit why does Bert look like that when he'd lost all that weight is that because he just lost water weight 17 with the time he got down to 200 he's or just his, or his body proportion he's got really skinny legs for his build in it but he's also got love handles and a big of a belly still wow he's got a really odd build he's got really skinny lacking in muscle legs but a really big upper body like his arms look quite big too don't you think his arms, upper body are way bigger and more defined than his actual legs. Hmm. 120 pounds during the Who is Fat competition, which took place on the Joe Rogan experience. A battle that Bert ended up losing to Tom Sig Like Tom looks a little bit more proportionate, you know, like in terms of his overall body thing. Although he's got a little bit of that knock. Tom's got, Tom, yeah, Tom definitely has got knock knees, doesn't it? He's got a little bit of that knock kneeness going on there, right? He's got that Zion, he's got the Zion Williams of knees. Um, or Zion Williamson, whatever his name is. is Zion Williamson, Zion Williams, whatever his fucking name is. But yeah, Bert's got an interesting build. Like, hmm. Gora, resulting in a punishment shaving of his beard. It looks so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, my oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Is this the, the last time, but the last time that fucking what's the thing was this one? Sober October was funny when I used to actually took take part in it. Sober October was actually a fun time. Um, Joe Rogan was a fun time. <laughs> Joe Rogan was a fun time. Oh, first time you shaved another man. Oh. Yeah, oh. but I've thought about it a lot. Oh. <laughs> Coila knees buckling under that ego. <laughs> Holding up the ego is fucking funny. <laughs> the next chapter in Bert's public fight against obesity was the now famous Sober October tradition, an annual ritual that was originally created to keep Bert on the straight and narrow. Can I discuss your belly real quick? Please. So it's always Tom and I have talked about this. You look like a trans man that's having quintuplets. <laughs> But in 2023, things were different. There was no group challenge this year. And without Tom and Joe egging him on, Burt embarked on this journey solo, losing an impressive 45 pounds since his first pitch reality check back in August. And despite being known for talking big game in the weight loss department for years now, Bert's latest venture looks to be more than a temporary fix. Instead of a monthly challenge, Bert's new aim is to shift parts of his lifestyle permanently. For example, he's already committed to a keto carnivore diet and says he feels great. The machine has also been taking longer breaks from alcohol and has begun to smoke more weed to help lay off the booze. Right now my energy levels through the fucking roof. And and I and I'm telling you, zero booze zero sugar pretty much steak and fish and a couple hot dogs every now and then no buns hold on joke what i like you but is this paid promotion joke what i love you but is this paid promotion is joke World running propaganda for these comedians now is joke World getting paid as part of the rollout is this part of the new rollout for comedians they pay joke World to make videos about their fucking wait what the fuck is going on here Nah, this is a new low. This is a new low for stand-up comedy, if this is true. Is Joe World involved in this rollout? Did Bert t tell him to make this video in the hopes that Bert sticks to the diet and then when he transforms himself and gets a six-pack at the end, he'll do another video? Is this a rollout? Yeah, comedy podcasting is over, man. It's done, isn't it? 
I'm such a fucking dummy. Exactly. I'm too not even trusting. I'm naive. I'm a not even trusting. That gives me the credit. I'm a dumb. I'm a stupid naive black cunt. That's what I am. Black stupid naive cunt. <laughs> This is crazy, bro. Joe Quo's running propaganda for these comedians. I will tell you, dinner parties are tedious. In keto and not drinking. Man, it's like they don't stop pouring wine for themselves. You're just sitting there going, for real? We're going to do it all? No, NJ, NJ, I heard what you said. You called me a black, naive piece of shit. I heard what you said. My ancestors are shaking right now. They heard what you said also. <laughs> One? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Open another bottle of wine. It's 1030. It's cool. No, no, no. I didn't want to read a book about Johnny Carson when I got home. I'm going to be tired as fucking shit. What's that? I'm sorry. The kids are here. I can't go outside and smoke pot. Oh, cool. No, this is great. Talk to me more about how suicide's an option. Incorporating keto, installing a smoothie. Oh, my God, man. Joe Quo's actually running propaganda for Burt Kreischer. He's getting paid for this rollout. It's like a, is this like a new, is this like the new, is this the new fucking, um, Sober October? Wow. Wow. My mind's kind of blown. I look at her, like, my mind is kind of blown. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Okay bar on tour cutting down on the booze and hitting the gym daily has transformed bird's entire existence not just in bmi but also in general quality of life i drove down my street today and i saw the trees like i've never seen them now i don't know if that's the f they saw all the views that joke has been getting they saw the content is largely positive because i said before when when i was making this stuff myself i said that as much as it's funny to have me and red bar these type of guys that exist you probably need to have the opposite. You probably need to have a platform that just sucks you off and that pr praises you because there's a lot of there's lots of stuff I'll about them, right? But I never thought it'd go this direction. I didn't think it'd go this far. It's one thing to talk glowingly about the podcast and talk about all the funny moments and stuff, but when you turn into a propaganda arm of the po of the podcast, that's when it gets a bit crazy. You can talk glowingly about them, but letting them use your platform to what? talk about how like and also why is this an achievement why is this something that we should be like celebrating for a degenerate alcoholic is now deciding at the age of 50 plus to get his life in order why should that be like that's not something to be like celebrated or lauded anything do you know what I mean like I don't you know that's not a big achievement this guy that has all the means in the world all the time in the world to and all the doctors and all the access to medical procedures and shit is getting his life in check in his mid-50s. We should be fucking, what, celebrating and clapping about that. Yeah. <sighs> fat going to my brain, or the fat leaving my body, or the fact that I have no booze to cloud it, but I feel phenomenal. From Chris Stefano, AKA Chrissy Intermittent Fasting, to Theo Vaughn working out with NFL players, this is all part of a current health trend hitting comedy. One of the most famous examples being Burt's best friend, Tom Segura, who lost a ton of weight after his gruesome basketball injury and has managed to <laughs> That would never not make me laugh. Friend Tom Segura, who lost a ton of weight after his gruesome basketball injury and has managed to successfully maintain his new image. Thanks in part to moderation, exercise, and every comic's new best friend, testosterone. So you do it in your ass. Yeah. How do you do it in your ass? I'll show you. Here, let me, let's, not, let's not try to everyone touch. You gotta wash your hands. To do your gear? I think. No, you don't. For real? Give me this. Okay. Okay. So, number one, you go like this. Alcohol swab there. Okay. Okay. Wait, hold on. Let me let me do the drawing. I like enjoying my gear. You're just gonna... these mid. Honestly, man. Like us regular people have to fucking make do with white rice and chicken and broccoli and shit. Waking up at five a.m. to go for runs, getting in workouts between our kids sleeping, doing push-ups in fucking hallways, working out in shitty gyms with mislabeled dumbbells and shit or with no labels you know these guys get to fucking have trainers that they fly around the world with them testosterone ozempic 
And I'd be, I'd be like, it's like, okay. You told me I could do it. No, I'm going to fill it up. You're going to, I don't, I'm afraid you'll overfill my gear. Where do you shoot it in your ass? In the butt cheek, just right in your cheek. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. You don't want to do it like that. That's how I do it. No, take the air out first. That's how you want to do it. Take they're, they're doing they're doing it on the pot. Okay, cool, good. Take it all the way down to thirty. It's fine. Let's take, it to 30. take it to thirty, okay. and put it in. Someone in shot the, gear before. And now pull back. It's the same. No, it's probably flowing better. It's flowing a little bit better. So how much do you shoot? Twenty. Oh shit! Does it mean I'm manlier? I think it means you need more. My testosterone is really fucking low. Really? Yeah, but there's so many bubbles in my gear now. No, you're fine. You can put a little bubble in your body, right? A little bit's fine. Yeah, take it down to 28. Who's going to know? I do that all the time. I know you do. Take it up, back up to 25. Just, yeah, you're good. Don't do too crazy. 25. And then Riveting content, right, by the way, right? Riveting podcasting content. Hearing these middle-aged men do TRT live on air. Riveting. And pull that needle right out. Boom. There you go. All right. Okay. Now, I'll show you. Hang on. Now, with this, you got this is very important. What? You're fine. A little... Little. Don't put any more. Okay. So, all right. Here, you hold my gear. And then, where do you do it? So, like, right, I go right here. Okay, hang on. So, you saw where I wiped? Yeah, I did. Okay, ready? Yep. Boom. How'd you do that so quick? You just popped it in and did it, man. Wow. I saw him last week. He got so fat. He looks Chinese. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm not liking. I'm not liking. I'm not liking this direction of what's going on. Hopefully, this is just Joke World making his own video, and it's not paid promotion. But it feels like a little bit of a paid promotion, propaganda type thing, man. I hope it's not the case because I like Joke World. I'm not gonna lie. I like his channel. I like the content. It's refreshing to have a a place where you can go and just you know watch funny clips with no agendas, um, with no bias with no uh, hating, right? Just pure like celebration of these comics. But I'm hoping this ain't propaganda. I really hope not. Because if it is, sad place we're at, man. It's this fucking sad place where we're at. It's a sad place. It really is a sad place. I hope it's not. Yeah, Zaki Paola, Zaki NJ. I hope it's not Paola. I really hope it's not. Because if it is, damn, man. <laughs> AZ, Jake, is Jake Paul's walking out. You're not gonna get me. You're not gonna catch me. No, what's that Jamaican meme? That Jamaican guy meme. No, never happening. Did I see, no, I didn't see the Delia interview. No, I didn't watch that. I saw him doing the interview Delia. I don't again, as much as that guy is a proper pedo, I don't really have a problem with people interviewing him. It is what it is. Do you know what I mean? Get your interview off. He needs to continue doing his life, whatever. He, ain't, he, he didn't get convicted. Let him live his life. So I don't I don't even, I don't really have an issue with him interviewing him because I saw some people criticizing and say the interview was too soft and he didn't hurt him in any hard questions but there's nothing 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 problem no problem with that no problem no problem with that i, I don't mind do i want to listen to chris Lea talk no do i ever no. yeah yeah um what can you do let, let let him do his thing i mean um if you guys like if you like having if you listen to pedos that's you um do i not really Actually, I can't say that, do I? Because I like a lot of fashion people, and there's a lot of fashion people who are pedos. Yeah, so I can't really talk about. I can't really. I can't really um, do any moral, you know, or you can't really morally grandstand when there's a lot of people in fashion who are legit pedos who I turn a blind eye to, you know. I like I do this <laughs> because they make cool hoodies. I kind of, you know, I do that. So I can't really talk. So it is what it is. Um, let's continue here. What else we got to talk about? We did that. We did this. Ryan Joseph, no way, mate. I'm not watching that fight. Not streaming anything to that fight. Don't want to. Don't don't care about the fight. I don't want to fight. No fight in here. Do not care. Honestly, they're not getting me again. They got me once. They got me twice. I think they might have got me three times. Yeah, I think I've watched three Paul brother fights, bro. I'm not doing it again. I'm not doing it again. Not doing it again, ever. Never happening. Wish them all the luck and success, but I'm not doing it again. I swear to God. They've got me three times, bro. Three times. No, I refuse. I fucking refuse. Um, What's happening here? Let's move on. We did this, we did that. 
Bish bash bosh. What's he gonna do here? Wish we missed quite a bit in there. We got what's that? Oh, he said because he could lose. Okay, cool. Again, I, 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 I don't. You know what? I've gone so far from not caring that I'm not. That when I when I started watching the Paul Brothers, it was like that. You know, that curiosity of seeing them get knocked out. But now they've provided such shit entertainment. I don't even care if they get knocked out. I actually don't want them to get knocked out. Do you know what I mean? I want them to get, actually get good, so I can watch the fights again. I don't actually want. To, you know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm not actually in it to watch them get knocked out anymore. That's that's the least of my fucking um thing that I want to see. Oh, what's we got to watch? So we did that. We did this. Oh, let's get. Yeah, let's watch the Kiltani thing. Um, did we did that. We did. Oh no, let's just do the Joe Budden thing then. Let's do the Joe Budden thing. We didn't do the Joe Budden thing, did we? Right. Um, let's see what the Joe Budden drama is saying. Let's see here. Danny from the stop. Where's that fucking tab? Danny from the stop has some new videos out about the Joe Budden controversy and drama. Let's see what he's saying, and then we're gonna do some Kill Tony stuff to end it. So let's go to this one. So lately, the video to update here is Queen's flip via via fucking um Joe <laughs> stream. <laughs> no way, mate. It's not happening, Ryan Joseph. It's not happening, brother. I, I swear to God, you're not getting me, bro. I've, I've decided. I'm off. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Um, let's continue here. Danny from the stop. Cleans, cleans, Queens flip v Danny. Let's see what happens here. Baby, second one loads. Big up Danny from the stop. Let's see what is happening with the Joe Budden podcast content. Internal war going on. So um, let's see. When it loads, I'll give you a little bit of background so you can see what's happening here. But this is really funny to kind of cover. Let's see. Let's see if I can find it for you guys here. Ba, 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 ba. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Come on, load, you piece of shit. Oh, this is fucking. Queens flip and Danny from cool. the start. So let's do it. So just give you a bit of background. Um, Joe Budden podcast. Um, there's this channel on YouTube that covers all the drama around Joe Budden podcast and New Warrior More called The Stop, right? This guy. His name's Danny from The Stop. And he's really good at, you know, kind of, you know, dissecting what's going on in the drama, offering his opinion, doing commentary, kind of the same thing I do with the whole Brendan Short thing. But he's really good at what he does. But for some reason, unlike the comedy podcasters, which you have to give them credit for, they don't engage. There's some people that engage with Red Bar for some, but for the most part, comedy podcasters don't engage with all the channels that are out there like mine like 10 minutes of shore like unique like comedy enforcement two to try they don't engage they just let them do what they're doing they don't engage because they know it's going to create more drama and more issues you just let leave them alone and pretend it doesn't exist for some reason joe does engage and joe Budden and his team have a very negative interpretation of daddy for the stop they try to like stop him. They don't like his content. They talk bad about him and shit. It's just generally a very adversarial relationship. Really strange, but it's that's the way. And I guess Danny now is having individual beefs with different cast members of Joe Budden podcast. And this is one of them, a guy called Queens Flip. Him and Danny from the stop don't get along. So this is an ongoing war. Very odd, very strange. Queens Flip and Danny from the stop go to war. I don't even know what that means, Flip. I don't even know what that means. That feels manipulative, Flip. Like, I feel like every response I give, you have I think think you asked. I think that you said you was at battle rap. I never saw you. I slap you in your mouth. Paul, okay. Now, spit in your face and I slap you. I think you didn't go to a battle rap event. You wouldn't play with me in a battle rap event. I was Why would I go to a battle rap event and talk to listen, you? Listen, listen. I would have to you, drive about your mouth. You said I will punch you in your mouth. So you don't play that. Okay, I saw right. a flip at a battle rap event. <laughs> I mean, I've seen you throw water in a girl's rap. face that went to wow. a different wow. so I wouldn't doubt that. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. And I punched a nigga in his mouth. I understand I did. that. There's, there's evidence of that. And I beat a nigga up in the elevator. I did. It's documented, nigga. But, but, and? I know it's well documented, <laughs> but I'm just saying. Right, I was you, just, you, like, you can tell me I'm ass. You can tell me I'm this, I'm that. You, you can talk about being uh, you outside. Are, you can invite you're, you're not outside. You. What's the chat saying here? AZ, I like not caring. You got allergies, AZ. Joe Biden, um, are you taking Pauly Shaw and the Schmo bathroom breaks? All of the above. All of the above. All of the above. Okay. All of the above. We never ever clarify rumors or speculation on this side of things. 
run with whatever narrative you want. Run with it. Because deep down, I want to be a rock star anyway. So if, you, if, you're let, if you're saying you think I'm taking Schmo, Paulie Shaw break, bathroom breaks, I'm for it. I'm for it. Please. I'm for it. Run with it. Because deep down, I want to be a rock star anyway. So if you think I'm taking Paulie Shaw, Schmo breaks, yes. Okay? But we don't clarify. We never explain. Who knows? You never ask a, a young lady what they get up to when they're powdering their nose, you know? Who knows? Are you from Puerto Rico? Is you Dominican or Puerto Rican? I'm uh, from wherever you want me to be, Flip. I don't know what that uh, okay, is. Now, 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 now you're not representing your culture because if you're Puerto Rican or oh, Dominican, so now I gotta represent my culture for you. Like, that's gonna Are help things. Are you Dominican or Puerto you're Rican? You're a manipulative dude. Anything I say will be used in your flip mind. You want to be on the show. A, this is how you've always man. been, Flip. I'm not a Whatever I say will not be I'm not attracted to you. I don't like you, nigga. Now you got the inside in. This is an inside-outside clash. We could go there. I I went to school. I'm outside. I'm outside. Up, I come to you right now. I never like, said I was outside. I said I'm inside. That's why I'm at the Twitter space. I got to get ready for work inside, tomorrow. Outside, about, uh, so I, I said, this is the inside. Hey, listen, listen. Daddy's a good troll. I'm not going to lie. I like Daddy for the stop. He's really good at this. <laughs> So listen, this is an inside outside clash, and we here. I didn't say oh, I was okay. outside, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. all right? So that's why when you talk about this inside outside stuff, that really don't phase me. All right. You are- all right. All you ever say, that's why Joe Budden be cooking you on your show. Uh, Wait, on his show. Cool. Yeah, and I'm here. (laughs) Danny, Danny's Danny's toxic. Here, I'm here. I've been waiting for this. Why am I ass? I'm not going to call you ass because I watch it. It, it, It's like you watch Here's the secret. Hey, can we use another one? Nigga, suck my... Here's the secret. And I don't give if Ian in here, you ass nigga. I got the drop on you. That's the truth. I'm waiting for the right time. I don't give a about where you work. I got the drop because you communicate with people and you talk about people at a location where you work at. That's the truth. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I was told to chill. I'm waiting to show you how ass you are. I'm going to show you and remind Why? you all that joke. Why would you say this publicly? I'm confused. There is, honestly, African-American people in, in the States are bizarre, bro. Such a bizarre species. You find a lane to make money and to make content and to feed your family, support yourself, where you actually have to talk into a microphone. Nothing else. Just offer your opinion on things going on in pop culture. Even better, offer your opinion on things pertaining only to the people that look like you, right? Black media, urban stuff. You know, they're not even asking you to comment on worldly affairs, worldly news. No, just focusing on your little niche, on your subculture, on your on your demographic. That's a dream job. You get paid thousands, millions to do that. L- loyal fan base. You sell out shows. You have people recognizing you on the street, waiting to take pictures. Why isn't that enough? Why does it have to turn into beef? Why are they arguing like this? Why is he threatening this guy who covers... Again, if anything, having a channel like The Stop dedicated to dissecting everything you guys are doing is a bit of an honour in some way because it shows you're doing something. There's a channel dedicated to just hyper-analyzing everything that Joe Biden podcast does. That's a good thing. It shows you're winning. What are they doing? This guy's threatening this guy on, on in public on a recorded Twitter space. Wow. Button shit. You can talk all that shit. You can talk all that. It's his show. He cracked jokes. Those are my friends. I don't know you. I got the drop on I want you to hear me. Trevor Robinson telling you. So you got to be careful when you talk and who know who. I got the drop. And I promise, I promise you that we're going to have fun. Not on no fighting shit, but it's going to be a situation. Because I don't want to talk over you. I'm on mute you so you can talk. Jesus Christ. It's going to be a situation where when you see me face to face, I'm going to ask you these questions. That's right. After months of building tension on the content suite, <sighs> Queens Flip and Danny finally got to speak. And there was a lot of stuff that went on. I mean, I argued with Flip about a lot. I basically called out how sometimes I feel like he's trying to manipulate my platform. And Flip called me out for saying that I need to realize that some of the content that I make has implications for people's real lives. And to be honest, all I can do is kind of see things from my perspective. I know a lot of people can try to see things 
from other people's perspective. But overall, this was a great discourse about the morality, the responsibility of content creators. As I am a YouTuber, not a journalist. Many people pay me out to be a journalist. But like I've said in the past, the reason I started this channel was because I used to be on Reddit all day commenting on the Joe Budden podcast. And I was like, let me make one of my Reddit theories a video. And it got 12,000 views. Then I made another video. It got 100,000 views. And I was like, I can't stop. Clearly, I'm striking a chord with people. But as I've been speaking with members of the show over the last couple of weeks, I've kind of been going through this thought process of, yes, I appreciate people's constructive feedback and criticisms but folks have to be aware that i get feedback from so many channels so many people and i hope that everybody understands that i'm just trying to learn as i go and also allow my voice to grow and by doing this i make decisions oh danny sounds a bit scared isn't it am i am i am i am i hearing somebody moonwalking is somebody doing a little bit of moonwalking here Danny sounds a bit scared. Bless him, man. Things that I feel will entertain my audience because my audience is what matters. Nobody would be paying attention to me. Nobody would even be responding to me. Nobody would care about my content if I wasn't entertaining my audience. And as far as morality goes and people saying that I may be doing things wrong, I don't think I'm doing things wrong. I've always treated everybody respectfully. I don't think Oh, that was a really that was a really dry swallow, isn't it? God damn it, man. This is the thing. That's why you can't do messy stuff when it comes to guys. I just think with guys, that threat of violence is always there. Women can have this kind of gossipy back and forth thing where they're shitting on each other. But I think with guys, you have to always maintain a certain level of respect or you get to this sort of situation. So you which is why you have to credit someone like academics academics knows he's never going to be outside so you he always doubles down because he knows he's never going to be inside basically these people but i think danny for the stop realizes that there is a possibility that queen's flip does know who he is in real life does know where he works and it's crazy enough that he would turn up like if imagine if danny works at t-mobile queen's flip is the type of person who would pull up to his t-mobile store and record him beating the brakes off him you know he would do that he's that crazy then you can find any audio of me disrespecting someone's family or saying that someone is soft, someone is weak. It's all about the show, really. I break down the podcast like an analyst with a basketball game. So if somebody shows up to the game and they have five points and they won for eight from the field, I'm going to come to the channel. I'm going to say, yo, this dude was terrible on the podcast. If someone shows up and they score in 30 points, I'm like, this person was great on the podcast. So I think as much growing as I have to do, I feel like certain members of the show also have to take into account that they're on a big platform, a platform that people will analyze and critique. And I'm one of the people. Nah, you can't be saying all this stuff, man. He said, suck my dick, man. He said, suck my dick. He, he threatened to fucking beat you up at your workplace or wherever you're staying at. This sounds like a whole lot of backpedaling as someone says, Jesus Christ, Danny. Damn it. Who's on the forefront of a discourse about the podcast? And I think that's cool. One thing I wanted to also address is Queen's Flip saying he got the drop on me. Basically, I guess he's insinuating that he knows where I'll be. I'm under surveillance. And he said, you know, it's just to have a conversation. I believe him. I think he just wants to have a discourse. I I'll just kind of see that's what he said we'll see where that goes over the next coming oh <laughs> he's gonna get fucked up in it he's so scared months but that's my video for today i want y'all oh daddy sounding like the police what's going on bro to kind of have an honest discussion about this in the comment section let me know what you think and I challenge anybody to see it from my perspective. A lot of y'all come into my comment section. Oh, he's reaching. He's doing this and that. But please try to understand kind of the decisions I make. And also realize that most of the feedback about this channel is overwhelmingly positive. 
most people saying negative things about me are in the minority. There's people that genuinely rock with the discourse that I establish, the things that I talk about. <laughs> so and if you disagree with me He's and so do it in scared. a respectful way, I'm mostly positive. He's so scared. I help people oh, out if they ever ask man. me a question about YouTube or what I do to make my thumbnails. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. In in conclusion, in conclusion, this is redacted. You should be allowed to say what the fuck you want about people who are making content online. It's not that difficult. When somebody's making content online, you put yourself out there, myself included, you should be willing to accept the rough with the smooth, the good with the bad. It's part of making content online. There is no such thing as universal praise. If that is a thing, you're in a fucking cult. It doesn't fucking exist. You're always going to get people that like you or don't like you. Part of the commentary scene that makes it interesting is that you can say what you want with no filter because you don't know these people. The moment you start to maybe get too familiar, you start to feel like you do know them, you start to feel like maybe you're better than them. That's what I think is an issue. Like, I think one of the reasons why I'm able to maybe cover a lot of this redacted shit that I cover from the Bapaverse stuff is because I think fundamentally... I don't necessarily think I'm better than anybody I speak on this. Like, uh, again, it's weird to say because I think it goes without saying, but I honestly don't think I'm better than Brendan. Like, I don't think I'm a better human because I don't have some of these worst character traits. We will, or some of these worst character, yeah. We will have our issues. We will have our bad things. It's just funny to point and laugh, you know? When someone suffers something, that, when someone does something dumb or says something stupid. I say something stupid, I mispronounce and say dumb things, I get things wrong all the time, but obviously I'm not at a scale or level of fame that those guys are, so no one's going to care what I say. But I don't think fundamentally I'm better than anybody. I think that's the issue sometimes when you're these type of commentators. It gets to a point where you start to think you're smarter than the people that you're covering, when really and truly, if those guys who are making the content didn't exist, you wouldn't exist. That's to be a form of humility, you know? Like, if Brendan wasn't a redact and didn't keep putting out content, I wouldn't probably have a channel that gets the views that it gets. So you kind of have to be a little bit humble about it. You know, you kind of have to know that in a way, these guys are quote unquote paying your bills. So there's that mutual level of, what's it respect, but like humility a little bit. I think that's when you, but on the flip side of things, if you want to be a piece of shit, content creator, commentator, you have to do what academics does where you double and triple down on your bullshit. You run with a big acting, you antagonize people, you talk shit about them, but you do it because you know you're never going to go outside and you're never going to see them in public. So you talk shit. That's what you should do. But you can't be in the middle. You have to either be respectful and keep it like that or be a troll, content creator, whatever, and then double down on it because you're not going to be outside. But I think fundamentally... Danny for the stop, maybe he started to get a little bit too flagrant with the thing that he was saying. So I probably think he was a bit smarter than what he is, or maybe think he was smarter than the guys he was covering. And now it's gotten to this point because I just think fundamentally, also with guys, there's only certain level of disrespect you're gonna take. You know, you're gonna always want to fight somebody, especially from the from the same city. Someone said, I think Danny's from New York as well, right? So that's what makes it even more sketchy for him because he's from New York too. They all live in New York, you know. But yeah, I feel I feel I feel bad for Danny. What are comments saying here? I feel bad for him. What are you guys saying in the chat? Actually, before I get to comments, academics duck in the baby oil session with saucy lols. They're gonna catch act like Ned Bowery in Deliverance. I don't think so, Koyla. I don't think they're ever gonna catch act. I think act. The reason why he's successful and does well is because he plays his role. He plays the position very well. He knows exactly what he is. And he plays there, you know? He stays there. I think that's why he's successful. Because he talks a lot of shit, but he's never outside. He never gets caught anywhere, you know? He's never once been touched like that in that regard. So that goes to show. Um, it was insinuated because of Damien Dufresne. He shook. Man got the authorities on speed dial. Exactly as said. AZ will never happen when people tuck their tail and podcasters confront them in conflict. But AZ, that will never happen when people tuck their tail to the podcast and confront them on their commentary. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Maybe there is a... Maybe you're right, Assad. Maybe there is a... Maybe Danny should have doubled down on his perspective and commentary on the JBP more when Queen's Flip came at him. Hey, 
this is what I think, this is my opinion, blah, blah, blah. Maybe you should double down on it, but he got too shook too quickly. Um, these guys are always trying to cope from whatever drama they embroiled in. True, true, true. Uh, let's see the comments. See what the comments saying, Flip giving you his time of day is just proving that you're doing everything right. Your content wouldn't even reach the people if you weren't watered down opinions. Between the stop and the Reddit, the, 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 the this dead be more entertaining than JBP. Sometimes I just watch this in lieu of the podcast. Can we please take a minute and commend Danny for his professionalism? <laughs> Commending somebody isn't going to stop them from getting their face punched. I love when people do this sort of stuff, man. That's like, this isn't very comforting, you know? Like, I have to see these people in real life. <laughs> Personally, I think this is unfair that they're trying to police your content. Personally, I think Joe needs to directly tell them that this is part of the fame. Daddy, you're the shit. Keep it up. Keep going, Daddy. Just a heads up. Anyone who's, who says they got the drop on somebody doesn't have the drop. Yeah, true. That's a good point because if he actually had the drop on you, he would have just done it. He would have just turned up and put the beats on you. So most likely he doesn't, but I think that threat did did shake up Danny for a bit. I think he's he's shook, to be fair. Obviously, the science is touching a nerve. I think it's a win for them to create a narrative about you not disrespecting the pod. Danny, you did absolutely nothing wrong. 15k and get it rocking. Hold your fucking corner, my G. As a small channel, I respect your growth. Don't let exactly that's what somebody said here. I saw didn't it? You said the same thing, right? I saw said the same thing as this guy. Um, don't let Flip shake you. Joe put Joe got hands put on him. Charlemagne got hands put on him. Charge into the game. Salute. Exactly. Um, I think Flip is out of line and comes from insecurity. Him talking all tough shows how bothered and conflicted he is by the points makes common way people. Know. To be fair, imagine if this happened in a comedy scene. Imagine if the comedy, if the comedian side clapping back, how many channels would fold? You reckon? If the stand-up comedian side to clap back a bit. Right, if Bert side clapping back, Tom side clapping back, Brenda side clapping back, how many of us would 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 still be around? <laughs> imagine, imagine if Brenda said, "All right, cool, fucking, oh, fucking ten minutes to Shaw. I know where you guys live. I'm coming to your house right now." <laughs> yeah. I wonder what would happen. I, I wonder if Kalala said. Because I think Kalala would beat up comedy enforcement. I'm not lying. I think Kalala would beat that guy up. <laughs> I think Kalala would beat him up. <laughs> I swear to God. I think Kalala would put the absolute beats on fucking comedy enforcement. That would be so fucking funny. Imagine. I'd love it. I'd fucking love it. I would fucking love it. I swear to God. I'd fucking love it. <laughs> could you imagine they all started clapping back but yeah to be fair like it, it would it would make it actually more entertaining i'm not gonna lie it would make it more fucking entertaining i'd be i'd be i'd be all over if that happened i wish it would happen to be fair um let's move on okay let's do one more danny for the stop video this is about rory reveals complexes blackballing him really wow okay cool let me just quickly mute Okay, cool. Let's do this Rory one. Come on, load, you piece of shit. It's loading slow. Come on, you fucking cunt. Load. There you go. Okay, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. I'm coming, I'm cooming, I'm coming, I'm cooming. Come on, Danny, for the stop. Let's come. Okay, if you're watching the stream, you're enjoying what you're seeing, make sure you're liking the fucking stream. Don't be stingy, you fuck bases. Give me a like, all right? If you're not racist, like the stream. <laughs> if you're not racist, Rory like the stream. Rory reveals that Complex Media is blackballing him because of their allegiances to Joe Budden. Why would Complex have a personal issue with you? Uh, Who because you because they have alliances with mm. people alliances. that dislike me. And I'm not saying the obvious because we don't censor here. It's not a Joe thing. I think it's a Joe's team thing. Mm. What? I don't think in any Big world up RG. Joe... Oz, I'm beyond late on the stream, but I must insist you refrain from bunching Miami in with those freaks in LA. Big up, peace sign. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Big up, big up RNGLP. Big up RNGLP. Thank you though so much. I appreciate you for the super chat. Right. I think I get a lot, I get this kind of comments from people from LA too. People who live in, in LA, live in California, whenever I make these comments where I 
when I describe LA, like the podcast scene in general, it's like, no, 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 no. LA is a big place. These guys are not representative of where I'm from. These guys are a very small part of where I'm from. Okay, please. No problem. I apologize. Hands up, okay? Hands up, officer, please. No violence. Thank you, RJ. Appreciate you. RNG, LP, appreciate you. I was going to the complex and saying Black Bowery. I'm not saying that. I'm not dumb. But I think the alliance with people on his team have left us off shit, have left me off this this year. And y'all call me narcissistic and crazy, but I've spoken to I'm people sure that work at Complex, and I know it's... So that I'm not pulling this out of my ass and doing a conspiracy theory. I have spoken to people at Complex that have told me directly, hey. multiple people at separate times that didn't even know I talked to two different people, mm. gave me the same story of why we were left off that media list. Yeah. That's right. On the What? Joe Biden's got enough pull at Complex to get Rory's... What's that, what's that word called? Emotional Oranges. His group and maybe himself, his own his own album. Actually, Robbie's album is really good. Check it out if you haven't checked it out. I forgot the name of it. Let me just share my Apple Music. It was actually a really decent listen. I'm not going to lie. Maybe one of the contenders for album of the year for me. Um, I listened to it early in the year. It's called, I thought it would be different. It came out in May. Really fucking decent album. Very, very decent. I thought it was different. I thought it'd be different on fucking Apple Music. But yo, big up Crash. Appreciate you. Imagine a Florida man talking shit about LA. <laughs> Thumbs down. I'm not getting involved in in American, you know, interstate fucking politics or beef. I don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? I don't know what's happening. Whoever whoever has the best Addies, whoever has the best ket in every location. Who has actually who has the best who who would have the best ketamine? LA or Miami? This isn't sourcing, by the way, because I don't live there. So don't ban me fucking YouTube. But who, if you actually went to get the best ketamine, where would you get, where would be the best place to get it? LA or Miami? I have a feeling it would be Miami, right? But it might be LA. Because of all the alternative, you know, lifestyle guys. What do you think? If you went pure, the best ketamine you could get, where would you get it from? LA or Miami? People are saying LA. Ket LA. Ket LA and Miami got better coke. Okay, cool. Because of, because of the coast, I'm assuming, right? <laughs> Don Dot is going to hell. Whoever Matthew Perry got it from. <laughs> Story of why we were left off that media list. Yeah. That's right. On a recent episode of the Rory and Maul podcast, Rory decided to address how he was left off of the top albums list by Complex and the top hip-hop media personalities. Now, this was a fascinating excursion into kind of the politics that happened in all types of industries, especially media. Overall, Rory was really open about how he has heard from people at Complex that he is being blackballed because of Complex Media's allegiances to Joe Budden. That is so redacted. If that's true, that is so fucking redacted, isn't it? Yo, big up Crash. This is my fourth $2 super chat, Lilf. <laughs> big up Crash. Appreciate it, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for the super chat, bro. But imagine how redacted this must be, that there's beef in podcasting that will then trickle down into your actual artistry and business and stop you from getting certain looks because as as lame and as gay as those complex lists are they're probably really important if you're an up-and-coming artist right if you're somebody that's independent if you're somebody that's grinding having those type of looks where you get placed on those sort of type of list can actually do a lot for you it can maybe put you you know in different conversations it can give you different type of exposure it's a whole different ball game when you get put on those type of lists. So I can see why it's a big deal when you don't. But imagine the reason why you don't get put on those lists is because of some podcast beef that you've had. And it's not even beef, it's like a real disagreement between friends, right? Because the accusation was that Joe was stealing money from them. Joe was hiding the, you know, not letting them look at the books. Joe wasn't seeing them as equal partners. Joe didn't respect their contributions to the pod. Joe thought of them as a disposable. It's kind of a really personal beef, like, you know, disagreement falling out, a really kind of emotional one as well. Not something, you know what I mean? And it's like, it trickles out into your actual artistry, your job, your career. Really awful. 
And I have to be clear, as Rory was pretty clear himself, that he's not saying that Joe Budden was blackballing him. He's saying that Complex's involvement with Joe Budden was the reason that they may have decided to leave him off the list and also decided to leave Rory and Maul off the top hip-hop media personalities list. Now, I know a lot of people might be like, oh, Rory and Maul suck, they're boring, they're terrible people, they're podcasts, who cares? But I actually went and looked back at the list for the hip-hop media personalities, and I have to say, all in all, Rory kind of seems right. As Jazzy, I know she's a kid, but exactly. eh, should she really be on the list? Exactly. And also someone like Nadeska. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. Nadeska's kind of fallen off the face of the earth to me. I really don't hear much about her. For me, Rory and Maul are way more prominent as far as hip-hop media go. This leaves a lot of interesting points to discover. For example, who at Joe Budden's camp could be indirectly or directly responsible for Rory and Maul being blackballed on the complex media list? Could it be Ian? I mean, Ian is the top of the top at the Joe Budden Network. He's Joe Budden's manager and business partner. Could it be Keeb? I'm not too familiar with Keeb, but I do think he holds some type of high position at the Joe Budden Network. I think he's a little bit involved in all aspects of the JBN. Like, it's not going to be Flip. It's not going to be Ish, Ice, or M4. I don't think they're that high level as far as the business is concerned. But this is very fascinating. And Rory seemed genuinely upset. It seemed like the album list thing really made him upset. I'm this is probably reasons why everyone plays nice, isn't it? This explains it. This explains why people don't really let their nuts hang. Why people aren't really unfiltered. Why people don't really let you know their real opinions. Why people play nice. Because if you don't, and you actually do let your nuts hang you are unfiltered, it actually can negatively affect you in media in some aspects. It's unfortunate that it does, but it can, especially if you want media recognition. Obviously, the good thing about nowadays with the internet, you don't need that look from complex, right? But if you want it, if you want media, media, um, what's that thing called? Media um, acknowledgement, you kind of have to play the game. That's the unfortunate thing. You kind of have to play the game. You kind of have to jump through the hoops um, and play nice. If not, they're going to count you out. They're going to purposely scrub you out and they're going to make it seem like you're not a big deal when you are. So that's why maybe you shouldn't play the game. You know, if you, if you find a way to operate outside of the system, you just have to keep it that way. But you can't expect them to acknowledge you when you play out of this rule. You know, you play out of their, their rules, play out of their scene. It kind of is what it is. I mean, I think Rory has been putting his dedication and life into that album and would like to have been recognized as it does increase the visibility of the album. There's also something interesting. They do this episode where they say, oh, before Danny Shiggs and all of you clip it, don't try to say that this is a conspiracy. Danny, uh, Danny, Danny Rory Chiggs, and Maul. everybody, Rory. in no way am I saying that Joe went and told Complex to leave us off it or leave my album off. Don't. <laughs> Theory's done. I, I sorry. Sorry. You can't, you can't do your. Uh, from the Rory and Maul podcast? Yeah, you can't do your theory anymore. I'm not saying that, and he did not do that. You I'm saying it, there's alliances behind the scenes. <laughs> clip it, Danny. You did that it. have done that. So sorry to ruin your conspiracy theory video that you were about to do. Or you read it like, look, and bringing up the name, I'm actually saying the opposite. So okay. sorry to ruin that for you guys. I'm sorry, but even with that type of framing, it's still a conspiracy. As Rory is saying that complex media is blackballing him. Like, even if Joe didn't directly order it, it's still fascinating and a discussion that we have to unpack. Who ordered the cold red? Who did it to Rory and Maul? That's one thing we have to find out. But let me know what you think in the comments. Okay, did um, Rory and Maul deserve to? I think it's possibly true. That, again, it sounded weird when he first said it, but that's there's some truth to that. I could believe in there being, and again, I, I guess it's it's less to do with. I think it's probably less to do with Joe's team telling Complex to leave Rory and Maul off of their list. And more to do with complex wanting to be in good favor with Joe Budden, and and leaving them off their list. Do you know what I mean? It's that kind of thing. It's that kind of unspoken. Hey, I know you guys have beef with this person. I'm gonna purposely not acknowledge them, 
and not give them credit and not put them on this list so that you know, you know, that I've got your back type of thing. I think that's possible, but it's horrible. Either way, it's fucking horrible, to be fair, that those type of things play a role in people not being recognised or being acknowledged. Like, again, I don't really have an... I don't really get, give a shit about prize or accolades and shit. The only thing that I would ever want to win is the fucking Turner Prize or something, right? For art. But in terms of anything else, you know, I don't really give a fuck. Even if I made music, I wouldn't care about Grammys and shit. It's more so about making music that touches people, having a fan base that loves what you do, being able to do shows and stuff. That should be the real marker of success or that should be something that actually gives you some level of... Um, that should be... So grat gratification that gives you some level of purpose or something the fact that you're able to have art that people care about it's able to people that resonate with it it takes you around the world it supports you supports your family it, it you know it helps people through tough tough times and shit that should be what you should be in it for mostly but i understand if you do like those awards those accolades accolades from these platforms it can be quite hurtful when you find out they're not acknowledging you because of other stuff, you know, and not because of the quality of the work that you're putting out. That's probably a hard pill to swallow, isn't it? But I guess that's the nature of the game of the industry. Once you're in it, you have to play it. So maybe they should have played nice with Joe. Who knows? Maybe that's why. Who knows? Um, we did that. We did this. We did We did quite a few bits already. Uh, Once we did that, Danny for the stop there, Brendan Shaw, Adversity Kings, podcast cringe check in. We did that. Actually, yeah, we did all that, edit, right? Oh, let's do uh, the Brian Cannon one, actually. Brian Cannon Laugh Factory. What's that one? Okay, what is that one? Oh, that's a laugh. That's an expert guy, isn't it? Our uh, expert guy. What's his fucking name again? Um, actually, let's break up a little. Let's do a bit of wings. Let's do wings. Let's do wings. Wings, once again, denies being a pedophile. <laughs> good <laughs> i love that title wings denies once again being a pdf file let's see what wings are saying big up lummox big max is literally the lifeblood of their political party right big max is literally the lifeblood of their political party right both parties won't cheap big max because cheap big max buys votes <laughs> A sip of Pepsi. Dude, Lummox definitely is not ranked material. I, if, I, if I took Lummox into like one of my ranked lobbies and he legitimately tried, he'd be one in eight with Rook. Wings, any chance you can slap your knees for all the hoodlums? Shaw sure will! Uh! Very successful, very successful, very successful. Copy, UAV is on online. Come on, dude, with the knife. Dude, get away. Get a fuck away from me, teammates. Shit. Where? The only reason I did bad that game is because my teammates were fucking ass. Like, literally, I would spawn into deaths because my teammates were dying so quickly and so often, they would just lump me together. <clears throat> what? Come on. Come on, dude. <laughs> Almost two hours in, we've only had one donation. <laughs> Come on, boys. We, we need $120 more. <laughs> I love how when he begs, he can't do it. He can't beg like DSP. DSP begs forthright. He's very boastful, up in your face, unashamed of his begging. Wings is like a bit shy and coy about it. Come on, boys. You can't really say it with any bass in his voice. There's a part of him that has... He still has a bit of humanity, a bit of a soul in him, right? He's not soulless like DSP, who can just beg for everything. He feels entitled to people's money. Wing still feels a little bit shy about it. Well, give me your money to fill, give it to me. <laughs> he mentioned DSP, he just loves. Yarn themselves, why are you AFK, boss? God, end of the game. All right, I'm removing him. 
I'm removing him for that. A end of the fucking game, he's sitting around AFK giving away free kills. <laughs> Alright. I'm removing him. Looks like this is Alright guys, that's probably the end of the stream tonight. Thank you, uh, Diesel Don for the ten dollar donation. This nigga's fucking huge, isn't it? He's a fucking unit. Uh. And again, this is a this is a zoomed in picture of his camera in it, right? From his stream. This is a digitally zoomed in, so it's been pixelated and shit, but he just looks like a unit already. Definitely touching 500 pounds. Big up wings. Nah, I'm not doing good. I mean, again, we've been going two hours. We've had one donation. That's, again, like, this is my job. If you don't make money, it's, it's pointless. <laughs> <laughs> it's pointless just playing games for the fun of it and sharing that fun with audience. You have to make money. If you don't make money, it doesn't make sense. Love wings. I just, I, I'm like, I've, there's been too many streams lately where I've been streaming like five, six hours for nothing. And he, and he wonders why his content's not doing well. He doesn't engage with the chat. He's not a really fun communicator. He's always moaning. He's always complaining. He takes Call of Duty way too seriously. He complains about tips all the time. And then he sits there and he wonders why, even though he streams for long and he's mostly silent. When you watch his actual live streams, because the clip channels do a good job of putting them together, when you actually watch his live streams, he's like dead, dead. Make twenty, thirty dollars the whole stream. Like the reason one hundred thirty dollars my donation go because that's minimum wage. That's what. Jesus Christ, bro! Imagine feeling entitled to a minimum wage from streaming video games online. You don't even you don't even have a sponsor or anything. You just feel entitled to other people's money. You feel entitled enough that other people should be paying your salary in that way, which is just charity, right? What minimum wage is? <laughs> Play good work. Oh. Fucking oh, unit! Look at the size of it. Of course, look at that coke. But look at that. That's all full of coke, by the way. I don't think I've drunk that much coke in the last month. And this is just a casual night. I don't think I've drunk a bottle. Again, maybe, well, when's that time I order McDonald's? I don't even order coke at McDonald's anyway. Fucking hell. <laughs> the yawning, I love the yawning. The stretching, more sipping of the coke. Nice. Enjoyable, lovely. Dude, this this man can climb the ladder, come off the ladder, and knife me. Ugh. All right, and I get knifed again. Come on, dude. Wait, do you think message is more? Why would you, dude? I'm not a fucking pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> I love when he reads stuff out. He doesn't realize that it's a bad message, and he stops midway through. I'm You're not taking a, a clip that's taken so out of context about like a story of statutory rape from like an 18, 17 year old. Like, dude, just go the fuck on like that. <laughs> Every girl I've ever dated has been older than me. Every single one of them. I like older women. I've always liked older women. Liked, as if you got a. <laughs> What did he even say to set you off, dude? He, do he donated some fucking Canadian, like five dollars, and then then ask if I send pics of my dick to like underage people. Like, Come on, dude, you're fucking. Dude. You don't put that stigma on people that don't belong. It doesn't belong. Little dirty boots. Shit, with this money you've been making from Locale, pretty soon you'll be able to get yourself a raptor pimp. I ain't made a dollar from Locale yet. What are you talking about? Oh, that's... Well, I thought you said you were getting, like, 10k from Meta PC. I'm not talking about that. Uh-oh. Yeah, don't, don't talk about stuff I tell you off-stream, on-stream. Oh, no. He exposed him. He exposed him. I have no clue where these dudes are at. Why? Come on, dude. How has Seven got 32 fucking kills? I can't even see 32 fucking people.
I just honestly, again, I don't play computer games or video games. No, I don't know. The last time I played Call of Duty was many, many years ago. But I just can't get past how somebody can spend so much time playing the game and be so bad at it. Even me, I'm not the best gamer in the world. But usually when you spend a lot of time playing something, you generally just figure it out. You generally get a bit better than when you first started. But Wings seems to not have improved at all. He seems to be just as bad. Like, it's almost odd how that is possible. And again, he doesn't work a job, so it's not like he's limited hours where he can play the game. He could play this game for 24 hours a day, every day of the week if he wanted to. How do you just be stay the same? It's actually 730, and it's the same game. Call of Duty, obviously, you know, it's you know different ones over the years, but it's still the same game. Fundamentally, it's still the same thing. So to be bad at a game that hasn't changed that much over the years is pretty wild. And yeah. I like I like how he's always bottom of the leaderboard as well. She can reward herself with an entire fucking row of chips ahoy. <laughs> okay, wasn't that funny? But hey, big up wings. Um, he, I, honestly, he must be huge in real life. He's he's that big. Watch watching him on camera, on the pixelated stream and shit. Imagine how big he must look. In real life. Imagine how big this guy looks in real life. Anyway, moving on. Um, we did that. We did this. What else we got to do here before... What is it? Make a wish. Brendan, Papa. Um, what else? Burt Kreischer. We did the rock bottom Burt Kreischer thing. There's no actual video on new podcast cringe in it that I've not seen yet. What's this one? Oh, there's Adam22 podcast cringe. Actually, I got, actually I, I, I'll say that for tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'll do the Adam 22, no, the Adam 22, the Fire and the Kid um, watch along. We'll watch that whole thing because I need to watch that to see what these guys are saying because that might be an interesting one to check out. Um, and then, what else we got to do? Let's do, let's do one more. Let's do fucking one more. Fuck it. Let's do one more. Why not, mate? Why not? Why not? Yo, big up. Yo, appreciate you, brother. Wagwan, yo. Oz shout out from NY. This cash is for the babies. Big up the Bronx, big up Flatbush, big up Flushing, big up uh, LES, Lower East Side, that's my spot, that's the spot that I used to like to go to when I went to New York, big up the Lower East Side, right? big up all of my Uptown Massive, big up all my Downtown, Midtown, Manhattan, all those guys, yeah, big up everybody, right? bang your doors, Wagwan Yo, thank you for the super chat my friend, appreciate you, bang your fucking doors. Bang your fucking doors. Damn your fucking doors, okay? Anyways, so, moving on. We did this, we did this, we did that. We did that. Um, what's it going to say about it? Yeah, man. Come on, Dun Dutter, man. I'm worldwide, man. They used to call me Worldwide AZ back in the day. You know what I mean? Get it? A to Z. You know, worldwide, A to Z, you get it? Huh? That's what he used to call me, bro. <laughs> I was in Williamsburg back in the day, man. Williamsburg with my little fixed gear bike, you know what I mean? Co on those cobbled streets, bro. You know what I mean? Like fucking skidding around the place in Williamsburg, you feel me? Down in LES doing the thing, you feel me? LES smacking up some prodies on the street, you feel me? When I mean smacking up, I don't mean domestic violence. You feel me? <laughs> big up me. Big up the action. Actually, that one time I went to New York, it was only one time, many, many years ago, I went to this bar, right, in New York. I don't know if it still exists, but I wish it exists, right? Um, it was this pub. No, it was, like a, it was like a student. It was like a student pub thing where they used to give you a free pizza, a free seven-inch pizza with every beer. Or maybe it was a, or maybe it was other way around. Maybe it was a pizza and you got a beer free. Maybe that's that way around. No, sorry. With every beer, you could get a free seven-inch pizza. But then it was just a regular cheese and tomato, like a set, like a seven-inch one, like a right that one that right, um, with four slices. But then if you wanted toppings, it was like two or one dollars each on top of it. It was so good, man. It was so fucking good. Really fucking good. 
I swear to God. And I wish I remember the name of it, but it was a, it was like a real ratchet dive bar type of place, but they made fresh seven inch pizzas in the back. Yeah, exactly. Space guy. A whole, like, you know, like a seven inch pizza, like those small ones. I don't know if you have them in the States, but in the UK, it's really popular. In the UK, we have seven inch pizzas, like shops will sell seven inch pizzas. And they usually, they used to be a pound. Now I think they're like two pound. I'm sure you guys have them in the States. You must have them. You can get them in store in like little chip shops and stuff, like little kebab shops. They'll sell little small ones. Big up, yo. Appreciate you, brother. For the Flushing Babies and Lay MCDS. Yes, you know, you know, you know. Big up, yo. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you for the super chat, family tree. I'm sure you guys know about 7-inch pieces, right? You must know. It's really small. It's basically four slices. It's basically that. That piece of there. And you, oh, okay, what are you saying here? Um, crashes, they're popular in Boston too. They call them bar pizzas. Okay, cool. Let's see that. Thank you. Uh, um, thank you, my friend, Crash. Boston bar pizza. <laughs> Uche, I got a little nine inch pizza last night. <laughs> that sounds kind of funny. That's a bit of a pause there for you, Uche. Give yourself a pause. <laughs> I got a little nine inch last night. <laughs> Uche, give yourself a pause. Give yourself a pause. <laughs> she got a meat feast. Uche got a meat feast. <laughs> no, no, no. Uche didn't get... Uh, what did Uche get? Uche got a fucking... Um, Oh, oh, no, Usha, Usha didn't get a bitch. Usha got an Oriental. Yeah, Usha got an, Ori an Oriental. <laughs> Pick up Uche, my G, my G. Um, so, yeah, these are the Boston bar pieces. Oh, God damn, I could get one right now. Look at the crust on that, bro. Oh, God. Why did you show this to me so late? Look at that, brother. Look at the crust on that. Honestly, I would demolish the fuck out of these pizzas. Look how good they look, bro. Oh, my God. Wow. Honestly, I'm willing to go. I'm willing to go to. I'm willing to go to Boston and get racially abused just so I can eat the pizza. Honestly, I'm willing to get called a fucking nigger with a hard R when I walk past an Irish bar just so I can get some of this. I swear to God. Maybe in the, maybe next year I need to make a visit over because I swear to God I need to get some of this. This looks so good. Um, is this, do you call, would you call this deep pan? It's not really that deep, in it? Don't get me wrong, you know, I know that's a pause also, but usually deep pounds a little bit, you know, thicker than that. Uh, AZ, when you come into the States soon, brother, soon. I actually want to go there next year in the summer. I'm actually planning a little trip there in the summer, but I haven't sorted it out yet because I've got, so, that's the thing with me, like I waste, you guys will know this, but I waste a lot of money partying and I waste a lot of money going to festivals. So I've got so many festivals I want to go to next year. It's going to be difficult to do everything. You know what I mean? It's a thing. It's going to be difficult to do everything. Like, I'm one of those people, unashamedly, if somebody gave me 50k now, I'd probably spend it all on booking festivals. <laughs> That's the thing. None of it would go to debts. None of it would go to bills. It would all go to talking booking festival tickets. It's so bad. You know what I mean? I'm always out in places. So holidays are kind holidays are hard to, you know? Fuck. Fuck, this looks good, bro. Wow, bar pizzas. <sighs> yeah, anyway, let's stop, let's stop, let's stop. Big up Crash, thank you for that insight. Oh, that looks so tasty. I would fucking demolish that shit. I swear to God I'll demolish that. I swear to God I'll demolish it. Let's close it there. We are finito. Thank you so much for tuning in. Monster live stream today. We'll be back again tomorrow. Back again tomorrow because I'm not going out. So why the fuck not? So back again tomorrow, but for now, I have to leave you motherfuckers. Thank you for tuning in. Never a chore, always a pleasure. Um, eight hours deep in. 
tomorrow we're gonna do tomorrow we're gonna do Adam twenty two review. We're also gonna do a little bit of a review of the podcast that happened recently. We're also gonna do any catch up of what BGL might have said later on and any other things. I think that's about it really. Anything else props up. If you have anything else you want me to watch, send the links via the Discord. Join the Discord. Don't be a slouch. If you have any links you want me to watch, save it during the Discord and I'll watch them there. But yeah, that's what I said. Adam 22, the new episode of TFAT K. And then I thought the other thing I was going to say. Oh, and also Kill Tony stuff we missed out today. So catch up on the Kill Tony stuff I missed. The M22, TFAT K, and the latest one. And of course, if any BGL stuff happens, we'll check that out as well. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Always a pleasure, never a chore. Um, yeah, man. Thank you for hanging out. It's been a pleasure. Um, Eric Allen, yeah, always. The live stream is always available in full. You can always find that on a tab on my channel live. All the live streams are there. I never not upload them so they're all going to be there unless this gets taken out which i don't think it's going to get taken out it should be fine but i always leave them uploaded on my stream so you'll find it all over there and also i'll put the clips and timestamps later but thank you so tuning in everybody appreciate you all thank you everybody that's in here tom don dutta big up coiler riding aces space guy see ya eric allen thank you game breed footballer what's good my guy um coiler uche you know what the deal is love to you both um crash um i see you also ryan joseph thank you for hanging out with the guy space kai i see you super jello i see you vagabond i see you kenny i see you tom i see you everybody in the chat darksy the flow that was here earlier thank you for hanging out with me jordan ray um nj ranger andrew w seven dirty um too many names to mention you assad who was here earlier uh who else was here um lenny gambino eric allen i mentioned you already before but everybody thank you everybody for tuning in appreciate all of you see you again very soon thank you and peace out my friends peace out my friends <laughs>